So guys what if Naruto became a immortal god and went to high school DXD universe movie 1. Naruto Uzumaki, 200 cm in height, a tall muscular blonde haired man who had a lean muscular structure. He had bright sunny blonde hair, and bright blue eyes, to go with his peach skin color, he wore an orange jacket, with small black stripes near the bottom, over his jacket, he wore a white cloak with red flames at the bottom, coupled with the words 7th Hokage written on the back, it was obvious who the man was talking to, Naruto revealed his face as he moved his formal hat from his head, revealing his three whisker marks, and hooked his hat on his black pants. The man standing in front of Naruto was a rather important man, or rather, he was a man who had sent the village hidden in the leaves a very important message involving future funding into their research and development department. I am the daimyo from the land of Fang, the man spoke, and Naruto smiled a little awkwardly. Oh right. Now he remembered this man, my apologized, you have changed since the last time I met you, Naruto spoke more casually as two Anbu revealed themselves behind him. The first Anbu was a young girl, possibly around 20 years old, but with a petite body type, she had light brown hair that was spiked in the back, and a glint of blue eyes were seen behind her mask, she wore the standard Konoha Anbu Janin uniform, only she wore a white cat mask over her face, with three whisker marks on each cheek, and three slashes on the forehead, she was short enough to come up to Naruto's abs in height, but still had the intimidating aura of an Anbu. The next was a man who wore the same style of uniform as the girl, only larger, thanks to the fact that he was 176 centimeters in height, he had very short, brown hair that was puffed, and he was wearing a monkey mask with three triangles on it, one per cheek and one on the forehead, he was tan-skinned where the girl was light-skinned, and he was clearly much older than either Naruto or the girl. You've brought guards, the Fang Daimyo stated with a little bit of surprise as his face fell. Naruto didn't know his name, only his appearance as a man with a more rounded face, and a slight bear, with thick eyebrows, most of his body was covered by strange clothing, and his once brown hair had turned very grey with his increasing age and no doubt stress. My advisor Shikamaru suggested I bring them for appearances, this is Soku and Ro, Naruto spoke, gesturing to the female, Soku, and the male, Ro, respectively, they each nodded to the lord of the land of fangs, who seemed a little put off, but otherwise didn't show too much negative reaction. Were you not expecting the Hokage to bring guards to an important meeting? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. That was a little off. Oh, don't be so suspicious, aren't we old friends? You stopped the war my nation was having with the Land of Claws with your amazing writing prowess, the Fang Daimyo spoke with confidence. Naruto's cheeks turned a little red, right, he did write one of those books, and that book did end the war between the Land of Fangs and the Land of Claws, just remembering the type of book he wrote, and the stuff he wrote in that book, was enough to bring back rather unpleasant thoughts and memories, Naruto smiled anyway though, while both of his Anbu guards looked towards him with a curious glance. They never heard any stories about him ending the war between the Land of Claws and the Land of Fangs, and they had heard a lot of legends about the Hokage in front of them, then again, they were standing nearby the strongest cage in history, a man who could end a war by himself, and could stare down the ten tails and make even tailed beasts recoil from his glare, the man was a legend, so no surprise he had stories even they hadn't heard about. I wasn't aware that you knew I wrote that, book, Naruto mentioned as a maid came to collect his cloak, and he waved her off. He wasn't taking it off, well, I am sure that your journey was a long one, if you would like, I am sure we could discuss our business over dinner, even for a shinobi such as yourself, the distance between our lands is quite far, the fang lord allowed his maid to take off his own coat, and he welcomed Naruto to follow him, Soku and Aro watched the old man suspiciously seeing as he was being far too welcoming and casual for business. The arrogance of a daimyo when speaking to a cage was so unreal to see in person, like they completely forgot that for a cage, wiping a normal man off of the face of the earth was as easy as breathing. Yet this man spoke with no trepidation, I am not tired. But a meal is never unappreciated, the research department has been asking for more funding, but personally I've been wanting to put more funding into the urban development of the village, this offer from you couldn't have come at a better time. Naruto spoke just as casually with the daimyo, of course, he spoke casually with everyone. Naruto walked without fear of this being a trap, he hadn't sensed any ninja's chakra signatures in the building, so there was nothing to worry about. Soku and Aro followed behind him dutifully, remaining silent in the presence of a daimyo as they knew they should, as Anbu, it wasn't their place to speak when it wasn't required of them. They had to show their professionalism to their Hokage after all. The dining hall, and damn was it huge showed just how wealthy the man was if he could afford to spend such money on luxury, maids were hurrying to get everything set up, the table set, and the food placed on the table, 
The Fang Daimyo sat on one end of the table, while Naruto sat on the other. Naruto would have invited his Anbu to join, but knew that it would be bad manners to invite others to join, not to mention as Anbu they would politely refuse the offer to eat with them anyway. I had a special meal prepared in celebration, I had my finest fisherman go into the ocean, and find the most rare species of fish, a fish with flavor that some describe as unparalleled amongst the fish world, I have spared no expense, this meeting means a lot to me personally, the fang lord spoke as he gazed at Naruto's whisker marks for a second, and then his eyes, before he settled on Naruto's right hand. Naruto could figure out what the man wanted from him. Do you wish for me to write another Icha Icha book? and restart my master's work in exchange for funding, Naruto mentioned as Aro coughed into his hand, a little surprised, Soku looked confused at the mention of a book series she had never heard of before, she had never heard of a series that went by the name Icha Icha before. Aro clearly did, he knew about Icha Icha, the perverse series written by Jiraiya of the legendary Sanin, master of the fourth and seventh Hokages, student of the second Hokage, and teammate of the fifth Hokage, hell, the fourth Hokage taught the sixth Hokage, so it could be argued that he played a vital role in the majority of the Hokage's lives as a large influence on them, only the first and second Hokage were not influenced by the man. Lord Seventh wrote Smut? Aro thought to himself, curious as to if he could ever find a copy of said book for comparison reasons. Are my motivations so easy to see through? The Fang Daimyo spoke with a wide smile on his face, comfortable enough to reveal his desires. Naruto sighed, I don't have a lot of time on my hands. As Hokage, I oversee all vital projects of my village. I give out missions, and I read through all of the reports, I barely have enough time for my family as it is, it just wouldn't be possible for me to write another book without cutting out my family time completely, writing a book isn't important enough to warrant that. Naruto informed the daimyo that he wouldn't be able to do such a thing, funding for ninjutsu research and the development of new ninja tools was always welcome, but the funding could come from other sources as well. Lord Seventh is the most busy Hokage in history, Lord Daimyo, Soku reasoned with the Fang Daimyo. The Fang Daimyo smiled, I understand, the Hidden Leaf Village has grown tremendously in the last few years. Since you took up the Hokage mantle the village had to be expanded to great lengths. Your village is currently the largest of the hidden villages, to the point one couldn't call it hidden anymore, with buildings taller than mountains, overseeing such a huge economical growth, and the following growth in population must be trouble for a single man. The Fang Daimyo sympathized with Naruto to a great extent, though as a daimyo he had people to help him govern his nation, the Hokage before him made all of the final choices himself. It was amazing for a single man to run a military nation and not lose his mind, let alone the most powerful ninja military in the world, hosting not only the most powerful ninja to ever exist, but also the only ninja who could hope to challenge said ninja. One could argue, if either Naruto Uzumaki or Sasuke Uchiha tried to take over the world, the only people who could dream of stopping them would be each other respectively. Then you understand why I reject your offer, Naruto spoke as the plates were sat down in front of him in the Fang Daimyo. Soku stepped forward when Naruto got ready to eat. As your guard, I think I should check your meal for poison, Soku pointed out as she prevented him from eating. I assure you, I would never poison Lord Seventh, I respect his skills as an author far too much to ever resort to such a thing, I ended my war with the Land of Claws because my love for his writing, the Fang Daimyo spoke smoothly and Aro raised a hand in a sign to show that Soku's actions were not meant to harm the Fang Daimyo's feelings in any way. It was just their job, this is not meant to insult you, we hold no suspicions that you would poison Lord Seventh, but the same can't be said for your staff, I would be willing to check your own meal for poison myself to alleviate your worries, Aro spoke up to try and soothe the situation before it could get out of hand, one didn't need a pissed off Daimyo making everyone's lives harder by declaring war or something. Soku Taste tested the dish by moving her mask a little up, just so that her mouth was revealed, tried the fish-based dish, and lowered her mask. There is no poison, Soku spoke, seeing as she didn't die from trying the dish for Naruto. Naruto laughed a little awkwardly, before he nodded towards the Fang Daimyo, he ate the meal without worry, though he was never worried in the first place, I apologize for suspecting your staff of foul play ya no, Soku bowed to the Fang Daimyo, who simply waved off her apology. No reason to apologize, I commend you for your loyalty to your duty and your leader, though you could have used more tact, try to be more feminine. Soku twitched as her actions were judged by a non-ninja, and he even had the gall to comment on how feminine her actions should be, Naruto placed a hand on her shoulder when he felt her negative emotions build up. Soku, take a walk around the ground, keep a tight guard. 
A meeting between a cage and daimyo is the perfect time for rogue ninja to try and cause chaos. I trust in your skills to stop any threats, Naruto spoke confidently, Soku preened under his praise, her small chest puffed out in pride as she took his words to heart, her irritation vanquished underneath the kind words of her leader, she nodded her head, and with one hand she formed the sign needed to use the shunshin jutsu, and with it she vanished in a blur of speed far too fast for the daimyo to even see. Instead, all he saw was her vanish as if teleporting, his civilian eyes not trained to see such movements clearly. If you want seconds, I can arrange for that, you know, I was truly inspired by your novel, even now, I've spent countless Rio and read many hundreds of books, but none have struck me the way your book did, will you reconsider? The Fang Daimyo spoke softly with a pleasant smile on his face. Naruto's answer wasn't going to change, I simply don't have the time, I am sorry, Naruto apologized as he waved off the maid who was offering him a second serving. A smile was what he got, well then, here's to a day when you have plenty of time. I hope you found this Nino as delicious as I have, you know, in some lesser developed countries, they believe this species of fish represents longevity, a glass, to your good health. The Fang Daimyo rose his glass up and respectfully took Naruto's answer with grace. Naruto was surprised, but he raised his glass in response, it would seem that the business of the evening was done now, so now they could simply exchange conversation. If Naruto wasn't a busy man that was, as it stood, the only reason he was able to come to visit personally was because of how important this could potentially be to his village's development. Thank you. And since our business is concluded, it'll be on my way. I left a shadow clone back at the office, and that leaves me uncomfortable. Naruto spoke, and he snapped his fingers. Soku reappeared behind him in her preferred spot, with Aro nodding to her. The Fang Daimyo smiled and nodded his head. In a second, all three shinobi were gone leaving the fang daimyo all on his own with his thoughts, he smiled at a plan that had gone perfectly. His plan would take time, but it would eventually work. The Nino, the mermaid whose body, when eaten grants immortality, one never ages past adulthood, you might not have time now, but can you say the same thing in 100-200 years? The fang daimyo spoke as he sipped his sake, smiling to himself at a plan that had gone perfectly, in time, Naruto would have nothing better to do with his time other than write books, and since he would also be alive since he too ate the Nino, he would be able to enjoy such books for the rest of his life, until somebody killed him when they realized that he was living for hundreds of years. The Nino didn't give immunity to death, it only made the body stop aging when the person who ate it reached adulthood, it was a very rare breed of fish, and it took his best fisherman almost 10 years of searching to find it, he had spent close to 10 billion Rio, exhausting literally half of his country's funds, simply tracking down this form of immortality. With Naruto Lord Seventh, is something off? Aro asked his Hokage as he ran behind the man. Naruto slowed down his pace so that the Anbu could keep up with his speed, and he was thankful for that, otherwise they wouldn't be able to be his guards, they would just be following behind him, which was what they were doing since as the Hokage, he didn't need guards. What cage actually needed guards, who were more often than not going to be weaker than the cage who they worked for? Naruto hummed, normally my dealings with Daimyo don't go that smoothly is all. Just odd, he made an offer, and when his offer was rejected, he just let it go ya no, Naruto spoke with a frown on his face, very few daimyo took no for an answer, or at least it took some convincing before they would take no for an answer, usually, from experience, they would throw money or ninjas at the problem, yet this time, the man just calmly allowed his offer to be denied, and went on with the conversation like nothing happened. Soku glanced at the Hokage, isn't it possible he is just an avid reader, and is his favorite author? He understands you have other more important things ya know? Soku questioned, and Naruto smiled at that naive line of thought. This girl hadn't met a lot of daimyo, Aro hadn't either. But even he knew that daimyo were rather corrupt in nature. They never went to war, and they didn't even have any real power, the only reason the ninja villages still obeyed the daimyo was not out of fear of their political power, but because the daimyo were huge supporters of them with their money, killing a daimyo and stealing their money wouldn't be good for their economical growth so it was simply the lesser of two evils to allow the daimyo to have a say in the matter of the hidden villages. I guess it is possible, sure, Naruto did suppose that nothing was impossible, it was just unlikely that it was the case. That Ninyo was delicate, so the trip wasn't without gain, Soku mentioned, and Naruto nodded. The Ninyo was delicious, hey Kurama, have you ever heard of Ninyo? Naruto thought as he looked up at the giant orange fox inside of his mindscape, Naruto existed both in the real world and in his mindscape at the same time, the giant, mountain-sized easily, orange fox looking down at him with a confused look. 
I've never paid much attention to things that didn't concern me. I am a tailed beast, not a history book. I've mostly stayed to myself. Considering my dealings with humans are usually unpleasant. Kurama spoke with a knowing look to Naruto, who smiled and jumped up so that in his mindscape he was sitting on top of Kurama's head, while continuing to run in the real world. Naruto snorted. Kurama was always so helpful with information. You are always just a wealth of information, Naruto thought to Kurama. Before Naruto noticed something out of the side of his eye, Naruto straightened his back, and glanced around to see both of his Anbu Soku and Ro were on alert. Naruto's eyes changed to yellow with bar pupils, orange marks around his eyes, and he sensed everything around him, almost ten ninja. All of them are molding their chakra for a surprise attack, Naruto thought to himself as he dropped his sage mode. None of them were that threatening, bringing guards with him was just for show, he really didn't use them, and most of the time whenever somebody was dumb enough to attack a cage the cage was the one to deal with them. The guards were more often not used to evacuate the area so that their cage could go wild, after all, anyone who could take down a cage would easily be able to take down their guards with ease. Lord Seventh, there are eight shinobi surrounding us, R.O. spoke up as he sensed out the exact number of ninja. Let's just keep moving, I'll leave a clone to deal with them, Naruto stated as he raised his hand up and made a sign, creating a single shadow clone to leave behind, he nodded to his close, who vanished in a burst of raw speed, Naruto signaled to his guards, and Hei began running once more. They could hear the sounds of battle happening briefly, if only for a few seconds, before no doubt the ninja that would have attacked her defeated. Minus 30 years later something is wrong with this image, Naruto thought to himself as he sat in his office, looking at a recent picture of his family, in almost 30 years both of his children had left the house and started their own families, and as a man of nearly 60 years old you would expect to enjoy spending time with your grandchildren, I mean, I am an Uzumaki but this is ridiculous, Naruto thought to himself as he looked at the picture with his eyes narrowed. He hadn't aged a single day in years, you said it yourself, you are an Uzumaki, your clan wasn't really known for getting wrinkles when they got old, not to mention your my Jinchuriki and a six paths sage, you should have expected to remain young looking for longer than most, Kurama spoke up, since he didn't really see anything wrong with Naruto not aging like a normal person, he wasn't a normal person, he was an Uzumaki Jinchuriki who had mastered the sage arts. Naruto snorted in amusement at Kurama's statements. Yeah, it's more than likely nothing, Naruto spoke out loud. He must just be super youthful is all, minus 60 years later. The passage of time was rather harsh and unforgiving. Though he had learned that one of his Anbu had the same problem as he had. At nearly 120, Naruto had learned that him and getting old didn't get along. All of the people that he had grown up with were already many years gone, and while it had been hard for him he was a strong person at heart, he knew that people died, and as long as he carried them in his heart they would never be truly gone from his world, his children dying had been hard, but with his grandchildren and great-grandchildren the pain had been soothed a little. Heck, there were only two people that he could talk to anymore about anything, one being the Anbu guard who suffered from the same condition of non-aging as him, and the other people Orochimaru of the Sanin, a man whose goal had been to find immortality, the only living person he knew of that was older than he was. Even the 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th Hokages after him had all perished. Soku, how are you feeling? Naruto asked his Anbu, seeing as she had just experienced the death of her own grandson, he expected her to be a wreck. Of course, she was an Anbu and went through emotional training to be able to control her emotions more easily than some others, she seemed more stiff than usual though, more than likely she was taking her grandson's death a little hard, she had already experienced the death of her daughter and son-in-law. I will recover, Soku spoke up, and Naruto nodded. He picked up where he left off, and continued to write down words on the pages of a book, Naruto, seeing as he had a lot of free time while the twelfth Hokage took care of business in the village, he decided to take up book writing as a sort of hobby, not having anything to do while the younger generations ran everything was something of an annoyance, but it gave him the time to follow in his godfather's footsteps and write his own book series more loosely based off of the Icha Icha series. He had a lot of free time on his hands to write his Arrow Arrow series. That son of a bitch, I would go and track him down if he hadn't been assassinated 40 years ago, Naruto gripped his pen, crushing it when he had the realization of what had happened, it would explain why both he and Soku had been afflicted with the same curse, she had tested the unique meal that the Fang Daimyo had fed him years ago, the man had mentioned a day when you had plenty of time or something like that. The man didn't drug his food, I am sorry. Soku spoke up, and Naruto leaned back and forced himself to calm down a little. It wasn't like there was anything he could do, and he wasn't going to take the coward's way out and kill himself, that would just be spitting in the faces of everyone who he loved and who loved him. 
The Fang Daimyo, those many years ago, that fish, Ningyo I believe, whatever was in that, it would seem has a property that grants immortality, or at the very least an inability to age, this is troublesome, Naruto spoke silently, and he laid back completely in his chair, his body slumping as he stared at the sky out of the window. You have me, thanks Kurama, I guess this means you are going to be with me for the long haul huh? Naruto spoke to now his only living friend, Orochimaru wasn't a friend, and Soku was like a child to him, as the Hokage, he viewed the entire village as his children, his brothers and sisters, even though he was no longer the active Hokage, he still viewed his village as his family, there are the other tailed beasts too I guess, Naruto thought, since he could always go have a conversation with one of them to kill the time. Actually, since he had their chakra inside of him, he could just talk to them through that, he was the meeting place of the tailed beasts after all. Sounds fine by me, I spent the first 1000 years of my life sleeping for the most part, waking up only when somebody provoked me, it doesn't really matter if I sleep inside of you, or outside of you, Kurama snickered loud enough that Naruto had to wonder what he found funny, Naruto stood up, deciding that he was going to take a walk and see what Orochimaru was up to just to kill sometime. When he walked, Soku followed behind him, doing her job as his immortal guard it would seem since they both held the same curse. She was pretty much the only person capable of being his personal Anbu at this point. Later that day this is different, you've certainly changed your lab up. Naruto noticed just how incredibly high tech that Orochimaru's still very creepy lab had become, he walked through the lab without bothering to raise his guard up, the days he took Orochimaru as a serious threats had passed so long ago that even the mere thought of thinking Orochimaru was a threat were laughable. Orochimaru was certainly aware of this, there were several large computer screens that were showing the results of something that Orochimaru was monitoring. It's rare for you to come by, do you need information, or a favor? Orochimaru asked with a raised eyebrow as he stood nearby. Continuing his own research, but the boredom that he had seemed to be rather easy to spot, the man had been preforming experiments for so long that he was running out of experiments to preform, he had documented all known jutsu, every jutsu ever used was documented in his computers and in his scroll library, he had a vast array of technologies that were aimed at every aspect of life, he had mastered cloning technology, and had even unraveled the secrets of life. There wasn't much left for him to discover or work on, so he was just ing around at this point until something new and interesting caught his eye. Turns out I am immortal, Naruto casually dropped a bomb on Orochimaru. Orochimaru raised an eyebrow, and Orochimaru asked, not sure what that meant for him, unless Naruto was saying that he was finally letting him put some research into that unique right hand of his, then it wasn't like they would have much to actually talk about, are you finally going to let me take a crack at that hand or yours? Orochimaru asked with a glance at Naruto's bandage covered right hand. Naruto raised an eyebrow, you mean this? I am sure if Katasuke was able to invent it, you would be able to as well but better, Naruto pointed out, and Orochimaru frowned a little. That hand was a marvel, the ability to absorb all of your enemy's techniques and nullify them isn't something that can be easily replicated. The man was truly an inventive genius, if not a fool in other areas, Orochimaru commented with a look at Naruto's hand licking his lips as something interested him once more, the ability to completely nullify and absorb almost any attack, other than taijutsu attacks, that were sent his way was something that truly appealed to him, it is a shame he died before completing it, he could have made the perfect artificial shinobi one day, Orochimaru lamented the lose of a technological genius. Oh well, another genius would be born in the future and put Katasuke to shame, and that would be an interesting day. What insane idea are you currently working on? Naruto asked as he looked around, changing the subject to the reason he came. Orochimaru grunted, working on. There isn't much left for me to do, all I am really doing is observing other dimensions, there are a few interesting dimensions, but none of them really appeal to me, Orochimaru frowned in annoyance at all of the uninteresting places, almost all of the other dimensions were so far back behind them in technology and fighting that he was ashamed that he was bothering with them. Naruto blinked. Other dimensions you say, any chakra using ones? Naruto asked out of curiosity, and Orochimaru nodded. There were a few that used chakra, but because their dimensions were different the way the chakra formed in that dimension was different as well, not that different. Yes, you know how in our bodies we have spiritual energy, physical energy, and chakra. Orochimaru questioned Naruto, and Naruto nodded his head. Ninjutsu was formed when you took your chakra, and used it to correct your physical and spiritual energies together, and then changed its shape or element. You could train your spiritual energy by meditating, studying, and through experience, you could also train your physical energy by training your endurance. Of course, 
Balancing spiritual and physical energies together with natural energy is key to being a sage. By using my chakra, I blend together natural energy with my spiritual and physical energies to make Senjutsu chakra. Naruto explained with his arms crossed, he was one of the few people that was able to achieve said balance with his inner energies. Orochimaru smirked for a moment. Well, in some of these dimensions they don't have the energies we have. This dimension Orochimaru pointed to a dimension whose waves were registered as blue, and seemed to have a different frequency than others, only has access to spiritual energy. When I observed them, they manifested their spiritual energy as their form of combat. It would seem those that use it call themselves death gods, Orochimaru stated with a snort. He had met a death god, these little shits weren't even close. Arrogant, continue, Naruto commented, since he had met actual gods, when he went into his six paths sage mode he was a god himself. This dimension only used their physical energy to do battle, though they get their powers from eating fruits that take away their ability to swim, it also takes away their powers, Orochimaru commented, and Naruto raised an eyebrow when he heard that weird downside. That was a major weakness, losing your powers when you get covered in water. Water ninjutsu users would be the worst enemies to this dimension it would seem, but that didn't matter so much, Naruto looked at a chart that was showing multiple forms of energies on it, and he pointed to it. How about that one? Naruto asked, and Orochimaru nodded his head. That dimension is underdeveloped, but so far it seems like the most interesting. This dimension has multiple species, there are some species that use purely spiritual energy. And there are some that use purely physical energy, there are even some species that have chakra, and it would see some members that have chakra have started to create a form of senjutsu. Orochimaru spoke as he pulled up the image of the drone that he had sent into that dimension to observe it, he had studied Sasuke's old technique to travel dimensions, and created a machine capable of doing it, so sending machines to observe these dimensions was an easy thing. The image showed a group of men with spears stabbing a bear, battling against the more powerful beast to take it down. You weren't lying, this dimension is undeveloped, but Senjutsu, now that is interesting, Naruto mentioned when the image shited to a person with cat ears absorbing the energies around them, having discovered the energies by themselves, Naruto watched as other animals and animal-like people watched, that looks pretty interesting, Naruto spoke with a grin on his face. Orochimaru nodded, yes, the variety of different species is interesting. In 10,000 years or so I would say this dimension might actually become something special. There are a few individuals that are worthy of researching, and some species seem to have extremely long lives, but the urge doesn't strike me, Orochimaru commented as he turned off the video images, he sighed and rubbed his forehead in annoyance, the only dimension that was really worth watching hadn't developed enough yet that it was interesting to him personally, he had been watching this dimension for 50 years, and he did notice some species aged so slowly they might as well not be aging. Naruto smiled as an idea formed in his head, a dimension where Senjutsu was starting to take place and form. Now as a sage, he couldn't just ignore such a thing. Naruto, no, Naruto, yes, Naruto responded to Kurama, before he turned to Orochimaru, I want to travel to this dimension the underdeveloped one, Naruto mentioned to it. Orochimaru raised an eyebrow, that can easily be arranged, but don't you have other important matters to attend to? Orochimaru questioned. He really doesn't, Soku spoke up for the first time, Naruto spent his days doing literally nothing or writing books, his family had drifted away from him as the many years passed by, and the village had grown to the point that they no longer had any need for him, shinobi were practically a thing of the past, with very few people going into the business of being a ninja nowadays. It was actually sad to see their way of life naturally dying out, but it meant that there was practically nothing for Naruto to do anymore. He literally had too much time on his hands, what she said, Naruto agreed fully with the rude interruption, he had nothing better to do with his time, so why no go and watch as another species discovered the wonders of Senjutsu. He had nothing better to do than sitting around watching everyone around him growing old and dying, so why not make more use of his time and go to a place that had a use for him, not to mention the only threat in this world is you at this point, Naruto mentioned in passing. Orochimaru smirked, on Naruto-kun, thank you for thinking so highly of me. I don't like you, at all, Naruto mentioned, and Orochimaru nodded his head, of course, he liked Naruto plenty, and held great respect for him personally, Naruto watched as Orochimaru simply pushed a button, and a black portal opened up inside of a machine, is it really that easy? Naruto asked as he glanced at the portal. It looked just like Sasuke's portal, I was able to study and copy Sasuke's space-time jutsu, the portal opens up, you walk through it, and the portal closes, it's as simple as that, I do think you were being reckless though, Orochimaru pointed out. Going to the new dimension would be easy for Naruto, 
What was reckless was leaving behind the village in case they needed him. He wouldn't have thought Naruto capable of doing such a thing, and he could see Naruto's sad smile. The village is my home, and its people my family, but I am just a relic of the past now. I am not needed anymore in this new age society. Everyone is growing weaker, with each generation the less people are becoming shinobi. This year alone gave birth to only a single man wanting to become a shinobi. Naruto spoke with genie and sorrow in his voice. The way of life that he had lived his entire life was all but gone, and he had been forced to watch it die without being able to do anything about it. How about you Hinoko? Orochimaru asked the Anbu, she actually growled. Soku, Hinoko spoke, hating her real name with a passion. Very few people called her by that name, she was Soku when she was doing her job, anyway. I've already lost my entire family, the duty of an Anbu is to their cage. I would rather die than see what Shinobi will become in the next 100 years. Hinoko spoke with his anger at the very thought of the lifestyle that she trained for going to after its own neck in a slow death. Any ninja from her generation could say that they looked up to the greatness of the previous generations, but now she could only look in shame at the current generations. Now, finding a janin worth their salt was like finding a needle in a haystack, most people never made it past the chunin rank, and the majority of them were satisfied with being a simple genin without even attempting to move up in rank, the times of true shinobi who did everything they could to grow stronger, to become better ninja, were long gone. It had been a sad decline, you're letting her come with you? Orochimaru asked Naruto, who simply shrugged his shoulders. If she wanted to come, that was up to her, he wasn't going to make her do anything that she didn't want to do, well other than when he had an order for her as an anbu, he could understand her desire to not see what the shinobi world was going to become, he himself would hate to see it. As somebody who fought for the freedom of shinobi, seeing everything he worked for being turned to nothing was saddening. Somebody has to guard Lord Seventh, Hinoko stated with conviction in her words, it wasn't uncommon for past Hokages to have Anbu guards with them anyway, though again, no cage really needed an Anbu guard, only an idiot would attack a cage without the power of a cage at least, I will travel where he travels, until the die I am killed in his service, Hinoko stated, with Orochimaru looking at Naruto. Okay, so she actually had a death wish, or she stopped caring if she lived or died, with the recent passing of her remaining family, it was rather easy to understand if she was secretly hoping that she would be killed. There is nothing you want to take with you? Orochimaru questioned, and Naruto shook his head, he didn't need material possessions, all he needed were the clothes on his back. Orochimaru gained a glean in his eye, so Naruto took a scroll out of his pocket. Don't even try to go looking for the scroll of secrets or the treasured tools of the Sage of Six Paths, the scroll of secrets is the property of the Hokage, and as a Six Paths Sage and an Uzumaki these dangerous items will be safe guarded by me. Naruto stated with a twitching eye when he mentioned the tools, he himself had a rather unpleasant experience with one of the items during his reign as Hokage. Why the hell did Tenten even have the treasured tools on display in her shop? That was like begging people to steal the items and using them against their people. He wasn't going to let Orochimaru get his hands on those items, it would be the height of foolishness to allow such a thing to happen, he went through a lot of trouble because of the items. You know how to take away my fun, Orochimaru lamented sadly as he calibrated exactly where Naruto was going to be ending up. I guess it doesn't matter, you plan on becoming a sort of, sage trainer? Orochimaru questioned, and Naruto shrugged his shoulders. I am an immortal sage, when I was a teen, I did some taijutsu teaching at the academy. And I found that I like teaching students, even if I don't teach senjutsu, as long as I have students to pass my knowledge onto I will be happy. Naruto spoke with a softer smile, he remembered being asked by Uruka to teach at the academy as an instructor for a few years, it had brought him a lot of happiness to help those students, the immortal sage trainer. I like it, I guess I can add that to my list of titles, Naruto let the name roll off of his tongue. Yeah. That sounded nice, Naruto walked towards the portal, and he glanced at Orochimaru with narrowed eyes for a moment. You don't trust me? Orochimaru asked with a smirk on his face. I know you, I trust you won't lie to me, you are an honest man, but you often leave details out that are important, I also know you have the habit of, being a when you're bored, Naruto pointed out to Orochimaru, who smiled and nodded in agreement. Yeah, he had that habit, Hinoko followed behind Naruto and stopped next to him, Staring at Orochimaru, she pointed at him, and an orange ball with static coming off of it appeared on her finger. Who knows, in 100 years, 1000 years, 10,000 years I might get bored myself, if the world gets boring, I may cause a wind to stir it up, Orochimaru's statement was alarming, but Naruto knew what he was implying. I am going to with you from the safety of our world, and there is nothing you can do about it. Naruto sighed, 
He did not like that man. It'll be sure to keep that in mind. Naruto's statement got a nod from the man. Before Naruto walked into the portal, and Hinoko followed behind him, she glanced behind herself as she appeared out of the other side of the portal, and the portal behind her close up, she felt dirt underneath her feet instead of marble flooring, so she guessed they had landed safely. Other than the fact that she could feel malice all around her. She blinked and noticed that they were surrounded by a group of grown men and women wearing white clothing, each of them holding themselves with an impressive aura to them. How dare you appear on Mount Olympus, for stepping foot on the land of the gods, you will not escape unscathed. I really do not like you Orochimaru, Naruto spoke as he powered up. His clothing turned pure golden, with black lines running along them like symbols, Naruto's whisker marks turned into curved bars, and his eyes turned golden with cross-shaped pupils, his entire body gaining the same flaming glow of his clothes, I take one step into this world, and I land myself in a fight, very well gods, allow me to show you a power that defeats gods, Naruto spoke with confidence as he stepped forward towards his opponents. Hinoko lowered her guard, knowing that this would be quick. Nobody alive could keep up with the speed of the seventh Hokage at his full might, the only people that could have kept up with him were legends like Kagaya Otsutsuki, Momoshiki and Kinshiki Otsutsuki, and Sasuke Uchiha. Only a god can defeat a god, the leader of the group spoke with confidence of his own. In moments, in less than a second, he didn't even see the golden man in front of him move, but Zeus the king of the Olympus gods, watched as his fellow gods fell to their knees, and fell onto their faces knocked out, Naruto continued walking towards him at a slow pace, before he vanished and appeared next to Zeus himself, Naruto placed a hand on Zeus's shoulder and squeezed it gently. Were they all dead? I am sorry, I didn't meant to intrude on your land, I made sure to only knock them all out, I don't want to spill blood that doesn't have to be spilled, Naruto spoke as he walked away from Zeus, who visibly stiffened, before he relaxed at the news that his fellow gods were alive, just unconscious, can you give me directions to the nearest human village? Naruto asked Zeus with a sheepish smile when he realized that he didn't know where he was going to go. He might as well start at the closest settlement and go from there. Time to find himself a pupil, come on Elsha, if you want to hit me you are going to have to do better than that. Naruto smiled when he blocked a powerful punch with his forearm from his opponent, while he would not call her his apprentice, his current student was a rather powerful young woman, Hinoko was watching from a far distance away from the power that this young woman was displaying. Elsha, no last name, she was a bastard child, an orphan whose mother took her own life shortly after Elsha had been born. Her father had left long before that point though, she was a pale-skinned young woman that stood half a foot shorter than Naruto, with her brown hair spilling over her shoulders, her body was toned to perfection, though she was rather average when it came to most of her other looks, she was a very beautiful young girl though, she had battle scars all over her body, all of them inflicted by Naruto, that she had gained during her training. Her right arm was covered in red scales, with a green gem glowing on the top of her head. Boost Master. Stop treating me like a child, I am already 23 years old. Elsha shouted as she made to punch Naruto, and Naruto grabbed her fist with his right hand. Naruto smiled at her when all of the power of her technique was negated, stop doing that. I can't power up if you keep negating my boosting technique. Elsha shouted at her master as she mentally cursed his damn right hand. The power to absorb and nullify techniques was dangerous. Naruto smiled at her as he blocked a kick from her, grabbing her ankle and flipping her onto her hands, he blocked over 19 of her kicks using his elbow, before she had the chance to flip onto her feet again. The ability to double your power every 10 seconds is a crutch. The more you train your base power, the greater your boosted power will be, of course, if you never have the chance to boost your strength such an ability is useless, not everyone will let you boost yourself up, Naruto mentioned to her as he punched her in the cheek, her head snapped to the left as she was sent soaring away, Naruto vanished and appeared behind her, stopping her with a hand on her back, she spun on her heel, and tried to strike Naruto with her scale covered hand. She stopped her fist before he could block it, and puffed up her cheeks. She spewed flames at him from her mouth, and Naruto waved his hand in front of the flames, absorbing them as Elsha jumped away from Naruto, getting distance. Boost then it'll make time for myself to boost. Welsh Dragon Balance Breaker. Elsha shouted out as power practically rolled off of her body. Naruto smirked, red armor appeared over her body as her clothes vanished. While he had seen the male version of the armor before. This one was different, her armor was less spiked. And more rounded in several areas, her body was covered in scale like armor platings, but her thighs, biskeps, and her stomach were all on display, she had large red gauntlets with green gems on them, a red helmet with green gem eyes, two pieces of red shoulder armor with green gems, 
Her breasts were covered in red armor with one large green gem each, and one on her sternum, not to mention she had large dragon wings coming from her back, and red armor leggings going from her knees down. Her womanhood was barely covered by a thong-like piece of red scale armor, her ass completely on display. She moved a lot faster than before, when she came at Naruto. Naruto created a single seal with his hands, before he jumped backwards and touched the ground for a split second. A large wall of earth formed out of the ground in front of himself, she crashed right into it, shattered it with relative ease, the wall was enhanced by chakra, and stronger than steel with ease, she looked around when she saw Naruto wasn't standing behind the wall, instead, he was in the air above her, and she felt him when he kicked her in her exposed lower back. Constantly be aware of your surroundings, even when it looks like the opponent is on the defensive, Naruto stated as he blocked her now clawed attacks, the ends of the gauntlets being claws, every second she was boosting herself again, and every time she boosted, he would block her attacks with his right hand so that her boosts would be reset back to the starting point, your stamina is improving, we've been training for 5 hours now, Naruto praised her. Her chest puffed in pride as she tried to punch him in his face. He slammed his knee right into her stomach, getting her entire body to lean forward as she herself gasped in pain, several cracks appeared on her armor in several places, before she flapped her wings and took to the sky. Her armor was constantly shouting out boost without rest as she waited for her body to reach its limits on boosting. I can't let him touch me with his hand again, every time I boost I just end up giving him more of my power, I need to focus this attack and unleash it in his blind spot, Elsha thought as she flew around randomly to try and see if she could confuse Naruto. You're fighting the definition of a true monster Elsha. Shut up Diedrig, Master Naruto has to have a weakness, he himself told me every opponent, no matter how powerful, has weaknesses, you're just afraid of him, Elsha stated to Diedrig with a smirk on her face underneath her helmet. Diedrig, the dragon spirit inside of her boosted gear. He was always telling her off for trying to seriously fight the man in front of her, of course, she didn't believe him and some of the stories that he told her. That man could look great red in the eyes, and scare the shit out of that monster. I remember being a hatching, and I sensed a great power from several dimensions away, that power was his power, and it is much stronger than when I first sensed his power, not even Great Red and Ophis together are capable of having their powers sensed across dimensions, Diedrig commented to Elsha, worry for her safety in his tone, this wasn't his first time sensing the power of the man in front of them, the man that was training his user to become stronger at her request. He would rather fight the dragon of dragons and the dragon god together than he would the human standing in front of them with a pleasant smile on his face. Elsha zipped down towards Naruto, and he grabbed her wrist with his left hand, before he flipped her over his shoulder and onto her back, he used the strength behind her attack and redirected all of it back to herself, she shouted in pain when she slammed into a crater in the ground made by her own power. Guh. Listen to your partner, it's always a good thing to listen to those with more experience than yourself, of course, I am happy to see you making your own choices, Naruto lectured Elsha as he shattered the armor on her body, the majority of her body that is, she was left with her armor thong, half of her chest armor, and the right half of her helmet. You never listen to me, shut up Karama, I am making a point. When you move full speed at a person, more often than not you need to worry about tunnel vision. When you were moving towards me, you weren't able to react in time as I used your attack against you. Naruto shared experience with the girl as she jumped up and away from Naruto, she now had a light sweat on her body, having boosted herself to her limit, and maintained a transformation in her balance breaker form, let's continue, Naruto raised his hand up and motioned for her to attack him once more. You will accept me as your one and only apprentice. Elsha shouted as she shot after Naruto, and he jumped backwards blocking her attacks. Naruto nodded his head at the fury of her attacks. She was attacking with the intent to kill, just like he taught her, every one of her attacks were aimed at his vitals, so she was fighting him with completely seriousness, he dodged half of her attacks, and when he dodged he got inside of her guard and started to slap his hands against random spots of her body. Good, you're trying to kill me, when fighting somebody stronger than you, always go at them with the intent to kill, otherwise they will destroy you, Naruto spoke as he placed paper tags all over her body, they were so light and thin that she didn't even notice him attaching them to her bare skin, Naruto placed his palm in the center of her chest and pushed her arms distance away from himself, boom. Boom Elsha exploded, her entire body covered by the powerful explosions granted by the paper tags, shards of her armor shot out of the fires, and she herself landed outside of the fire moments later back in her regular clothing, her right arm transformed back into her boosted gear form, having been forced to power down from her balance breaker form, she was panting with burns all over her body, a heavy amount of sweat dripping off of her body, her left arm almost burnt to a crisp. 
I am ready to move on. Beyond simple hand-to-hand -hand combat, I've proven I am ready for your real training. Elsha spoke through her pants. Naruto looked into her eyes. You're not ready yet. You still don't understand the real source of your own strength yet. Naruto told her sadly. Those who had the power of the boosted gear would always be surrounded by strong opponents, and would often become strong themselves, only to fall into lust with that very same power. Those of the dragon would always be consumed by either their lust for battle, or their lust for whatever it was that made them wish for power. Elsha was the same. The woman had formed a harem of handsome men, only to turn them all away from herself when she saw the chance for herself to grow stronger, when she saw an even stronger man. She herself had decided to lust after power instead of focusing on different kinds of lusts. Diedreg, my boosted gear, your training are the sources of my power, I understand where my power comes from, Elsha spoke as she raised her arm up and showed off the source of her power. Naruto was silent, you're right, you do get power from your boosted gear and Diedreg, and my training has honed that power, but do you believe that power is your strength? Naruto asked her as he walked towards her so that she could more clearly see him, she was barely standing on her feet at this moment. Balance breakers were very taxing, and using her balance breaker after five hours of training had to have stressed her already stressed body to her limits. Naruto could see her confusion, he poked his finger into her breast. Look in here and see if you can't find where your strength comes from, what gives you strength, the source of your strength will determine if you are fit to be my apprentice or not, Diedrig, you aren't allowed to help her, this is a lesson she has to learn on her own, Naruto mentioned to the dragon inside of his student. There was a difference between student and apprentice, you could have any number of students together, but only one apprentice at a time. She was his student, but not his apprentice, she just happened to be his own successful student at the moment, but at the moment she still didn't have the right stuff to become his apprentice. Power and strength are the same thing, Elsha spoke up, and Naruto turned to walk away with his hand raised up. When you realize what real strength is, come and find me, as it is, this is as far as I can take you right now, I hope you find your answer. Naruto spoke to her, and she stood straight up and jerked her hand over her chest in a fist. She saluted him as he walked off, 500 years later. Suffice to say, Elsha never became Naruto's apprentice. It took 50 years for Naruto to learn that Elsha died only about 10 years after she had started her journey on finding what gave her strength. He had talked with many people who knew of her, and he was happy to learn that the young lass had ended up becoming a hero to many people on her journey to the discovery of her strength. Naruto couldn't help but smile at that fact every time he remembered it, he was sad that she died on her journey to becoming his apprentice, but he had little doubt that as she was dying she realized what her true strength was. Many people only figured out the type of person they were, and where they got their strength from, moments before they died. Naruto was just lucky that he trained in a way that taught him what type of person he was while he was still living. Let me divide your power already. Trust me, you don't want to do that. Naruto nullified the touch of the current possessor of the divine dividing with his right hand, absorbing the dividing technique before it could take effect, completely nullifying it. Naruto knew a thing or two about both the boosted gear and the divine dividing thanks to his experience teaching Elsha, since she had killed a divine dividing user in her lifetime when she was younger. By coming into physical contact with an enemy, the user could divide the power of the enemy by half and combine that power with their own power and like the boosted gear it could be activated every 10 seconds after coming into contact with the enemy. There was a limit though, if the power you attempted to absorb was too great, then it would damage their bodies, and Naruto knew from personal experience what would happen to somebody even as powerful as Madara when they tried to steal too much power from their surroundings, not to mention stealing chakra from a Jinchuriki was dangerous. Naruto alone had too much power, enough power to instantly kill a divine dividing user that tried to steal his power. He was a Jinchuriki of the strongest tailed beast, whose chakra could also instantly kill those who were too weak to handle it, and instantly kill anyone without chakra inside of their bodies to handle the chakra. Not to mention he was a sage, and stealing chakra from a sage if they were in sage mode could turn the enemy into a stone statue. Then train me to kill the boosted gear user. You trained a boosted gear user in the past, so it's only fair you train a divine dividing user now. I am really tempted to let you steal some of my power. Naruto spoke with a twitching eye as he blocked all of the mons attacks with one hand, the man was already in his balance breaker form, and he had impressive speed and power, of course, underneath his armor he was still just a normal non-enhanced human, Naruto was naturally a super-powered human, so without the ability to gain any more power from him, the man was stuck with the power the base form of the vanishing dragon balance breaker gave to him. Divine dividing users were far too prone to being lost to their bloodlust than boosted gear users. They often craved hot battle more than anything, 
This is a man you don't need to make an enemy of, when I was but a hatchling I sensed his power coming from a different dimension, he has too much power for your body to handle, you would die if you divide him, Albion, the white dragon to the boosted gears red dragon, spoke out loud to his user. He remembered the terror he felt when he felt the clashing of two powerful people with so much raw power that he had sensed them from several dimensions away. This was a monster, not a human, in front of them. I am going to steal his power, and prove myself worthy of his training, Lance spoke as he tried to grab onto Naruto. Again, tempted to let you try it, you are really annoying, by your voice I would say you're a teenager, you still have the feeling of invincibility youth gives you, Soku, do your needle thing, Naruto mentioned to the air. Huh you rk. Lance founts a needle made of orange chakra shoved into a gap between his armor, before the man was placed into a state of false death, Hinoko stood nearby with a ball floating in front of her finger, having shot a chakra needle at the man, the white dragon user not having paid any attention to her thanks to her weak chakra signature, and the lower amount of chakra that she had. To bad for the man, she had a powerful ability, she could shoot chakra needles into her opponents that could cause anything from paralysis to instant death, or even refresh the target's stamina. The man was just unlucky that he was going to be feeling extremely sick and weak when he woke up, since she put him into a state of temporary death. Lord Seventh, Hinoko stated with a bow to him, Naruto sighed. Next time, do that sooner, it was hard to make sure that boy didn't end up killing himself, he isn't perma-dead as is he? Naruto asked as he kicked the dead lance in the ribs. Temporary, but if he comes back I will make it permanent, Hinoko stated with a look towards the dragon's sacred gear holder. She was so annoyed with sacred gear users, they usually had no skills outside of their sacred gears, and completely relied on them to the point that if they couldn't use them, they were worthless in battle. Please spare my foolish partner, he is still young and arrogant, his craving for battle often makes him forget himself, Albion apologized from a gem on the armor of the dead, he was technically dead, teenager. Young and arrogant, shut up Karama, I will hit you, Naruto commented to the massive tailed beast inside of himself. He was sure that Kurama was getting a kick of Naruto being reminded of the way he had been when he was a young teen. Ow. Told you, Naruto stated, since inside of his mind he had punched Kurama in the nose when he looked like he was going to make another comment, Naruto turned around and started back on his journey to finding more students, and maybe even finding the apprentice that he was looking for. Tailed beast? Hinoko asked with a raised eyebrow. Naruto often talked to Kurama out loud instead of using his mind to speak which often made Naruto look like he was talking to himself. Yep, onwards to the next location, this big island looking place, Naruto had managed to map the entire planet in his several thousand years living on the world, with six paths sage mode he could sense everything, so he did have a map of the world, funny enough, everyone seemed to think that the world was flat. It was hilarious, if the world was flat, how did they explain the rising of the sun and moon, or where all of the water on the planet came from? That means we have to walk across the ocean, I don't have enough chakra for that, you could just fly us there, Hinoko commented. Naruto shook his head, nope, it's not about getting there fast, it's about the journey getting there, let's just spend a few years walking at a slow pace, no rush, we might even find a boyfriend for you on the way, Naruto teased the younger, though at this point their age gap was less than 10 years, out of the thousands of years they had been alive. Hinoko turned her nose up, you only have about a thousand years before all of the eggs in your ovaries are gone. Women have about 2 million eggs at birth, lose 11,000 each month before puberty, you started puberty at around 13 or so years old, and it's been a couple thousand years, so you only have, Naruto started to do the math in his head to find out how long it would be before Hinoko would be unable to have children anymore, Karama, math. I don't do math, I started puberty at 14, and I have close to 800 more years to have children, anyway, you know the pain that brings, it'll just be watching them grow old and die again, no thank you but I would never let my ovaries dry up, Hinoko commented blandly as they walked together, she wasn't in any hurry to feel the pain of losing her family, and watching them die over and over again while she lived on. Naruto shrugged, okay then, completely up to you, I might spend a couple hundred years settled down in the future, sure, it will hurt to watch them all grow up, but it would be nice to have a family again, anyway, there are some species here that live thousands of years, who knows, I might meet a nice little yukai, or maybe a fallen angel. Naruto thought out loud as he considered trying to fall in love again. He would never forget his love Hanada, but he was sure that she wanted him to find love again, to share his love with another once more, she was the type of person that wanted their family's happiness, and he was sure that she would be sad if she saw him forsaking future love because of her. You're much stronger than I am, Hinoko reminded him, and Naruto ruffled her hair. 
Shinobi endure, it's what we do, don't underestimate yourself. Naruto spoke to her with confidence in her abilities for her. It was their job to endure, 700 years later, are all dragons this annoying? Naruto asked with crossed legs, an annoyed look on his face as he sat in six paths sage mode. Around him was the form of Kurama, standing up Kurama was easily greatly taller than the vast majority of mountains, of course, at the moment Kurama was sitting down right on top of a large red dragon, right on top of the dragon's head, the dragon was about 100 meters in length, barely comparable to Kurama's massive size, though it was much bigger than either the white or red dragon emperors had been when they were alive and not sacred gears. Great Red, the strongest creature this world had to offer, or at least the creature was advertised as that, currently Naruto was using the creature to sit down, since the dragon had a horrible temper, all Naruto had been doing was watching the dragon flying, and the massive beast had decided it didn't like Naruto watching it flying, the beast was powerful to be sure, but its power wasn't something he really found to be alarming either. I guess this makes me the strongest existence, Kurama noted, since now he could talk outside of Naruto since his golden glowing form was around Naruto. I guess that makes me the strongest existence, since I am stronger than you, Naruto mentioned with a smirk on his face, and Kurama grumbled loudly at that. We're the strongest existence, ha ha ha, hey great red, you finally calmed down enough to talk, or am I going to have to rasenshuriken your head off of your body? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow, looking down into the eyes of great red, Naruto would rather not kill anyone, but he would do it if he was forced to do it. The Rasenshuriken was made up of billions and trillions of wind blades so small that they could cut through the cells in the body in the Rasenshuriken's base form. The attack could cut right through nearly anything, and Naruto had used the attack to split a mountain in half shortly after he had first created it, not to mention he once literally used the attack to destroy an army of flying puppets. All he needed to do was aim the attack at Great Red, and with Great Red's size it was practically impossible for him to miss with it. Meh. I say we killed the lizard, it attacked you when all you did was watch it flying, so far, dragons seem to be a big cause of your annoyance, Kurama noted, and Naruto nodded. True, Diedrich wasn't so bad, anyway, I think we beat this guy up enough, he should nt have enough power in him left to fight, Naruto commented as he powered down and fell out of the sky, he landed on top of Great Red's face, staring into the eyes of the downed dragon. I, hate, you, hey, don't pick fights you can't finish, Kurama wanted kill you, so be glad I didn't let him have his way with you, or you wouldn't be here anymore, you should go somewhere quiet and lick your wounds, Naruto mentioned as he looked around at the battlefield, Naruto had managed to keep the vast majority of the short fights damaged limited, but there was a few mountains that were missing now. Kurama might have grabbed Great Red by the throat, and choke slammed the dragon into a few mountains. Kurama had a lot of pent up energy inside of him. What kind of monster are you? Great Red asked as he started to recover from the ass kicking he got. Naruto jumped off of the beast and landed on his face, while the dragon stood up to his massive height. You seem familiar. I feel like I've sensed you somewhere before, Great Red spoke. He got a familiar feeling from Naruto's energy, like he sensed it a long time ago, but couldn't remember when he sensed it, or he just didn't care during the time period he sensed it from. Rude, accurate, Kurama. Naruto stated when Kurama corrected him, and Kurama snorted. Madara and Hashirama were both considered monsters, and you are so far above their level now that even I consider your strength completely monstrous, the dragons charging up an attack, by the way, Kurama pointed out to Naruto, who saw flames gathering in Great Red's mouth, and he sighed before he raised his right hand up. When Great Red breathed out the flames, Naruto's right hand absorbed the flames up completely adding the power to Naruto's own chakra reserves as the energy was converted into chakra for him. The bandages on Naruto's right hand were slightly burned by the heat though, revealing a robotic hand underneath the bandages. I can absorb and nullify techniques and abilities, Naruto informed Great Red, who paused when he realized that little tidbit meant that the only thing he could use against Naruto that would not be absorbed would be physical strength, seeing as Naruto could summon forth a giant fox many times larger than him, the odds of him winning a physical might contest were slim to none, and without his techniques and abilities, he didn't really have a way to fight. He refused to back down though, and got ready for a full round too. I did not know that, but that just makes killing you that much. Great Red froze when Naruto glared at him and flared his chakra. For a split second, he the faces of nine beasts behind Naruto, followed by angry ringed eyes, the power and killing intent behind the glare was enough to cause the dragon of dragons to pause cold in his tracks. Great Red even backed up when he felt instinctive fear of something with more power than himself. Damn Naruto. When was the last time you glared something so big into fearing you? 
Kurama asked with a grin on his face inside of Naruto's head. It had been so long since he saw Naruto glare somebody into submission. The Ten Tails I think, but remember when we scared Shin's clone army? Naruto reminded Kurama mentally, keeping up his glare and killing intent. Meh. Scaring some little brats isn't hard, it's much more impressive to scare an emotionless god whose sole purpose is destruction into being afraid of you. Kurama watched through Naruto's eyes as Great Red created a teleportation portal and flew through it, no longer wanting to continue the fight with Naruto. Naruto completely powered himself down, his chakra no longer flaring as he himself stopped glaring. Where is your little Anbu? Kurama asked, noticing Hinoko was gone. The second the fight begun, Naruto had sent her to go and evacuate any nearby villages to make sure that everybody remained safe and sound. Dealing with dragons was usually dangerous for anyone that happened to get caught in the middle. One year later, remove him, no, remove him, no. Remove him, go away, when you remove him, no, Naruto found the current situation he was in even more annoying than the year before when he made Great Red retreat back to wherever he came from. Naruto didn't expect a small child, apparently a dragon god shapeshifter. To start following him around several months after he had kicked the red brat's ass, the girl-looking creature was small, about crotch height when compared to him, but that mattered little to a shapeshifter, she had long black hair, the blackest he had ever seen, and grey eyes that showed little emotion, she wore very little on her body, she wore a black cloth around her waist, and one strip of cloth around her non-existent breasts. Ophis, the dragon god of infinity, the dragon born from the infinity of the dimensional gap, it, though right now it had a vagina so Naruto would refer to it as she, was following him around to get him to remove Great Red from the dimensional gap. Remove him, it's a big place, learn to share, Naruto commented back to Ophis when she monotone requested that he remove what she saw as something that was his fault. Naruto forcing Great Red to retreat caused him to retreat to her home. No, it's like a parent and child arguing, Hinoko noted with crossed arms, because Ophis was following them around as they made their way across the island country they were currently traveling on, the argument had been going on for months now, and Ophis had taken many forms since the argument started, trying to find the face and shape that Naruto would say yes to. The two were both completely stubborn, suck my. Will you remove him? No, then no, ha. Huh. Deal with my pain Naruto, deal with the pain of having to deal with somebody just as stubborn as you are. Kurama laughed at Naruto's pain, seeing Naruto dealing with somebody just as hard-headed as him, for once, Naruto was dealing with exactly what Kurama had to deal with for Naruto's entire life somebody who was both stubborn and refused to give up on something they wanted. I hate you, Naruto commented, was that to Kurama or Ophis? Hinoko thought with a raised eyebrow when she noticed Naruto's mood get a little worse, his words weren't actually filled with hate, but they were filled with annoyance. If you love me, will you remove him? No, then I don't care. I would needle her, but I am pretty sure she is too strong for that to work well, Hinoko shrugged her shoulders, and she grabbed her earplugs and put them in, the world became silent for her and the arguments of the two people nearby her were drowned out. I've literally eating things less annoying than you. Don't care. Just want silence. Hinoko put her hands in her pockets out of the bliss of not having to hear the argument that was going on, and she would like to keep it that way. The argument going on behind her didn't even exist for all she cared. Both of the people behind her were literally able to continuing arguing forever, seeing as both dragons and those who ate Ningyo were immortal when considering age. Oh god. This argument could literally go on forever. Shit. This might go on forever. I think now might be the time to compromise Naruto, Kurama pointed out with a yawn. No. All Great Red is doing is flying around, it isn't like he's hurting anything, and it is a big place apparently. Naruto stayed firm that Ophis was just being spoiled, and needed to get over it. Everyone liked silence now and again, but she could go and find a silent place somewhere else and it would be literally the same. Kill him. What? No. The hell. You want remove him, so kill him. I am not killing him because he ruined your silence, find another place if you want some silence, Naruto crossed his arms stubbornly, and Ophis grabbed onto his cloak and looked up at him with her eyes narrowing a little, the two of them stared each other down for literally hours, saying nothing to each other. Where? After hours of her not saying anything, she asked a simple question, she wanted to know where there was another place where she could find silence. I don't know, bottom of the ocean, Naruto told her simply. I, would drown. Ophis pointed out to him, unless she shape shifted into a fish, it would be pointless to go to the bottom of the ocean, she would rather take a human form than the form of a fish, she was comfortable in human forms, despite being a dragon, Naruto groaned in annoyance again, before he scratched the side of his head. Okay, 
he was starting to think that dragons were just an annoying species in general. Remove him. Only my wife tells me what to do. Mate with me, and then remove him. She is determined, ill give her that, she's somehow managed to annoy you, and she has offered you her body to reach her goals, you could always make her shapeshift into your late wife, Kurama pointed out to Naruto, who thought about it for only a moment before he reached a conclusion. That was super creepy, having somebody transform into his late wife so that he could screw her. No seriously, that was super creepy, Naruto grabbed Hanoko's shoulder, and he looked at Ophis before he raised his middle finger at before, he used one hand to create a hand sign, before he vanished completely in a burst of extremely enhanced speed via Shunshin, Ophis was left behind completely, and her eyes narrowed when she realized that she had been ditched by Naruto. She was going to make him remove Great Red from her home. With Naruto I am pissed I didn't do that months ago, Naruto commented with a grin on his face when he realized that all he had to do was run faster than Ophis to get away from her, not only was he now suppressing his chakra, but considering the fact that he was now miles and miles away from her, he had managed to put himself just outside of the village he had been traveling to, the village had a few people, surprisingly some humans, with the potential to be powerful fighters. Hinoko stared at Naruto, the idea only now occurred to him? She is going to come looking for you, Hinoko reminded him, and Naruto waved his hand, not caring about it too much. Ill just travel to the underworld or maybe ill go back to Mount Olifmus for a while, eventually Ophis will learn to either share, or will find a new home that will be silent, Naruto was back to a good mood now that he didn't constantly have somebody asking him. Remove him, not funny Hinoko, not funny, Naruto glared at his Anbu, who whistled innocently, having just imitated Ophis' voice. Remove him, damn it, Naruto commented when Ophis appeared out of a teleportation circle behind him, even suppressed, he had enough chakra that he was still pretty easy to sense when people wanted to look for him, he had to have some way of getting rid of her, without being violent about it, find me the perfect apprentice, and ill get rid of great red for you, Naruto gave her a seemingly impossible task. He was pretty sure there was no such thing as the perfect apprentice, and there was little chance that Ophis of all people would be able to find it. Her eyes narrowing showed that she was considering it. You promise, Ophis looked at him with narrowed eyes. Something seemed weird, if you find me the perfect apprentice, then ill talk red into leaving your home, Naruto doubted she could find the perfect apprentice, but if she managed to do it then he would keep his end of the deal. He was a man of his word, and would always be a man of his word. That was part of his nindo, Tu chan, shut up Karama. Naruto stated when a young girl's voice was heard, a very young child actually, Naruto felt a pressure land in his lap, completely interrupting his meditation, he had taken residence with some yukai in the developing nation of Japan, the nation that reminded him the most of the elemental nation's culture from his earth, Naruto had nine golden blonde tails, all super fluffy in nature, wrapping around his waist as the little girl in his lap snuggled up and made herself comfortable. He had somehow attracted a small child Yukai, a Kiyubi, and that child had somehow decided he was her father. They looked similar, she had his face, the shape of his eyes and her hair was the exact same color as his own hair, she had a fox-like appearance to her, and she even had his personality, the literally only difference between them was the fact that she was not human, her eyes were golden yellow, something he could make his eyes change to, and the fact she lacked his whisker marks. SNK, Yasaka-chan, I am not your father, Naruto reminded the child once more as she curled up into a tight fur ball, she stuck her face out of the ball and started to rub her cheek up against his chin. Tu chans face is itchy, Yasaka laughed as she continued to rub her cheek up against his unshaven face, he usually had to shave his face every day, it was part of a morning routine for him as a man, he had forgotten to shave though, so he had the slight showings of scruff on his chin, Yusaka was getting a kick out of rubbing her baby soft cheeks against his scratchy face though, so he was mostly fine with it. Reminds you of your children when they were but young babes, Kurama pointed out, since he could see the smile on Naruto's face. Despite what Naruto was saying, he wasn't annoyed by the child thinking of him as her father. Naruto sighed, and grinned down at Yusaka, she does look like me, I do miss having a child, though it's a pity that I didn't get to do the fun part of making a child to make her, oh well, adoption is nice too, Naruto thought as he picked up his little fluffball and tossed her up onto his shoulder, she plopped down squarely on him, before she unfurled with her tails going down his back. He hoped she didn't grow up too fast though, he would like to see her remain a child and enjoy moments like these. Tu Chan. What was Ka Chan like? Yusaka asked him, and he sighed. I don't know who your mother is, though she must have been pretty to make a little thing like you. Naruto's words instantly sparked giggled from the small child, Naruto reached up and ruffled her blonde hair, 
with the child smiling brightly at him in return. Naruto walked into the small village of Yukai, seeing a lot of young Yukai running about, most of them not having parents anymore thanks to some of the other supernatural species killing them, or humans hunting down monsters and slaying those that the shoe fit. Naruto could see why Yusaka thought of him as her father. In Japan, most people seem to have brown or black hair, with brown and hazel eyes, with tan skin, very few people had the same features as Yusaka, which made Naruto wonder if Yusaka's parents were killed, or if they abandoned her because of what she was. Yusaka shared a deep connection with her surroundings. She wasn't connected as if she were using Senjutsu, no, instead she was connected to this exact land itself, the area around them, going for several miles, seemed to be filled with energy that was just connected to her. I love you too Chan, Yusaka's innocent ability to love others was something Naruto smiled at. She believed him to be her father, so she loved him, her love didn't need any conditions, she thought them to be family, and that was all that there needed to be, she reminded him so much of himself when he was younger, loving anyone who would show him love and affection. She was a lot like himself, that he had to question if he slept with some Kyubi while he was drunk and made her years ago. You didn't, just because you get drunk, doesn't mean I do, you're not really the horny drunk, closer to the happy drunk, and then the pass out drunk, Kurama informed Naruto that to his own knowledge, Kurama might have been asleep when it happened, that he was not Yusaka's father. The resemblance between them was still amazing to Kurama though. The Yukai children liked Naruto for sure, since the moment he walked into the village he had children crowding around him. The numbers in the village were very small, only about 12 children and 8 adult Yukai were in this small gathering, Naruto smiled when children started to crowd around him, just wanting to talk with him, the adults smiled towards him, seeing as they owed their small numbers to him because their numbers would have been smaller if he didn't save them from the battle that had consumed their old home. Ill stay here long enough to make sure everyone here is strong enough to defend themselves, Naruto promised himself as he smiled at a child that was telling him a story about a fish, Yusaka started to fall asleep, changing shape into her small fox form as she wrapped herself around his neck like a scarf. Where do you come from Naruto-sama? Naruto smiled and he pointed up. I come from beyond these stars, but the stars where I am from. I see them here too, Naruto spoke with a smile up at the sky. The stars from his home looked exactly the same as the starry sky in this world. The difference was the fact their moon hadn't been sliced in half like his moon, nor was it previously the prison and home to an entire species of people, being the prison to a goddess entailed beast form. He could see that some of them didn't believe him, but most of the children were just odd that he came from outer space as they were coming to believe it. Naruto grinned, he was so going to put them through hell. Years later Yusaka, your flames need to be hotter, I want you to melt that wall with the heat, Naruto instrusted Yusaka as he pointed towards a large wall created from earth, the wall was enhanced by chakra, so Naruto would admit that his training was a little sadistic, he was making her create flames hot enough to absolutely burn through chakra and forced earth, that would mean that her flames would have to be even hotter than the flames of a dragon or a phoenix. Of course, if he really wanted to be a bastard, he would make her practice to the point her flames could compare to Sasuke's Amaterasu. He wasn't that much a training bastard though, how? I don't know how to make my flames hotter to Chan. Yusaka shouted out towards him. She had been working on the power of her flames for years now, but all he was telling her to do was make them hotter, and control them more, they worked on hand-to-hand -hand combat, and worked her tails into said combat, and they even worked on her combat experience where the other yukai in the village got basic training and some experience with fighting, only she was getting a harsher treatment than the rest. Go f whoosh with your body. Trust your body to help you realize your potential, Naruto informed her the usual way he taught. He usually taught by letting the students figure it out on their own. You're a sadist, her flames are already hotter than any other kitsune alive, Hinoko pointed out to Naruto as she watched him forcing her to try and take her flames to a point that no other kiyubi would be able to reach, her flames were already hot enough to turn a normal person to nothing in a second, he was being unreasonable to ask her to take them any further than that. She didn't know if it was possible for her to take it any further than that anyway, since this might be the limit of her species flames. She wants to call me her father, well then ill treat her more harshly than any student, I am going to push her beyond her limits, and really help her see how far she can go, Naruto muttered low enough that Yusaka wouldn't be able to hear them. Hinoko looked up towards Naruto with a raised eyebrow, she wasn't wearing her mask at the moment, before she looked towards Yusaka. Yusaka, whose hands and tails were starting to burn themselves from the heat of her own flames, and even with her own injuries she continued with her training. She followed Naruto's instructions, despite how vague they were. Hinoko noticed some female yukai watching Naruto standing in the sunlight with blushes on their faces. 
Of course, she knew that there were differences between the women of the worlds, ninja women were just like regular women when it came to romance, they wanted a nice guy, and more often than not they wanted a hot nice guy, with a great personality, supernatural women of this world were attracted to powerful men more often than not, not to mention Naruto's chakra was super warm and bright, like being embraced like the sun. You're that type of father, Hinoko noted, and Naruto nodded. Yes he was, Thump Yusaka passed out, she's been working on this all day. Well now, isn't this something, Naruto commented when he saw a young man coming from the crowd and approaching Yusaka, he leaned down in front of Yusaka and placed a hand on her shoulder, he was shaking her awake, he had love and affection in his eyes, and Hinoko looked up at Naruto with expectation, I didn't know she had a boyfriend, Naruto commented when Yusaka woke up, and smiled lovingly up at the man as he held her sit up. You're taking this well, Hinoko deadpanned, most fathers didn't take that little fact too well. Hum. Why would I get in the way of her happiness? I am just happy she isn't lusting after me like she did when she was a teenager, I've spent 80 years raising her into a fine woman, she's old enough to make her own choices, you think I didn't know about all of her lovers? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow at Hinoko. Hinoko blushed a little at that little subject being brought up. You never talked with her about that, Hinoko pointed out. She would have been furious if she learned her son had taken lover after lover to the point that the number had exceeded 20 different people. Yusaka was a kitsune in nature, so seducing men was part of her DNA to the point it would be more challenging for her to end up with only a single person. How many men and women have you slept with? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Hinoko blushed deeper. Okay, he had a fair point, she had been around the block more than anyone else alive, with her thousands and thousands of years of being alive she had taken countless lovers, she had long since lost her sense of decency when it came to who she slept with, she still had standards for who she would consider her lover, but one night stands were a different matter. I think, I few, thousand, I know I sleep with at least one or two people a year, Hinoko pointed out, before she sent a pointed look at Naruto, how many people have you slept with? Hinoko asked, because if she was being made to admit something so embarrassing, then it only made sense that Naruto would have to answer the same question. Naruto raised two fingers, she blinked in surprise. Wow, you've only been with two people since your wife died, Hinoko stated with awe at his control over his own lust. Naruto smiled, I haven't slept with anyone since Hanada died, Hanada was the last woman I've been with, but before I was with Hanada there was another girl that I slept with, you know, years before Hanada and I became a thing, the priestess of the land of demons, Naruto freely gave up the information, he had spent thousands of years with Hinoko so it wasn't like this information was something that she would change her opinion of him for. Hinoko whistled at that information, I thought you said you were going to try and fall in love again, Hinoko remembered the conversation they had hundreds of years previously. Naruto smiled, I have, and I am teaching her to control her flames, love comes in all forms Hinoko, I've raised her from a young child, and helped her grow into a fine young woman, Naruto's fatherly smile warmed up Hinoko's heart, she smiled gently as she looked at her Hokage respectfully. This was why he had been made the Hokage, his love for others knew no bounds, and he was so willing to give that love to others, he could consider anyone his family, and would go out of his way for them. Still, maybe you should consider taking a woman into your bed, you have thousands of years of urges bottled up, Hinoko gave her honest advice, she didn't even go six months without taking a new lover anymore, she had even slept with a few of the male yukai in the village, though to be fair she mostly had with the ones that were humanoid, she wasn't attracted to different species that didn't love like they could pass for humans. Naruto laughed, he wasn't against the idea, sounds nice. I might consider taking a few lovers myself someday, who knows, maybe it will inspire me to write the next book of my Arrow Arrow series, Naruto mentioned in passing, he hadn't yet released his book series in this world, but considering he had been writing his books for thousands of years, he had a lot of books to release, he was pretty sure that he had at least 100 books that he had finished writing for the series, he had gotten stuck on his current book though. Hinoko nodded her head, where are you going? Hinoko asked when she noticed Naruto starting to walk away with a calm smile. Tonight, I am going to let Yusaka know that her training is finished, now it's up to her to push herself further than this, it's time to go back to traveling the world, I still to find my apprentice, Naruto mentioned, and Hinoko placed her mask back over her face, now that they were going to be traveling the world again, it was time that she got back to seriously doing her job. Call me Soku, over the years, she had gotten used to her real name being used, but now that she was back to being his Anbu, she would prefer if he used her code name once more. Naruto smiled back at her, no, you're staying here, Yusaka isn't ready to lead this village on her own yet, she needs you more than I do now, Naruto told Hinoko. 
she saluted him with her fist in front of her heart. Later that night Naruto walked towards the exit of the village with a small smile on his face, he trusted Hinoko to give his goodbyes to everyone in the village, now that it was his time to go he would leave in the dead of night, he didn't want anyone begging him to stay, since he knew that he had become an important part of their society. 2 Chan Naruto's smile shifted when he heard Yusaka standing behind him, and he turned around to look at her. There she was, with her lover holding her hand, all of the yukai in the village were surrounding them, while Hinoko looked on with a smile on her face, the entire village having gathered to wish him farewell. I told her, Hinoko stated to Naruto, I am not going to stop you, I just have one thing I want to say to you, we all have something we wish to say to you, Yusaka spoke, before she got down on her knees and bowed to him, she placed her forehead to the ground gently, it wasn't just her though that did it, as she bowed sincerely to him, everyone behind her started to follow suit, soon the entire village was bowing to him, though Hinoko kept standing up. Naruto was actually surprised, thank you Oto-sama, Tu chan That hit Naruto right in the heart when the entire village thanked him the way they did. Naruto felt his heart skip a beat, and he turned around so that the village wouldn't see his eyes watering, Naruto didn't stop smiling though as he started to make his way out of the village, out of the village of his children, even the adults of the village had learned to consider him their father, and all of the children had grown up, some of them without long lifespans having become elderly, and yet even they still referred to him as their father. That was an arrow right into the heart of his soul. He waved back to them as he walked off, he couldn't let them see his tears. Years later I, have found you an apprentice, you, are a dumbass, Naruto mentioned when he looked at the apprentice that Ophis had found for him, Naruto looked down at the practical clone of Ophis that she had somehow created, he could sense that Ophis was weaker than before, and the clone standing in front of him had one tenth of Ophis power, the same amount that he was sensing was missing from her, the clone was a literal clone of Ophis, and it looked just like her in every way. Only she dressed a little more modestly, though he did notice Ophis was now wearing a black dress with the chest area cut out of it to reveal her now slightly bigger breasts, though to call them anything other than extremely small would be a lie. Lilith, willing to learn. Lilith's only physical difference from Ophis was the fact she wore her hair in a ponytail, and her eyes were brown instead of grey, though, like Ophis nearly the entirety of her chest was also showing, with some ribbons in front of it. I, asked around, a man named Rizavim suggested I create her, you are powerful, and need a powerful apprentice, Ophis stated as she pointed at Lilith. I don't know who Rizavim is, Naruto deadpanned, so including that Mon's name didn't really matter. All that mattered was that Ophis split part of herself off and created a new life for the sole purpose of giving him an apprentice, anyway, how old is this, Lilith, how old are you? Naruto asked the person in question. She held up three fingers, Lilith, three hours old, Lilith gave the near exact amount of time that she had been alive, Naruto rubbed the side of his head for a moment, before he sighed to himself. I, have created a group, if Lilith is not to your liking, then they will serve as your students, Ophis mentioned in passing. She founded an entire group of people that would serve the purpose of finding an apprentice for Naruto among them, she didn't care what the group did, so long as they were able to fulfill her goal of giving Naruto what he wanted, so he would give her what she wanted. Naruto sighed in annoyance, Lilith looked up towards Naruto. Naruto placed his hand on top of her head, she was taking female form so he would be referring to her as a female until she took a different form. Lilith, do anything, without question, Lilith spoke in an even more broken speech than Ophis herself spoke in. While Ophis had some speech quirks, Lilith took them to the next level. Naruto groaned in annoyance, fine damn it, just open a portal large enough for the red idiot to fit through, it'll do the rest, Naruto mentioned with an annoyed look at Ophis. He would try Lilith out as an apprentice for a while. Ophis actually smiled a little, before the smile was a gone an instant later. She nodded her head, raised her hand, and opened up a gate into the dimensional gap. Naruto walked through it with Ophis and Lilith both following behind him, Naruto, who had never actually been inside of the gap before, raised an eyebrow when he noticed that the entire place was just a colorful void, he saw massive amounts of colors just floating around in the void, and he raised an eyebrow when he noticed that just like when he was in space, he was able to breath and exist with ease in this void. Remove him, Ophis pointed up towards great red flying through the void. Naruto sighed, placed his fingers in his mouth, he whistled. Hey red idiot, down here dumbass, Naruto shouted out towards Great Red. His loud voice reaching the ears of the Great Dragon. Great Red actually stopped flying at the familiar voice, and turned his long neck to gaze at the source, he saw Naruto with Ophis, and some unknown girl who looked like Ophis, and his eyes narrowed for a second, yeah, it's me, and I suggest you take a hike, why don't you go to a different realm to do your flying, 
because if you don't we're going to have a problem. Naruto loudly suggested smartly to Great Red, and the giant dragon landed right in front of them. He looked down at Naruto and puffed out his chest. He didn't just look down at Naruto, he glared with the memory of the last time they fought in his mind, the humiliating defeat that he had experienced at the hands of a human, a mere human, were something that had left a large scar on his pride, a scar that he didn't want to live with for a moment longer. Yeah, and why should I? Great Red spoke up against Naruto. Because I am bigger than you, because I am stronger than you, and because if you don't go willingly I am going to punt your scaly ass out of here, Naruto calmly stated as he locked eyes with the giant beast. They stared at each other, Ophus looked at the exchange with a raised eyebrow, curious at how this kind of approach was going to work, she saw Naruto calmly facing the giant dragon as if he had seen bigger and stronger creatures before, it was like the Great Red wasn't even a blip on his radar, and she could see why moments later when Great Red turned away and started to fly through the portal Ophis had created. Screw off Uzumaki, it'll be back, I was feeling like taking a trip anyway, Great Red spoke as he left the dimensional gap. Ophis clapped her hands together in applause, I am thankful, Ophis looked at Naruto, before she shrank the portal down and pointed back at it, remove yourselves, Ophis told Naruto and Lilith, who she didn't care to look at now that she had served her purpose, Ophis would naturally recover her lost power over time, so she didn't care what the that Lilith did now that she got what she wanted. Naruto shrugged, fine, but next time the red idiot comes calling, don't come to me, I've kept my end of the deal, the red idiot said he's going to come back, so he's going to come back, Naruto mentioned in passing as he walked with Lilith through the portal, Lilith looked at Ophis, and she raised her hand. Goodbye, Lilith's other half, she was ignored as Ophis sat down and closed her eyes, waiting for Lilith to vanish so that she could enjoy the silence of her infinity without them, Lilith nodded and walked after Naruto, the portal close behind her as she joined him, she looked at Naruto as he started to walk, and she walked after him. Before we start your training, let's go find some food, dealing with Ophis always leaves me annoyed and hungry, Naruto spoke casually about one of the strongest dragons to ever exist, Lilith nodded her head as her stomach growled at him in response to the idea of food. She had never eaten anything before, Lilith, wants sweets, Lilith mentioned something she wanted from him, and he raised an eyebrow at that. How did she even know what sweets were? You like sweets? Naruto asked her, and she shook her head. Lilith, doesn't know, what sweets are, Lilith, just wants, sweets, Lilith spoke in such a way that left Naruto confused. Oh, maybe Ophis loved sweets, and despite Lilith not knowing what sweets were, she had the instinct from Ophis to want to eat them, it made sense, he loved ramen and craved it since he was a child, despite not knowing the reason was because both of his parents were ramen eaters. We're having ramen, an apprentice doesn't get to complain when the master treats them to a meal, impress me with your training if you want to pick what we eat, Naruto completely denied what she wanted he would treat her to the same type of apprenticeship that he was treated to under his master. Lilith looked at Naruto, before she nodded, Lilith, understands, master, Lilith was created for the purpose of doing everything that he told her to do. If she wanted sweets, she would just have to impress him? How hard could that be? Later it was hard, Lilith learned that impressing her master was harder than she originally gave it credit for. He had literally strapped beads to her arms that increased the weight of the beads according to how strong she was, he literally had her doing push-ups with a boulder on her back, while he sat on top of the boulder and wrote a book, every single day, he made her take a boulder from the top of a huge mountain, carry it to the bottom of the mountain where a hot springs was located, before she had to carry the boulder back up to the top of the mountain. She saw Naruto eating a squishy white thing, with it stretching as he bit into it, and her stomach growled. She wanted that, she was currently learning how to fight bare-handed from him, her goal was to simply take the mochi from him, he was defending against her assault with one hand, while taking a bite with the other hand, she had until he completely finished eating to take it from him, or impress him enough that he would give it to her. Lilith had learned appreciation, the few times Naruto allowed her to eat sweets, she learned that it was best to enjoy it and eat as many of them as possible, because she did not know when the next time she would eat them would be, it had already been several months since the last time that she had gotten to eat anything sweet. Lilith, will eat sweets, Lilith reached for the mochi, and Naruto smacked her on top of the head, before he spun her around on her feet, Naruto leaned down and created a tiger seal with a single hand. Konohargakure's most secret and sacred technique, 1000 years of death, Naruto shoved his fingers forward right up Lilith's dress, right between the cheeks of her butt, until he scored right on target in stabbing her in her unused anus, as a technical dragon god, Naruto had never seen her use the bathroom, Lilith blinked and turned around to look at Naruto with her head, 
Naruto used his physical strength to launch her across the training field, before she rolled across the ground. Lilith blinked and put her hand up her own dress, rubbing her butt with a tilted head. You, poked Lilith's butt, Lilith deadpanned at the technique he used. Was that even a technique? I also finished eating your mochi, guess you're going to have to try again tomorrow, that means you need to go catch some fish for dinner tonight. Naruto waved a hand as he started to walk towards where they were camping, he left finding food up to her, since she enjoyed eating so much. She also enjoyed eating so much, as in, she ate a ton. Now, Lilith finds food, Lilith walked in a different direction to go and find something that she would maybe like to eat. Then find a lot of it, oh and Lilith, Naruto paused, and made her pause as she looked towards him, don't forget to go and get firewood, it's the job of the apprentice to take care of that stuff. Naruto pushed more physical labor onto her with a thumbs up, Lilith nodded to him, since she was getting used to being forced to do this stuff. That night Naruto wrote down in his book as he watched Lilith watching the fish cooking, she had managed to find and catch a very large fish, a fish larger than both of them combined, she had even managed to find a good type of wood that would make the fish gain a very nice smoky taste to it. Naruto tossed a mochi to her from his pocket, and she didn't notice it until it hit the side of her head. The fish won't be ready for a few hours, eat that to hold yourself off, your hand to hand needs work, but you improved a little, greedy dragon, Naruto told her as he went back to writing in his book. She pushed the entire thing into her small mouth, before she swallowed it whole and nodded her head. She wanted more, Lilith, wants to learn, to read, Lilith spoke as she looked at what Naruto was doing, she wanted him to teach her how to read, since he was always writing in his book, Naruto glanced up at her, before he nodded his head. What language? Naruto asked her, he had been around for nearly all of human history, and thanks to that he had learned all of the languages that had evolved over the many years, he could teach her how to speak and read in any known language if he so wanted to. Lilith, wants to learn, to read, all, Lilith mentioned, and Naruto nodded his head more slowly. Okay, so she wanted him to teach her to read all languages, that would be more of a challenge, but that just meant they would spend more time teaching her to read, the best way to do that would be to travel the world and spend time in all of the places with different languages, so that she could experience each language firsthand. Fine greedy dragon, tomorrow we set out to teach you to read, Naruto spoke, tone laid back, and a wave of his hand. Naruto smiled when he saw Lilith smile a little, she was showing promise as an apprentice, and this was the first time that she was pressing for something that wasn't food, so she was growing a little as a person, he would expose her to more of the world, and let her make opinions on everything around her more, it would be a long time before she started to truly think for herself, but she was getting there. He wondered how much she would grow in the future. No Lilith, this is pronounced ee, -E. Lilith, sees a Y, Lilith pointed out as she sat next to Naruto, she was a couple of days into learning a new language, she had just learned to read in Chinese, and now she was learning to read in the language of the people with the paler skin like herself, the lessons were far harder than the Chinese language though, and northwest everything was pronounced like it was supposed to be. Naruto was patient with her, and put her training on the back burner until she learned all of the languages she wanted to learn. When at the end of a word, Y makes the E sound, though there are some exceptions to this. Like the word Y and cry, a good rule of thumb is if the word has more than four letters, and ends with Y then pronounce it as E. Naruto explained to his student as he traced his finger across the pages, he had his other arm over her shoulder as she looked down at the words in confusion, she was having some trouble learning the language, but she was more willing to learn than some people he knew had been when learning to read. Like himself for example, then again, he taught himself how to read seeing as he never had anyone to teach him how to read, he had been reluctant, until he learned how valuable it could be when learning ninjutsu. Naruto looked up with a raised eyebrow moments later. A mug of mead was placed in front of him, Master, what is this? Lilith asked as she looked at the large mug of the golden fluid, that gave off the scent of honey, she tilted her head in confusion when she sniffed the drink, her tiny hands reached out for it, but Naruto placed his hand on top of the mug to stop her, he glanced up at the bar maiden who had placed it carefully in front of him, Lilith wants it, Lilith stated to him. Naruto looked at the bar maiden, his eyebrow just raising. The woman blushed a little, and lifted the sides of her long dress as she bowed to him. Sir scholar, you must be weary from your travels, I made this mead myself, my own special recipe, she spoke respectfully, and Naruto blinked. Which country was this again? Thank you, teaching my student can be tiring, Lilith, keep reading, I want you to read this entire book before the end of the week, Naruto told his student, if she wanted to learn to read, then he would make sure that she was going to learn, no better way than to learn by doing it, he had already taught her sentence structure and the alphabet, now all she needed was experience reading and she would have it down. 
Lilith, understands, Naruto raised the mug up and looked at the maiden. The woman dressed in perhaps one of the most conversative dresses he had ever seen, not an inch of her skin could be seen other than her neck and her hands, not counting her head of course, he put the wooden mug up against his lips, and tried the alcoholic beverage, unlike back on his world, which had beer, this world hadn't evolved to the point that beer was a thing, mead was better tasting though, if sometimes a little on the weak side. It's rather delicious, I taste apple, Naruto mentioned, and the woman nodded, thank you, Naruto thanked her for the mead. Her eyes widened for a moment in surprise, okay. Naruto was in one of those countries it would seem. It was one of those countries, actually most countries were like that, he would be surprised if this woman knew how to read or write, he always made sure to teach his female and male students to read at some point, so he never really considered the fact that not many women actually had the chance to learn such a skill, not to mention women were looked at as inferior to men, mostly used for bringing up children and taking care of the household. Lilith, would like mead, Lilith stated, and Naruto looked down at her. Naruto took a copper piece out of his pocket, and placed it on the counter, the maiden nodded her head and uncorked a barrel, pouring another mug of mead, she only filled it a fourth of the way full though, and she put it in front of Lilith, she lifted it up, and she drank a little of it, before she placed it back down. Don't like it? Naruto asked her with a small smile. Bitter, get back to your reading then, Naruto stated as he grabbed her mug and downed it himself, he might not have the highest tolerance for the stuff but since what he usually used to get himself drunk was more alcoholic than what he was drinking, he should be fine if he drunk with moderation, scholar. Naruto questioned under his breath as he opened the current book that he was working on. He was a little stuck at the scene of the book, since he didn't want to just reuse one from one of his older books, he had to think of a new one. Master. Lilith the word is pronounced as vaginal, Naruto stopped her when he glanced at where her finger was on the page, Naruto got back to his own writing. Sadly using a feather to write now since his last ink pen had fun out of ink, he could make more ink, but he couldn't put it into the pen without an issue, the rule that the I would be pronounced as I doesn't apply here, Naruto explained further when he noticed she didn't go back to reading right away. Naruto nodded his head when she did get back to her schooling. He guessed he was kind of a scholar now, since his knowledge was so far advanced to what this world currently had, even his science and mathematics were far ahead of what the world was currently knowledgeable of. Well shit he was smarter than pretty much everyone on the planet. He felt good about that, another mug of mead was placed in front of him, and he did have to raise an eyebrow at it that time, since he didn't order a second one. The fair lady over there ordered one for you, the bar maiden pointed across the tavern towards a woman that Naruto would consider extremely attractive. No seriously, this woman was far more attractive than any of the women around her. She stood taller than most of them by a few inches, and she had shoulder-length brown hair that curled outwards near the ends, she had pale skin that was flawless, unlike many of the women around her whose skin had a flaw or another, her waist was slim, and she had an athletic build, with wide childbirthing hips, a bubble butt, and very, very large breasts that he hadn't seen in a long time when it came to size. Naruto had always gotten used to a world of women that used makeup to help themselves look better, shaved their legs and pits, and they trained their bodies to be slim and athletic, the women of this world valued a little more meat on their bones, didn't have makeup, and there were no ways for women to shave their bodies. Suffice to say, it was different than what he was used to, he did notice that some women were different, sacred gear using women seemed more naturally beautiful, and Yukai women had the ideal image that he was used to. She's pretty, thank you, Naruto raised his mug to the woman, showing his appreciation for what she did. She was a natural beauty, she got up and started to walk towards him, Naruto had to admit that he was attracted to the woman, something that he hadn't really felt for a while either, his standards were higher than the men of this world, because he had grown up with a different kind of woman being his ideal, since coming to this world, he rarely ever met a woman that met his ideal woman, with the women that did either becoming his children, or his students. Lilith. Doesn't the word is penetrate, not penetrate. The E makes the A make the A sound, Naruto explained with barely a glance at Lilith, at this point, he knew the places where she was going to make the common mistakes, he did help teach two children how to read and write during his time as a father, and again with Yusaka when she was growing up, and multiple Yukai children from the village, hello, Naruto greeted the woman as she sat down next to him at the counter. Greetings. Thou art a strange sir with a unique aura, the beautiful woman spoke to Naruto, and he nodded his head, mine own nameth is Venelana Bael, thee can addresseth me as Venelana, Venelana introduced herself, and she offered her hand to Naruto, he took her hand and brought it to his lips, gently kissing her skin. It was a strange custom, but he was starting to remember the customs of this country, a man kissing the hand of the woman was a polite greeting. 
Naruto Uzumaki, the pleasure is mine, thanks for the mead, Naruto raised the mug again. Tease nay a problem, I did notice thy inhorn man is female, and did want to see th what kind of sir the wre, Venelana spoke as she politely sat straight up, speaking respectfully to him, she didn't seem to mind the way he was talking to her, since to her the way he was talking was no doubt strange, something he was surprised that she had yet to bring up, thy wrds art strange, doth thee cometh from far hence, Venelana asked him, since she had never heard a man speak the same way that she had. Right. Naruto usually only talked with people who spoke with a more modern way of talking, while this woman seemed to speak with a much more, ancient way of speaking. Yes, I've come from a faraway place, also, my student is female, I think everyone has the right to learn to read if they want, Naruto pat Lilith on top of the head. Venelana looked at his book with a small smile, I can't readeth myself, but I wouldst beest able to giveeth the gold father lessons, Venelana spoke as she looked at his written words with confusion on her face, Naruto raised an eyebrow as he played back the words she said in his head. I can't read myself, but I would be able to give you gold for lessons. Oh, sorry, but I won't be staying in town long, I travel with my student. I'll only be here for seven days at most before we leave, if you want to learn, I would still be happy to help you with the basics, Naruto explained to her, and Lilith glanced up at him, she pointed at a word, and Naruto looked at it for a moment, nation, the ion isn't pronounced in, despite two vowels being next to each other. Naruto instructed her, and Venelana looked impressed with his explanations of the written word. I wouldst beest joyous to learneth from thee. Venelana loosened the strap on her purse, and she took seven coins made of gold and showed them to Naruto. Shall this cover mine own fees? Venelana asked him as she placed the gold coins in his hand. Naruto laughed a little awkwardly at her trying to pay him, so he gently placed her gold back into her purse and tightened the string. You don't need to pay me, I would be happy to teach you. Naruto spoke up against her payment, and she smiled. A stout and true sir thou art, ift be true mine own wage shall not suffice, I shall payeth thee with mine own course, Venelana spoke with a hand going to her heart. Naruto's eyes widened, oh, you don't need to go that far, I am really flattered, but you Naruto stopped when Venelana placed a finger against his lips. I admitteth yond I wisheth to taketh thee to my own sleep chamber. I findeth thy backeth Velenala traced her hand up his arm and to his back, she smiled at him seductively, before she whispered the compliment, large, this looks, her hand traved to his jawline, his now freshly shaven face, pleasant, and thus aura to beest, her hand lifted off of his body, and went to her own body as she traced her hand up her knee and touched her lower gut, right above her mouth, arousing, Venelana spoke the last word with a wisp to her voice. It was like everything about her was created for the sake of seduction, she fit everything that he found attractive. A several thousand year dry spell with no did not help him, since he had gone several thousand years without finding a woman that he actually wanted to sleep with. Hinoko had it easy, since the evolution of men's looks were mostly the same from ancient times to modern days, she could still find the men of the past mostly attractive, it was harder for Naruto, because the ideal woman was so vastly different than the ancient woman. Well, when you put it like that, Lilith, keep studying, I am going to take Venelana here, and teach her how to, read, read is the word I am looking for, Naruto paused when he nearly said something completely different. This was the first time he had the chance to sleep with a woman he wanted to sleep with. Not to mention she smelled nice. It had taken a long time before soap had been invented again, and damn was he appreciation the clean smell that she had, he didn't want to sleep with somebody that smelled like Bo, it was a trait he had gotten from his many years as a husband, he valued a clean woman, because his wife had always been a clean woman. Thee gaveth up a pace, is this thy first Timoth? I admitteth. T is mine own first Timoth. Venelana admitted to her own status as a virgin. The way he was jumping at the chance to have with her was charming, and reminded her of a virgin. Naruto scoffed, I am no virgin, Naruto told her, and she blushed, smiling as she did. Naruto placed a silver coin on the counter, I'll take one of your rooms for, the next few days, Naruto mentioned to the bar maiden, and she nodded her head, Naruto grabbed Venelana's hand and guided her to follow him as he went towards the inn part of the tavern. Venelana allowed herself to be walked, while Lilith just ignored what was happening and looked back down at her book. Naruto walked down the hallway, before he found a room that looked nice, and opened it up, he walked into the room and saw a straw bed, walking Venelana to it as he gently sat her down. I enjoyeth how eagr thou art, Venelana stated, and Naruto unzipped his jacket, tossing it to the side as he pulled his shirt over his head. Just because he hadn't had in thousands of years, did not mean he had been saving himself or anything. He had just not found a woman he really wanted to have with. He was a picky eater, 
I hope you have stamina, because I've been holding myself back for a couple of years now. Naruto understated the number of years, but overall he was telling the truth. Naruto felt a hand touch his waistband, as Venelana moved her hand towards his zipper. Allo with me. How to us this WRK Venelana quickly realized she didn't know how she was supposed to undo the zipper, never mind. Venelana figured it out when she unzipped his pants and pulled them down. Naruto stepped out of them and tossed them across the room into the pile of quickly growing clothing. With a hand on her shoulder, he pushed her down onto her back, before he grabbed the bottom of her dress. She wore no panties or bra, right, they aren't a thing yet, Naruto whispered to himself, remembering that panties and bras weren't a thing, he appreciated the view that he was looking at though, her breasts were large, and perfect teardrops in shape, the sheer size of them were rather amazing, and combined with her surprisingly bare crotch, he was already hardening simply by looking at her fine body. I desire thee finish not early, Venelana spoke with a seductive smirk on her face as he dress was thrown off of her. Naruto smirked at her confidently, don't worry about me finishing early, I can go a good number of rounds, I am just worried you won't be able to keep up, Naruto told her as he got on the straw bed with her, he placed his knee up against her mound. He was about to show her things this world hadn't even invented yet. He leaned down and captured her lips in a passionate kiss, she readily returned the kiss, though she wasn't able to match his passion, not because she wasn't into it, but he had so much passion that she just was not able to even dream of matching that, she was almost overwhelmed by just the touch of his lips on her own, Naruto allowed his hands to run across her neck. She moaned when his fingertips touched her softly there. Naruto grinned, stopped kissing her and moved his lips down to suck on her neck gently. She moaned louder, her chest rising as her back curved, he could feel her grow moist against his knee while he played with her neck, she had a sensative neck it would seem, and Naruto opened his mouth and scraped his long canines up against her bare flesh, she squirmed underneath him, shivering at the pleasure he was able to give her just by playing with her neck, and rubbing his knee against her pure lands below. She came with minutes with a loud moan, I admitteth, thou art artful with a mistress course, Venelana told him through heavy pants, and Naruto gave her a confident look. He wasn't done yet, Venelana, you have really nice lips, I think it's your turn now, Naruto told her, his erection literally threatening to burst out of his boxers. Venelana got his message as he pushed his boner up against her leg, she crawled out from under him, and got on the floor, standing on her knees while Naruto sat at the edge of the bed, she moved over to between his legs, and pulled his boxers all the way down, her eyes widened for a brief moment as her cheeks were stained red. She really was a virgin it would seem, wow, it had to be at least seven inches, and it was thick enough that her hand barely wrapped around it, sure, it was the first mon's penis she had seen outside of her family, but she had never seen any of those other penises hard. It's been a while for me, so my first might come a little quickly, Naruto warned her, since it had been a long time since he had felt pleasure downstairs, he had nearly always been traveling with people with super hearing, so out of respect for them he never took care of his own urges, Venelana nodded her head and leaned forward, pushing her hair out of her face as lips made contact with his lower head. She opened her mouth and licked the head thrice, before she started to lower her mouth onto him and sucked a little. Venelana lowered her head until four inches of it was in her mouth, and it touched the back of her throat, she grabbed his hips with both of her hands, closed her eyes, and pushed forward even more as she started to take inches into her throat, she continued with tears threatening to spill from her eyes as she took three inches into her throat, and kept the other four inches in her mouth. She opened her eyes and looked up at him, she pulled off of his cock moments later, she started to suck on the head only and bob on the first three inches, she used one of her hands to rub the four remaining inches, while the other pressed against his testicles. She accepted a rather large load in her mouth moments later, and she continued to jerk him off into her mouth, she swallowed his load when he finished, and she saw his cock go soft, and she almost giggled. It was cute when it was soft, he was small when he was soft. I am not done yet, don't worry, Naruto said with a smirk, and seconds later his was just as hard as before, Naruto focused chakra through his entire body, revitalizing himself, and restoring his stamina, his natural Uzumaki recovery speeds only enhanced as he used his chakra to supplement the vitality of his penis, now get on, Naruto told her as he pat his lap, surprisingly her. She nodded her head and stood up, spreading the lips of her vagina as she prepared to take him inside of her. Inan onto the main nonce, Venelana spoke as she lowered an inch into herself, moaning when for the first time in her life she accepted something into herself, Naruto grabbed her butt with both hands, preventing her from going further as he lifted her back up off of his, sir? Venelana asked with a curious glance down at Naruto, and he lowered her in front of his so that she was sitting on his knees. Your first time is going to hurt, if you're tensed up it will hurt worse, so, tell me. 
Why did you want to do this? Naruto asked her, and she smiled seductively once more, she lifted her hips up and placed them above his cock. Her words let Naruto know that she wasn't human, or at least completely human. Thou art a powerful sir, the most powerful I has met, redding was just in colors to hast thee, Venelana spoke, and she slammed her hips down completely, her completely broke through her virgin barrier, and she yelped in pain when she was once more face to face with him, Movith, Venelana tried to sound commanding, but her voice was weak. She was pushing her large bosom up against his chest as she put both hands against his cheeks, and she kissed him. Naruto wrapped his arms around her waist, but he didn't thrust, instead, he started to grind inside of her, he pulled her hips closer to his own, before pushing her away, Naruto felt her tongue ask for entrance to his mouth, and he denied her the chance to French kiss. He knew something better for her, back, Naruto pushed her back, and her face was pointed towards the wall in front of Naruto, the only thing supporting her was now his arm under her back, Naruto grabbed the underside of her right breast, before he started to suck on her neck, Naruto allowed his hand to freely squeeze, grope, and overwise play with her breast. Ooh, Naruto continued his attack, never once stopping in his assault against every spot of her body that he found her sensative, her neck, the undersides of her breasts, her nipples, even her lower back was sensative to pleasure, not to mention he continued to grind his penis inside of her, stretching the walls of her once virgin tight vagina, when she came, she came literally minutes into the, and she came with a violence befitting a person experiencing their first heavy orgasm. Like throwing a shuriken, was something you never forgot how to do. Hope you aren't done, because we have a lot more to do, I might have to extend my time in this village just to make sure I can actually teach you something, Naruto mentioned in passing to Venelana, whose eyes crossed for a moment, and when she blinked they were back to normal, she looked up at Naruto with a dumb smile on her face for only a split second, before she was able to put into words what she wanted to say to him. How long if can thee lasteth? Venelana asked panting the entire time as Naruto paused in his movements. Time to her brain, once upon a time, I fought in a war for three and a half days straight, with no food, rest, or water to keep me going, basically, Naruto paused as he leaned forward to nibble on her ear, I have enough stamina to break you, Naruto whispered into her ear seductively. Years of practicing the harem jutsu and the reverse harem jutsu had given him the ability to be one of the most seductive men alive. His low growl set Venelana off into a shivering mess. When Naruto pulled out, and then thrust back in, Venelana was jolted back into the land of pleasure, Naruto put more pressure into fondling her breasts, and he even stood up straight, she had to wrap her shaky legs around him to hold on, he turned around, before he pushed her back into the bed, he grabbed both of her arms, made her feel powerless to the control of his thrusting, as he started to genuinely give her the attention that she didn't know she was going to be getting. The cannot beest human, Venelana accepted the vicious pounding with moans and shouts, Sir Naruto. Venelana screamed his name when she came for a third time in the few minutes they were having, he didn't stop his ruthless pounding though, and with her arms forced up above her head, her breasts bounced and swayed in time with his thrusts, each giggle caused by the force of his pelvis. You really have thousands of years of pent up UAL desire in here. Karama, not now, I am smashing the first super attractive woman I've seen since I've gotten here, all of the others either had body odor issues, were hairy in the wrong places, or were a little on the heavy side. Naruto thought furiously at Kurama, who nodded his head in sympathy for Naruto's plight, he was inside of Naruto all of the time, and understood that the uncivilized women could be a turn off for a more modern man. I am attaining mine own climax. Venelana called out a few more minutes into the UAL intercourse. Naruto grunted when her womanhood tightened up and started to quiver, he grit his teeth, before he pulled out and sprayed his load up her stomach and between her breasts, he even got a little on her face. Naruto let his chakra surge and energize his body once more, his cock standing at attention as he repositioned at her entrance again, while Venelana was panting, she gasped in pleasure, seeing white in her eyes, as she had her trembling vag filled to the brim once more. Venelana was sent spiraling into the madness of pleasure once more. It literally took two seconds, before Venelana came again, she came for the fourth time of their encounter as Naruto gave her a right and proper ing, she howled out his name as loudly as she could, because it was the only thing she could think of correctly, Naruto didn't stop though as she collapsed back down onto the bed, he lifted her leg up and placed it on his shoulder, repositioning themselves so that he could go into a better one for both of their pleasure. I was just going to tell you that don't, distract, damn it, Naruto came inside of Venelana without meaning to when Kurama distracted him, Naruto pushed Chakra into his pelvis, and like magic the life was brought back to his cock, he hardened inside of her, and she howled out in orgasm when she felt the pure life that that inside of her, 
It was like a delicious amount of life force was being used inside of her, and she was tasting it. She isn't human, but you might have guessed that, have your fun, she might not be a very fertile species hopefully, Kurama spoke his piece, before he went into silence. Naruto nodded his head, damage already done, he came inside of her, now that that happened, he might as well enjoy himself and keep the loads coming inside of her, Venelana didn't get much a chance to speak, partially because her mind was in nothing but pleasure, and partially because she was panting too hard to actually breath, her breasts, face, and mound were all covered in a blush as she was pushed in something that should come naturally to her. Sir, nah, wah? Venelana questioned when she was flipped over so that she was laying on her stomach, and Naruto pulled out, his pelvic resting against her butt, before he pushed back into her cunt. From the new position, he went even deeper inside of her than before, hitting places he hadn't been hitting the last few positions. Like? Naruto asked as he reached around her and played with her clit gently, while also rotating his pelvis, she had her G-spot constantly under stimulation with every movement of his member, because the new position they were in was solely focused on female pleasure over male pleasure, we're going to have a lot of fun, Naruto told her, before he used his free hand to spank her firmly on the ass. Oh. He triggered another orgasm from the woman, her juices already leaving visible spots on the part of the bed they were on, Venelana was working up a sweat as she tried to move with Naruto a little, but was mostly unable to, Naruto shivered for a moment as he erupted inside of her again, and he just continued to go on exploring her body with his hands. If there were two of me, would you be opposed to it? Naruto asked her with a hopeful look in his eyes. Hanada never wanted to do this one, she always considered it something too dirty and orgy-like for her. How many of thou art three? Venelana asked when Naruto slowed down enough for her to catch her breath, he didn't stop thrusting, but he slowed his thrusts to a crawl to give her the chance to breath and recover a little. Promise not to freak out, Naruto told her as he raised his hand up, and crossed his middle and index finger. Fr mine own sake, I shall not promiseth, Venelana told him, her voice growing more ragged. Poof she blinked a few times when she saw five Naruto's were standing there, while the original was pounding her slowly, the other four were waving and smiling at her, she dumbly waved at them, not sure what she had just seen. What? Venelana questioned as she pointed to the four clones of Naruto. She wasn't going to question it, just letting you know, even though you didn't ask, I am human. I am just a special human, now, you okay with this? Naruto asked her as he gestured towards his clones, Venelana looked at all of the clones, and then at Naruto himself the original. Thou art of re sinful sir, but I might not but becometh honest, I enjoyeth thy idea. Venelana spoke with her best attempt at a lustful smile, but with the state of her body it didn't go off as well as she had hoped. Naruto smiled and pulled her up so that she was sitting on his lap, with his penis still inside of her, he sat with his legs touching the floor, while the clones gathered around her. Naruto grinned when he saw she was open to the idea. Then again, she might just be open to the idea because of how much he had been pleasuring her so far, and she wasn't thinking very clearly. Yo guys, go to town, but don't get any on me, Naruto ordered his clones, and they saluted to him as they took their positions. Venelana put her hands on two of them, and started to stroke two clones off with her hands at either side of her, with her front open, a clone came and placed his between her large breasts and grabbed both with his hands, he started to bounce her breasts on top of his, while she stroked the other two. Ah! Venelana opened her mouth, and the final clone took his place as she tilted her head forward to take him into her moist cavern. Whoa! This is the second time that I've seen cleavage able to do that, Naruto spoke, impressed by the simple fact that her cleavage covered the vast majority of his, the only breasts that had ever managed to cover his entire had been Hanada's, but the fact that she could nearly do it was impressive. She had two clones holding the top of her head, running their fingers through her hair, another clone fondling and ing her breasts, and the fourth one she was bobbing her head on, all while the originally was bouncing her on top of his cock. It was so naughty, she came moments later, and the clone in her mouth joined her, while swallowing that load, the one in her left hand gave her a coating on the left side of her face, she moaned as she came personally, but the fact she was constantly being cum on herself only added to how naughty about what was happening to her really was, she was filled to the brim with cum moments later when Naruto came inside of her for the third time. Hours later ooh, Venelana couldn't think straight as she was passed around between the clones and original, each of them of them taking a turn with a different part of her body, two of the clones had popped when she was no longer capable of properly stroking them, thankfully, all of the cum that those clones had poured on her also went up in smoke with them, of course, that still left her body with a generous coating of the thick, white liquid. Was she currently sucking off the original, or a clone? Which way was up? Did she even care? 
she had came so many times that she had forgotten the reason why she even planned on seducing him in the first place, was it the extremely powerful aura of power he had, or was it because she genuinely wanted to learn to read? Thankfully, she had a constant supply of protein and liquids to keep her from dehydrating, or she would be in critical condition at the moment. Man. I am so glad Kakashi Sensei taught me how to focus chakra to parts of my body, man. This woman is so much more willing to try things than Hanada was. May she rest in peace, Naruto clone stated as he gave Venelana's ass a firm spanking. He high fived the original Naruto, who was balls deep into Venelana's throat, pulling out for long enough to let her breath, only to go back into her and resume pace. Enjoy it now, who knows when the next clean, odorless, athletic woman will show up, if that look ever catches on, Naruto stated since that was part of the reason he was pushing it so far. Who knows when the next time he could have would be, or rather the next time he wanted to have with a woman would be. Several thousands years without a good, and he wanted to enjoy it while he could. Shadow clones would pass their experience back to him, so instead of ing a woman one time, he was getting four different sets of memories of ing a woman, basically, it was like he was having with this woman five different times in total. I just came, is her butt lubed up enough? Naruto clone asked the non-ing clone as he worked with her anus. He nodded, Venelana, you cool with a little butt? Naruto asked Venelana as he pulled out of her mouth, and she looked up at him. She didn't know what he just said, but it would more than likely mean she was going to be experiencing more pleasure. I am going for it, Naruto clone stated as he pulled out of her vagina, got hard once again, before he eased himself into her back door, Naruto and his clone stood up together and Naruto pushed himself back into her pussy while his clone eased into her ass, the third active clone didn't know what to do with himself, so he shrugged his popped, his memories going to Naruto and the last remaining clone. Venelana barely noticed the numbers reducing by one as she came again, and her head fell back, resting against Naruto's shoulder as he got completely inside of her butt. She could feel them both inside of her, making her tighter than before, a thin wall separating the two cocks from both being together. She liked it, she liked this, later Venelana groaned as she opened her eyes for the first time in. Venelana didn't know how long, but all she knew was that her entire body was feeling the best soreness that she had ever felt in her life, her vagina was completely aching, just the slight breeze in the room was enough to nearly cause her to orgasm, the fact that she could feel the fact she was leaking his sperm onto the bed let her know that she was still pretty much filled with his cum, she didn't have an appetite, so she could guess what her stomach was filled with as well. Her entire body felt amazing, was she glowing? She felt like she should be glowing, because anything else than that wouldn't match up with what was going on inside of her mind. Ooh, yeah, sorry about that, you should be able to walk again in a few days, Naruto told her as he sat next to him with a sheepish smile on his face, did you enjoy yourself? Naruto asked her as he gently pushed her hair out of her face. Venelana smiled tiredly, how long hath was I out? Venelana asked with groan as she tried to move her legs. Her legs did not respond to her, you've been asleep for about half a day, we ended up going at it until you passed out, are you hungry? Naruto asked her, and she gave him sleepy eyes. Can we wend again? Oh. Legends say it continued for three days and nights. Lilith is confused. Why must we be on the ocean? Lilith asked as she floated, she could fly without the need for wings, above the water, she was done with learning to read, now she could read in four languages so she saw no reasons to pursue that any further so it was back to her training as his student, with the knowledge that she had gained from reading, her ability to speak had improved some as well, which was good for her, where are you taking Lilith now? Lilith asked with a raised eyebrow, they were walking towards the middle of the ocean. Naruto smiled, it's time to take your training to the next level, Orochimaru, if you were watching this, you know what I want you to do, Naruto stated with a giant grin on his face, he was sure that Orochimaru was watching them at the moment, and he knew that the man had figured out what he wanted from him, since he was looking for a true apprentice, not just a student, he would be having students undergo certain types of training, show me the island turtle. Naruto shouted as he put his hands out, as if he would be summoning a giant turtle. No turtle, Lilith sees no turtle, Lilith stated as she looked around for anything that might be a turtle. Naruto looked up in the sky when he noticed it getting darker above them. Naruto's eyes widened as he grabbed Lilith, and he jumped as far away from what was about to happen as possible. Just as a massive creature, a creature easily the size of a large island, came dropping out of the sky from a giant portal in the air, Lilith looked with her eyes widened a little when she saw the underbelly of a turtle above them, the giant turtle was mostly grayed in color, and it had entire mountain spikes coming from its back, with huge and untamed forests on it, when the turtle slammed into the sea, 
a tidal wave surged forth with the force that one would expect from something created by an island dropping into the ocean. Naruto jumped over the wave with Lilith in his arms, before he landed on top of the island turtle's head. The island turtle Genbu, an ancient creature so old that it made even the tailed beasts seem young, something that made even him look like a child when compared. Lilith sees a turtle, Lilith corrected herself when she was allowed to stand on her own once more on top of the huge turtle. Naruto smiled as he looked at the dark and dangerous forest, a forest that he had explored greatly in his younger years, back in the days when he had been assigned a fake mission to register all of the animals on the island and gather data on them, Naruto started to walk forward with a smile on his face, and when the waters calmed back down, Genbu started to swim once more. Yeah, me and Genbu go way back, come Lilith, we have a lot of work to do, it's been thousands of years since the last time I was here, all of the animals on the island need to be tamed once more, Genbu will be helping me train the next generations of sages, Naruto spoke to his technical apprentice, Lilith followed behind Naruto obediently, of course, as he walked through the forest towards the tallest mountain on the island. Lilith could only wonder what he was going to do there. The animals on the island were huge, the first animal she saw was a giant rabbit that watched them with suspicious eyes. It had to be standing at least 15 meters tall without a doubt in her mind, the creature was as tall as the surrounding trees, giant and fluffy, but with a powerful aura about it, the rabbit had large scars all over its body, having survived many battles on the island, Lilith realized that Naruto had started to run, so she followed after him as she took to the air, unable to keep up with him if she were to try and run after him. Years later yes, the temple is coming along nicely, Naruto spoke as he looked at the plans for the temple he had been working on, after her found the tallest mountain growing out of Genbu's shell, Naruto of course had used a shuriken to slice the top of the mountain off, the top of the mountain just above cloud level, with the flattened mountain now serving as the platform that he was building his sage temple on. Giant, 15 meter tall, giant stone toad statues had been summoned from his home world, and were surrounding the edges of the mountaintop, serving as the guardians for the training grounds, not to mention they looked cool, all sitting in meditative positions, while five of the giant toad statues were grouped together and formed a large circle behind the temple building itself. He had over a thousand clones working on making the forest on Genbu's back more dangerous, filling it with traps that would last the tests of time. Lilith is hungry, Lilith told Naruto as she looked at the temple that was being built. All she had, had to eat for the last few months was bugs since they're the food Naruto kept sealed away was gone now. We can eat later, Naruto stated as he overlooked the construction of the sage temple, he had already used his summoning contract with the toads to summon the sage statues to the top of the mountain, they were very much needed to help bring about the right atmosphere, since they were stuffed full of natural energy, they were all natural focuses for natural energy, since they were always surrounded and sucking it into themselves. With the toad statues around, the concentration of natural energy in the area would go up, and make it easier for sages in training to learn to sense natural energy, it wouldn't help them learn to absorb or balance it, but it would make it easier to learn to see it and sense it in general. Not to mention it was a beacon, the toad statues would serve as a beacon to anyone who could sense natural energy, and it would draw those who could sense natural energy towards his sage mountain as he was going to call it. Lilith, wants food now, Lilith told Naruto as her stomach growled. Come on greedy dragon, we still have a lot of work to do, this hole looks deep enough, and with this hole leading to the side of the mountain the extra water will run down the side, Naruto reached into his pocket, before he pulled out a small device that he attached to his wrist, Naruto created a single hand sign with his hands, before he placed his hands on the ground outside of the hole that he and Lilith had dug, Doden. Doryuheki, Naruto slapped his hands down hard. Lilith watched as a large wall of earth rose up out of the ground, the wall being close to 200 feet wide, and thick enough that it went a far distance away from them, the large wall being close to 30 feet tall, Naruto jumped on top of it, before he took a tiny scroll out of his pocket and placed it inside of the device that he had on his wrist. Cheater. Thankfully I still have a few of these left. I never bothered learning this technique for the Sweden. Naruto stated as he slapped his palm against the top of the earth wall. A hole appeared in the center of it, before raging waters ripped from the wall. The water spilled over the edge of the wall, and started to fill the hole that he and Lilith created with water. The hole being nearly 10 feet deep, it took moments to fill, and all of the extra water started to flow down the river that they created that led off the side of the mountain. Lilith. Didn't sense you use chakra, Lilith pointed out. Naruto nodded, I know a few jutsu with every element, though since they aren't part of my fighting style, I never use them, and in a situation I could use them, they usually aren't that useful, this device on my wrist is the coat, with it you can seal away techniques and use them later, you want it? 
Naruto asked as he slipped the coat off his wrist, he already had his right hand, which was far better for combat than the coat anyway, he only had a handful of technique scrolls left for the coat anyway, so he would have to create more of them for later. Lilith grabbed it, before she slipped it on her wrist, with the coat tightening around her arm to fit her smaller forearm better. Lilith is curious about this. Why a waterfall? Lilith asked as she looked at the waterfall that Naruto used the coat to create. Naruto smiled fondly, when I was on a three-year training journey with my master. We would often meditate underneath a waterfall together. And I learned to use elemental transformation using a waterfall, and when I was learning Senjutsu I sat underneath a toad oil waterfall, not to mention there was, anyway. Waterfalls have been an important part of my training for as long as I can remember. Naruto remembered all of the different waterfalls that had helped groom him into growing stronger and stronger, some might call the training old-fashioned, but it was training that got him to where he was. Meditating underneath the waterfall was something he wished to pass down onto an apprentice, and them to pass down to their apprentice. Lilith didn't understand the point of what he was doing, but it seemed like it would make her stronger. Lilith, wants to learn how to do this, Lilith pointed at the waterfall. And Naruto shrugged his shoulders, Naruto started to walk towards the water, and he motioned with his hand for her to follow him, she did with ease, and while he walked on the water, removing his pants and jacket, leaving himself in his boxers, she didn't bother removing her clothes, she floated in the air above the water, while Naruto moved so that he was standing in front of the waterfall, and then sat down underneath it. He pat the water next to him, sat a seat, legs crossed, let the water rush over your head and shoulders, and then just stay as focused as you can, Naruto told her, and she took a step out of the air, she stood on the water, she could but didn't often do it, before she sat down next to Naruto, she looked at herself, and copied the way his legs were, when Naruto placed his hands together in front of his belly, she copied the same motion. She didn't get it, she didn't question it though, at first. Lilith doesn't understand what this will do, Lilith stated, and Naruto smiled down at her. Focus on your core, your inner energy, this training is used to focus the mind, strengthen the body, and sharpen your energy, you could do with this training. This training also helps develop and control emotions, steal your focus Lilith, concentrate on the energy inside you, and like the water smooths the rocks, smooth away your own imperfections, Naruto lectured her as he followed his own training advice. Not that this training actually did anything for him, other than keep his mind sharp. When he gained six paths sage mode, he gained perfect chakra control, this kind of training didn't help him in the slightest when it came to his chakra, the training didn't improve anything for him but the focus it helped develop let him keep his mind sharp. Lilith didn't understand what he wanted her to do. Explain better. Let your body go foo and swoosh, Naruto explained better for her. Now for most people, that kind of explanation would be even more confusing. Naruto's way of teaching was often allowing his students to figure out how to learn the techniques in their own way, unless he was teaching them martial arts, in which he showed them through example and sparred with them, since he wasn't a dragon. There were only a few ways he could teach her to control the dragon power inside of her tiny body. Lilith understood, Fu and swoosh. Lilith's body was covered in a thin layer of black power, power that took the shape of several snakes for a second, she closed her eyes, and the power seemed rather uncontrollable, the power pushed away the water from her, but as the layers of power rolling from her got smaller, water started to hit her again, Fu and swoosh, Lilith stated as she glanced at him out of the side of her eye. Fu and swoosh, Naruto agreed with her, she was a quick study when she understood what he was trying to say, that sometimes was harder for her, since she wasn't that old, and the person she got her few memories from didn't have that much common sense. She wasn't a bad student though, years later come. Lilith jumped into action as she tried to kick Naruto in the head. Something he blocked with his forearm, before punching her in the stomach. She was sent flying from the hit, before she landed on the ground and kicked off with a jump, as she jumped, she started to spin sideways, her rotating body passed Naruto by as she reached for a two bells that were tied to his waistband, Naruto smacked away her hand, and she reached with her other hand as her rotation turned her around, her foot touched the ground, and while reaching for the bells, she tried to kick him. She had been training in mostly martial arts for nearly a decade now. Naruto blocked the kick, and she put more power into it, Naruto was pushed back by the kick with a small smile on his face, he placed his other hand on her foot, grabbed it, before he flipped her over his shoulder before her hand could grab the bells, as she was flipped, she grabbed onto his shoulder and used her free foot to kick off of his back, and free herself. You're getting a lot better, but I know you can put more power into your attacks, if you don't come at me seriously, you won't be eating dinner tonight, Naruto warned her, and the second she touched the ground, she blurred into the air in front of his face, having super speed jumped in front of him with her foot outstretched. 
Naruto smiled when he saw her put all of her power into the kick, so he returned by putting a lot of power into his punch. He didn't use chakra or anything, but his raw physical strength was nothing to scoff at. He raised his other hand and caught her ankle before the kick connected with him, and she used both of her arms to grab onto onto his arm, holding it in place when she locked up. Lilith will have sweets tonight. Lilith's voice didn't have much emotion in it, but Naruto knew the look of fire in her eyes after years with her. Like how she was using her free leg to reach down and grab the bells from him. He pushed her caught leg up into the air, making her entire body spin around his arm, her attacking foot now pointed to the sky, the small shockwave from her legs swing ruffled his hair, before he flexed his arm and headbutt her in her forehead, when their faces collided, Lilith was forced to back down before he could make it happen a second time, she jumped back down to the ground and didn't rush forward. Think carefully, analyze your opponent, look for any weaknesses that you can use. Every opponent has a weakness you can exploit, find that weakness, Naruto informed her as he purposely favored his left leg, giving her an opening that she could use if she noticed it, if she noticed, then she would have her chance to steal the bells from him, Lilith stayed on her guard and side stepped as she walked around Naruto, looking for said weakness, good, Naruto told her when she came at him from his left side. She had noticed his weakness, of Kaos, he wasn't going to make it easy for her either, she covered her hand with black dragon power, before she threw a ball of her energy at him, Naruto smacked it with his left hand, destroying the ball, but slightly burning his left hand, something that made him smile when he saw the tiny singe mark. Lilith has been practicing, Lilith stated when she threw a punch at Naruto, and he blocked with the back of his hand, she stepped forward and threw another punch, and he stepped back and blocked it with his knee. Lilith saw the damage to his hand was already fully healed in the moment that she had taken to throw her second punch. You condensed the power of your dragon power, instead of going for large amounts of damage, you focused the damage to a single spot, that is using your head to fight, if I were anyone else, my hand would be gone right now, Naruto praised her for her method of increasing the potency of her attacks, she knew that even her strongest attack would only do a small amount of damage to him, because of how high his resistance to energy attacks was. He had told her the story of how he was blasted through a moon with an attack in his base form, and took only a small amount of damage. She knew that widespread attacks were less potent, and against enemies with high resistance to damage, less potent attacks did even less damage. So she made a small area attack, by taking a widespread attack and condensing it down into a smaller form. Master didn't use chakra to block, Lilith pointed out with a small frown on her face, she had noticed that he didn't use his chakra to block the way when he smacked it, he didn't even use his right hand and absorb the attack. Naruto gave her a soft smile as she kicked at his stomach, and he stepped to the left, and thrust his palm into her shoulder, her small size making it a little difficult. She noticed that huh? I wanted to see how far you had come. Don't think I didn't notice you training in secret, I am your master, I am always watching you, even if you don't see me, Naruto told her as they continued to spar, she was pushed back, and landed on all fours, her fingernails sinking into the ground, her hands glowed, before ten snakes made of her power came out of the ground surrounding Naruto, she started to run towards Naruto, expecting him to take at least half a second in dealing with the energy snakes. Naruto dodged the snakes as they tried to bite him, and kicked Lilith in the face when she got to close, before he grabbed a snake that attempted to steal the bells from him. Again, he wasn't going to make it easy for her, he waved his right hand. And absorbed the energy inside of the snakes, making them vanish into thin air, Lilith had already recovered, she had serious durability herself, before she placed her hands together, she raised them both up, and swung them at Naruto, and with all of her physical power, she created a shockwave that sent a strong wind at Naruto, he raised his forearm up and stood firm against the wind, while Lilith ran around him, staying a good distance from him. Jingle clever, she knocked the bells from my waist using the wind, Naruto thought when he saw the bells riding on the shockwave, Lilith chased down the bells, abandoning the fight as she went for her true objective. Naruto beat her to the bells, he grabbed them behind his back with one hand, before he used his other hand to grab her outstretched hand, Naruto tossed the bells up into the air, before he flipped Lilith down so that her face was against the ground, he forced both of her arms behind her back, and sat down on top of her butt, the bells landed right in front of her face, inches away from her mouth, but she couldn't do much about it. Naruto smiled and let Lilith up, letting her touch the bells, before he took them and placed them in his pocket. Lilith will go collect bugs for dinner, Lilith stated, and Naruto rubbed the top of her head, shaking his head. No, you did really well today, you've really become a master in martial arts, your problem is that most of your moves are predictable, against an opponent you could use your full power against, you would have done much better, Naruto mentioned with a proud smile as he ruffled her hair. 
he had taken her serious the entire fight, he might have gone easy on her, but the fact remains that he had been treating her seriously as an opponent, if he hadn't taken her seriously, she would have gotten the bells, she had rapidly grown into a little martial artist in her own right, her moves were just a little too predictable thanks to the fact that he knew how she fought, he knew how her mind worked, so he knew what she was going to do and how she would make her plans. Lilith lost, Lilith pointed out, true, you lost, but I am still proud of you, you did a really good job, and that deserves a reward, I have some chocolate in the temple, Naruto mentioned to her. He smiled when she started to drool with a far off look in her eyes, she didn't bother wiping the small amount of drool, and just thought about the sweetness of the chocolate that she would be soon enjoying. Lilith sees a cat, Lilith stated, Naruto looked where she was looking, and saw that there was a young yukai girl, she had short white hair, and slightly pale skin, she was wearing a torn up and dirty white kimono, her short white hair was covered in dirt, she had a long tail that split into two tails, and large white cat ears on top of her head, her eyes were a bright yellow color, and she had a rather petite frame, though she was standing at close to 51 in height, with a rather developed B cup, though bras weren't invented yet in this world. Why don't you got help yourself to the chocolate, ill take care of the guest, Naruto told Lilith, who was willing to go and eat all of the chocolate by herself and ignore the intruder. The girl looked towards Naruto, before she walked over to him. She had a lot of small injuries on her body, hello. I am seeking the master of this temple, my name is Shironeko, I've come a long distance to find this place, Shironeko spoke as she bowed to Naruto. Naruto nodded, a Nekosho, not just a Nekomata, this first was part of the nearly extinct subspecies of the Nekomata, the strongest kind of Nekomata, who had a natural talent towards Senjutsu and black magic, Yujutsu, as called by some, they were a rare breed, but their sensing abilities when it came to finding places that held a high concentration of natural energy were high enough that a Nekosho finding Sage Mountain wasn't something that surprised him. I am the master of this temple, Naruto Uzumaki, please, tell me about your journey here, Naruto mentioned with a soft smile on his face. He was curious about how she got to Genbu, of course, she looked like she had gone through hell to get to the top of the mountain, the hard work she put into getting to Sage Mountain alone meant that he would be willing to give her a chance as his student. I walked, and walked, and then when I got to the beach I waited for this place to get really close, and then I walked, Shironeko wasn't sure how to explain what she did. Naruto nodded, she had taught herself how to use chakra to stick to surfaces and walk on water it would seem, she was also patient enough to wait for Genbu to get within walking distance of the beach she came from. You seem tired, come with me and I'll get you a room, you can sleep the night, and we can speak more tomorrow, you're the first person to reach Sage Mountain, I take it you came to learn Senjutsu? Naruto asked her, and she nodded her head excitedly, she smiled widely at the mention of Senjutsu being taught. Sage Mountain, kind of easy to guess what they practiced on the mountain, it was kind of in the name of the mountain. Yasaka Sama wasn't willing to teach me about Senjutsu, she said it was a forbidden art, only those with natural talent for it can learn, she told me I would have to travel to find a teacher myself, and here I am, Shironeko spoke with a small pout. Cute, well, Yasaka never really had a talent for Senjutsu, and it is kind of dangerous for Yukai to learn, he'll be sure to keep a careful eye on her, Naruto thought privately as he looked at the young Nekosho, Yukai did have a strong craving for power, and tasting the power of Senjutsu did always run with the risk of them going mad with power, a proper teacher though would usually help take care of that issue. Yusaka Sama. It sounded like his daughter was making a name for herself, Naruto smiled pridefully at the thought that she was becoming even more respected amongst her fellow yukai. Can you teach me Senjutsu? Shironeko asked with a tilt of her head. Naruto nodded his head, I can, but not right now, Senjutsu isn't just something you learn, tomorrow. I am going to see if you are ready to learn it, and if you aren't, Naruto paused when he saw Shironeko look down sadly, then I am going to help you get ready to learn it, Naruto got to finish, and like magic Shironeko smiled happily again. Thank you Naruto-san, tomorrow, you will refer to me as master, or Naruto-sensei, Naruto was stern with her. If he didn't let his own son call him dad while in the Hokage's office, then he wasn't going to let his students call him so casually while he was teaching them. Shironeko blushed in happiness, she had a senjutsu master. Ow. Shironeko was smashed in the back of the head with a small black rod, all of the natural energy forced out of her body, Naruto sitting behind her, watching her with said stick in his hand, she had several bumps on her head from her incorrectly gathering the power of nature into herself. Do it again, but this time balance natural energy with your physical energy and spiritual energy, use your chakra as a tool to form the balance, you're just mixing natural energy with your physical energy. Naruto told her, 
his own eyes yellow with bar pupils, orange rings around his eyes, there were some differences between the Senjustice, but the basics were almost exactly the same. You took energy from your surroundings and mixed it with your own. Only, the Yukai seemed to be only mixing it with their base of life, their physical energy, they used the natural energy around them as a tool to manipulate their own inner energy, combining it with purely their ki. Spirit energy is used for Yujutsu. I've never even heard of using my spirit energy as a part of Senjutsu before, Shironeko complained dn to Naruto, hissing as she used her hands to nurse her bruised head, she had never even used spirit energy and physical energy at the same time, much less try to mix her energies together using her chakra, using her chakra to mix those energies perfectly with natural energy. That seemed impossible to her. Naruto sighed in response, if you don't balance your physical with your spiritual, you will just be consumed by power more easily, so do it again, but better. Naruto told her with arms crossed stubbornly, Senjutsu training was a do or don't do sort of thing, he would give them the instructions, and they either did it or they didn't do it, there were no half ways with Senjutsu, not in the slightest. Shironeko didn't seem to understand that, but she was willing to try. This would be easier if I knew what true Senjutsu felt like, all I know is what the way I do Senjutsu feels like, Shironeko argued against him though. Naruto slapped her head, ow. You do have a point, you've never mixed your energies before, so it would be harder for you, Naruto agreed with her, she sent him an indignant look at the way that he abused her for being right. I am right, so why did you hit me? Shironeko even had a tear in her eye from the stinging pain. Don't talk back to your master if you don't want to get hit, you were born with the ability to sense and gather natural energy, but you were not born with the ability to balance it properly, Toad Senjutsu might be a little too difficult for you. Naruto stood up with a sigh, and have her a completely disappointed tone, she looked up with guilty eyes when she heard that disappointment in his tone, and grabbed onto his legs, hugging her body close to them. Disappointment. One of the best teaching tools for parents to use against children, and that rule still applied here it would seem. Nobody wanted somebody to be disappointed in them. No master, I want to learn Toad Senjutsu. I'll do it again, I'll try and balance my energies properly this time. Shironeko begged him, assuming that he was going to tell her that her training with Senjutsu was over, she had been training under him for nearly a year now, and they had only just begun working on Senjutsu now that her body was strong enough to handle it, she had spent nearly a year meditating underneath the waterfall, running laps and working out her body, as well as reading books and studying about chakra in general. She had spent so much time learning and getting stronger, that she would feel horrible that all of her work had just led to her losing her master because of her own stubbornness. Naruto smiled down at her, okay then, stand up and come with me. Naruto stated as he motioned with his hand for her to stand up. She wiped the tears out of her eyes, a happy smile on her face once more. Regardless of the bruises on the back of her head, she stood next to him, and she noticed Lilith was watching her and Naruto with a dull expression on her face, when she waved to Lilith, the greedy dragon just turned and started to walk away, Shironeko smiled awkwardly as she started to follow Naruto, don't worry about Lilith, she just doesn't like you, I've given her the title of the greedy dragon for a reason you know, Naruto mentioned the now official title that he had given to her. Pretty much everyone who knew about Lilith knew about her greedy personality, and when they heard that she was being called the greedy dragon they accepted it as her title at face value. I have a dragon god that hates me, I am worried about that, Shironeko pointed out to him blandly. It's fine, Lilith isn't like Ophis completely, give her some chocolate, and she will do pretty much anything, Naruto told Shironeko, who looked at Naruto with a gleam in her eye. Including? You know between females can't make a baby, right? Naruto mentioned Shironiko's goal for the future, one of which was to create strong children, the reason she wanted to get stronger being so that her own children would have the potential to surpass her, she wanted her race to bloom once more. As it stood, only one Nekosho was born for every 100 Nekomata. The Nekosho race was pretty much down to three or four Nekosho, simply because of how rare they were, they were a subspecies of Nekomata meaning that they were already a nearly extinct species simply because they were a rather recent species to emerge. She has shape-shifting powers like Ophis, right? Shironeko asked, and Naruto raised his eyebrow. Oh, right, Lilith never used her shape-shifting powers, but she did have them seeing as she had all of Ophis' powers, she could become a male if she so desires, or simply give herself the parts needed to make a baby. Well, if you can convince Lilith to give you a baby, go for it, Naruto mentioned in passing and Shironeko shook her head. She didn't want that, if I have a baby with her, the child will be a dragon, Nekosho. I need to have a baby with a human or Nekomata for the child to be a Nekosho, I just thought if we had, she might like me more, 
Shironiko's innocent reason for wanting Lilith in the bedroom was something that did surprise Naruto. Sometimes he forgot that Yukai didn't have all of the same mortals as humans did when it came to, and seeing as Nekomata had mating seasons once they became teenagers it was rather easy to see that most of them weren't really virgins either. Naruto wondered if Shironiko had ever been through a mating season before? No, then she would have gotten pregnant if she had with a man during mating season, it was the one time that the chances of pregnancy were 100%. She is the greedy dragon, and you have something she wants, she's not going to like you until you don't have what she wants, Naruto mentioned how her plan would fail. That tidbit surprised the Neko show, something she wants. I don't have anything, I have no family, no friends, and the clothes on my back are the only things I've ever owned, what do I have that she could ever want? The white-haired Neko show asked with her tone truly suggesting her ignorance, she wasn't even strong, so what about her could make the tiny dragon dislike her? My attention, huh? Shironiko was dumbfounded by the answer. Lilith wants my attention, all of it, I've trained Lilith for well over a few hundred years. She hates whenever my attention isn't on her, she just isn't good at showing her emotions, Naruto mentioned something that Shironiko would have never guessed by herself, she had known the tiny dragon for nearly a year now, and still didn't know how to read the girl. All she knew was that Lilith always ignored her, and whenever she tried to strike up conversation, Lilith would walk away and go try and talk with Naruto instead. Ooh. Okay, now it made sense for her. I guess she would kill me for mating with you then. Shironeko followed Naruto through the temple halls, until she got to a room she was never allowed in. Naruto's bedroom, she saw a bookshelf that was loaded with dozens of scrolls, one scroll being nearly the size of a small person. She saw Naruto's bed, large enough to fit him and maybe another person, and she saw several things that she didn't know what to call them, things that looked like they came straight from the future, including several metal hands that were just sitting around. She saw a few wrist strap metal things, with tiny scrolls with them. Is that a sacred gear? Shironiko asked with surprise. Humans with special powers were usually attributed to having sacred gears, or being related to somebody with high amounts of magical potential. She saw three sacred gears were in Naruto's room, each of them something she would never have expected to find at the Sage Temple. Though the name hadn't spread around yet, she would expect something with high amounts of natural energy to contain only artifacts concerning Senjutsu. Hum. Oh, yeah, I've met several people who hated their sacred gears. Since normally removing a sacred gear kills the owner, I removed it for them and kept them alive, I've got a two copies of Twice Critical, and a Twilight Healing, Twice Critical is pretty common though, there are only a few Twilight Healings in the world though, Naruto mentioned as he started to look through the scrolls, he didn't mind his student looking around his room so much, so long as she didn't touch something dangerous. He had several very powerful items and creatures sealed away inside of his room that he would rather not have to go to the trouble of capturing and sealing away. Bananas? Shironeko asked when she looked at the small banana tree Naruto had growing in his room. Dragons love bananas, so when Lilith does something really good, I like to reward her with a banana. Also, I love gardening myself, so I get to grow bananas, and she gets to enjoy them. Everyone wins, Naruto explained simply to her, and he took a scroll off of his shelf and unrolled it before he rolled it right back up. Not the one he was looking for, why don't you use the sacred gears? Shironiko asked, since she was curious why he didn't increase his own power with them. I am too powerful, some sacred gears will destroy the user with their power, well if I used a sacred gear, the sacred gear would be destroyed by my power, sacred gears grow stronger when their user grows stronger, but they aren't perfect, Naruto gave her ample explanation about his past experience, he had tried to use a sacred gear out of sheer curiosity to see if he could do it, and the rather powerful sacred gear had been destroyed by his power the second he tried to put it to use. Shironeko grabbed one of the hands that were sitting around, and looked at it with curious eyes. Naruto noticed her actions, but they didn't bother him. Naruto unrolled his bandages off of his arm, and showed his robot hand to Shironeko, he rolled up his sleeve and showed that the flesh of his arm connected to the robot arm was white. I lost my arm after a war a long time ago, originally, my hand was made out of Hashirama cells, while about half of my arm is still made up of the cells Naruto gestured to the white part of his forearm and elbow, my hand and wrist are both robotic now, Naruto explained as he popped his hand off and showed it to her, before he placed it back on, Naruto started to roll back on his bandages, covering up his robot hand. So this is how you absorb techniques, Shironeko realized when she remembered seeing him absorb Lilith's techniques when they sparred always with his right hand, to be fair, I don't really need to absorb techniques. I am strong enough that most techniques don't really hurt me, but absorbing techniques stops them from damaging my surroundings, Naruto deadpanned, 
remembering all of the collateral damage that he could have avoided in the past by having this hand, he knew so many super powerful techniques that could instantly kill opponents, but he could never use them without risking catching his allies in the power of the techniques as well. He always had to hold back his power because people were always around him when he needed to fight at his full power, thus limiting him to only his small scale techniques. Found it, that is a big scroll, Shironeko spoke when she saw Naruto holding a scroll nearly as large as herself. She blinked, she hoped she wasn't going to have to read that. You increase your physical energy, your ki, by training your body. You increase your spirit energy on the other hand, by practice and study, so you are going to study this, and then when you have a good balance on physical and spiritual energy, we will return to your senjutsu training. Naruto spoke commandingly to her, he pushed the scroll onto her shoulder, making her grab onto it just to stay standing up. The scroll weighed literally just as much as she did, but she didn't really struggle with it. Shit, she was going to have to read it, Naruto rolled his eyes. Naruto pushed Shironeko out of his room with the scroll in her hands, before he closed the door behind her. He had plans in a little bit, so time to leave his student to go and study. Location. Italy where is that big, lovable, goofball? A lone woman stood with a smile on her face as she looked around for her date of the evening. The woman was on the shorter side, being around 54 in height. And she had long, straight, light brown hair, she had bright green eyes, and very pale skin, and her face was on on the rounded side, instead of narrow, she was wearing a dark grey button-up shirt, with puffed sleeves colored in white, and a small black vest, with it, she had a knee-length white skirt that was flowered, and had a floral print on it, her legs were bare of any hair, and she was wearing a moderate amount of makeup for her date. Sorry to make you wait Orem. I had some business to take care of with my students first, Naruto spoke with a laid-back tone, a wide smile on her face. Perfume, makeup, deodorant, and a more casual way of speaking. It had taken a long time, but finally Naruto was finding more and more women physically attractive now that the evolution of beauty was changing into something more befitting his home world. Now, the ideal woman was no longer on the heavier side, and more athletic women were being appreciated once more, women were shaving their body hair and had started to wear makeup to make their best traits stick out more. So where are we going? The theater, or are we just going to walk through the park? Orem asked with a smile on her face. Naruto smiled and pat the top of her head, Moo. Naruto laughed when she puffed her cheeks out and started to fix her messed up hair, she smiled and grabbed his arm, placing it against her chest as she stood side by side with him. A walk through the park sounds nice, I am happy with anything, as long as I do it with you. Naruto told her with a wide smile across his lips, she smiled back, nodding her head cutely as she did so. Dating, it had been literally thousands upon thousands of years since Naruto had actually dated a woman. Be it because he had just recently lost his wife, or because the women weren't really the type he wanted to try dating. Or even because he was busy raising a young girl into a grown woman, he had always had a reason to not date anyone, but with the evolution of beauty standards, he was finding women to be his type, with his students now more independent he was finding more time to be away from them, finally, since it had been so long since his wife passing, he felt that he had waited long enough to find love again. We could always go to your house, and just make a nice dinner together, Orem suggested with her smile dazzling. He loved that smile, he really did, oh, making some ramen would be great right now, sure, let's walk to my house, Naruto agreed with her suggestion. Human technology was finally starting to catch up with his world. While they didn't have planet-destroying cannons, robotic enhancements, or high-speed internet connections and quality phones, they did have cars, something his world didn't usually use, what with everyone being able to run faster than cars, Naruto didn't see the point of buying a car, when walking was always something nice to do. Yeah, I can finally see your house. Orem gave a happy jump up and down, having never been to his house. He had several of them, several hundred years ago. Naruto had started to publish his Arrow Arrow series once more. Every few years he would release a new book, and with the profits he had started up a publishing company, in the last couple hundred years, Naruto had earned several hundred billion in profit, seeing as he had been the only real publisher around for so long, Naruto had several small homes scattered across the globe, he had a home in every country, and he owned several small islands that he used for the sole purpose of keeping other people from using them for something nasty. Huh. Yeah. Usually we go to your apartment when we Naruto was cut off when Orem put both of her hands against his face to stop him from talking, her cheeks burning red. SS is shish, not in public, Orem was embarrassed by the fact that she had, had premarital, if she had a family, she was sure her family would be angry with her for the fact that she had bed a man before she was married to him, 
not to mention a man that was older than her, she was only 22 years old, having just recently finished her final years of education, not until you put a ring on my finger at least, Orem whispered under her breath. Naruto heard, they had been dating for about three months now, which was two months longer than he dated Hanada before he proposed to her, Naruto thought about it for a moment, before he nodded his head in acceptance. Okay, he was going to propose to her once he bought a ring. That was something he found weird about the way this world developed, so many countries had married couples wearing rings, in his world, nobody had ever really considered wearing wedding rings, none of his friends wore rings, he didn't wear a ring, nobody wore rings that signified that you were married in his world. Such a silly concept, why don't we have a pizza delivered, and put in a VHS? Naruto suggested a small change to their plans, since he realized he never kept his houses stocked with food, there were no ingredients for cooking anything. Orem's stomach growled, pizza sounds good too, do you have any good VHS tapes? Orem asked him with a curious glance at him. What type of movies did he like? I think I have Ghostbusters too, and I know for sure I have the first movie, not a lot of good things to watch lately, well, there is, Naruto thought about it for a moment, before he smiled to himself. He had the perfect movie to show her, that just happened to be a VHS from his world. A VHS movie that had him in it, showing one of his adventures when he was a child, he was sure that she would just love the movie, it was a good movie, and it would help ease her into the supernatural when he told her the truth about himself. This was going to be great, Naruto the movie, Ninja Class in the Land of Snow. Jingle I did it, I got the bells, after 10 years, I did it, Shironeko spoke through her pants as she looked at the bells in her hand, her entire body was covered from head to toe in injury that she had sustained while fighting against her master, she was bleeding from the ribs, having a large cut going across them, and both of her arms were bruised and beaten, not to mention her left eye was swollen shut, and her left cheek was bruised and purple. Her eyes were yellow, duh, but instead of her usual slit pupils, she had bar pupils, with orange rings around her eyes. She had been his student for nearly ten years now, and finally she mastered the toad sage mode, though years of hard work, she had managed to finally take the bells from her master, she fell to her knees out of pure exhaustion when her sage mode ended forcefully, she didn't completely faint though, and managed to remain sitting as her body started to sweat from overuse of the legendary technique. Yes, Shironeko, you got the bells, Naruto clapped his hands together with a smile on his face. Since Shironeko had become his student, she had been the first person to ever complete the training that he had set forth, and in record time, Lilith was still training to reach her potential while Shironeko had finished her training under him. Ka-chan. You did it. A small child ran out from behind Naruto's legs, a girl about five years old, a small nekosho like Shironeko. The girl had long black hair that went to the middle of her back, and she had a single black tail, yellow eyes, and black cat ears, she was wearing a little black kimono, and appeared to be a black-haired version of her mother, but much younger. Yeah, I am dead. Shironeko fell on her back as her daughter ran to her side and jumped into her bosom. Naruto walked over to her, I am very proud of you, you're my first student to complete their training, not even Yusaka managed to complete her training, you've done your daughter proud, isn't that right Kuroka-chan? Naruto asked the young Nekosha with a teasing smile, Kuroka sat on her mother's stomach, and nodded her head proudly at Naruto. Ka-chan did awesome Naruto-sama, totally dead, you know, five years ago when you told me you mated with another student and got pregnant, I thought about ending your training, and I am glad I didn't. Naruto offered Shironeko a hand to stand up, she didn't take his hand, because she wasn't able to take his hand, she couldn't move anything of her body, so Naruto leaned down and picked her up bridal style, Kuroka and all. Ka-chan's the greatest Ka-chan NYA. Kuroka embarrassed her mother by showing a cat-like verbal tick, but she didn't stop her daughter from doing it. You kicked my mate off the mountain, Shironeko mentioned dully, and Naruto shrugged his shoulders. The man had zero potential for sage mode, so he had to go. He walked through the halls, before he stopped in front of the student's living area and opened the door with his foot, showing many different bedrolls that were placed inside, Naruto moved her over to the one that was her bedroll. I've also kicked off 40 other Yukai students who wanted to learn Senjutsu. And failed, now that you have sage mode, you can go and find him again, after all, after today you are no longer going to be studying under me, your training as my student is complete, and now you must carve your path in life yourself, Naruto gently set her down in her bed, Kuroka crawled off of her mother, before she looked at the bells that were in her mother's tightly gripped hand, Shironeko barely managed to lift her hand up, and she gave Naruto the bells back. That makes me sad, I am going to miss you master, Shironeko spoke, and Naruto reached down with the bells. 
He tied the bells to the side of her head, tying them gently to her hair. They are your bells now, consider them a graduation gift from me to you, I am trusting you to keep them safe. Naruto ruffled her hair, and she did smile at him, she was beaming at his words, happy that he was giving her such a meaningful gift, the bells that she had been working for years to get from him, were the gift that she would be able to treasure for the rest of her life. They were the proof of her guts and determination to master sage mode. Kuroka looked at the bells, kind of cheap NYA, Kuroka stated, both Naruto and her mother laughed at the innocence of the little kitten Yukai, Naruto stood up to his full height, before he looked down at the woman with his proud smile lowering into a calm smile. Her training was over, her training with him was over at least, if she wished to continue training herself, and develop her skills further, that was up to her, she had completed the training program that he had set forth, out of all of his students over the years, even Elsha with her boosted gear, Shironeko was the first person to actually complete her training and see it through to the end. Once you recover, your time on Sage Mountain will have come to an end, next time we meet, I want to see how much stronger you can become on your own, Naruto told the young woman, she was still a young woman to him, even though she was now in her thirties in age, Lilith, begin preparations for Shironiko's goodbye party, Naruto told Lilith, who was standing nearby the door and watching the entire thing going down. Lilith didn't show it on her face, but she was feeling good that Shironiko and her little daughter were done with their time on the mountain, that meant that Lilith would have her master to herself until the next time Yukai felt brave and made the journey to the top of the mountain. If that ever happened again, Lilith will begin right away, goodbye cat, Lilith gave Shironeko a polite bow. Shironeko scoffed at the politeness, knowing that Lilith was just glad to be rid of her, only a few more days, and the two of them wouldn't have to see each other, which made the greedy dragon happy. I wants to start training Nian. Lilith looked at the small Neko show, while even Shironeko looked at her daughter with some surprise, Naruto glanced down at the knee high girl, seeing as the girl had a similar personality to her mother, he could understand wanting to do the same training, Naruto leaned down and poked Kuroka in the chest, pushing her onto her butt, she landed at her mother's side, who had expected a similar reaction. Sure. Start your training by being a good girl for your mom, I've got business to take care of somewhere else, so I'll see you all tomorrow, Naruto stated as he stood back up, and started to walk away, Kuroka ran towards Naruto and grabbed onto his leg, holding onto them as he walked, he kicked his leg up backwards, and tossed her across the room. Ow right on top of her mother, who hadn't expected her missile of a daughter to come flying and hit her in the center of the chest, Naruto vanished in a burst of speed, leaving the room through the open window, because why close a window? No reason, not reason to close a window at the top of Sage Mountain. Location. Naruto's house, Italy Naruto smiled as he walked through his living room of his home, he looked around, and he saw Orem was sitting on the couch watching the TV, she hadn't changed much in the ten years they had been together, but her face had matured a little, her hairstyle had changed so that it was cut short, and she was wearing a long white that had the belly of the dress enlarged. How is she doing? Naruto asked as he sat down next to Orem with a soft smile on his face, placing his hand on her bulging stomach. She wants ice cream, Orem told Naruto, and Naruto placed his head next to her belly, he placed his hand on her belly, rubbing it gently as he checked the small chakra suppressing seal that was on her stomach, are you worried about the paper? Orem asked Naruto, who nodded his head. He didn't know how his chakra would affect the unborn babies of this world, even more so for a normal human like Orem. So he was going to suppress the chakra inside of the unborn baby as much as possible just to be on the safe side, if he could completely erase the chakra, that would be even better, since her mother didn't have chakra, their unborn girl's body would not be required to have chakra to survive like his body did. It won't be long, she's going to be born any day now, Naruto spoke with just as much excitement as when his first child was going to be born, it always amazes me that there is a tiny human inside of you, Naruto gently pressed his entire face into her bump, rubbing both hands up against it. Orem had to jiggle, to think a man older than human history itself was such a goofball, and still able to take so much joy just from an unborn baby made her happy. Yep, little Asia will be born really soon, I love her to death, but I want her out of me, right now, Orem admit that carrying the little bundle of joy had been hard for her, harder for her even more so since she wasn't fit for pregnancy. The doctors had actually told her that for her health, it would have been best for her to terminate the pregnancy earlier risk her very life, I hope I can raise her, Orem spoke as she lifted her hand to her heart. Her heart, she had a very weak heart, the act of having a baby and giving birth alone was something that doctors said could stop her heart. Worrying so much isn't good for you or the baby, what are we watching? Naruto asked as he finally paid some attention to the TV. A live news story, 
A local school is celebrating the 5 of May, Oram explained to him, and as boring as he found some holidays, Naruto had to raise an eyebrow at that. It's the 11th, they are celebrating a little late, don't you think? Naruto stated his question deadpan style, it was nearly a week too late to really celebrate the holiday that had already long since passed, think anything exciting will happen? Naruto asked with a grin. His wife shrugged her shoulders, she blinked, before she groaned and held her stomach in pain, she leaned forward and gave a yelp when another wave of pain overcame her, she looked down at herself when she felt her thighs get wet, and since she had great bladder control, she was pretty sure that she knew what was going down. My water broke, my water broke. My water broke. Oram shouted out when it really hit her. The baby was coming now. You call the ambulance, I am going to Naruto grab the phone off of the coffee table. And he passed it over to her, since he still didn't believe in using cars, he was never going to willingly use them himself, he knew she was going to need a ride, he would have offered to carry her, if she weren't pregnant, if he traveled too fast, it could put a lot of pressure on her body, and jumping from building to building would not be good for her or the baby, you did not jump from building to building while carrying a pregnant woman giving birth. That was just a horrible idea, oh my god, a monster is attacking the ga. Naruto and Oram both looked at the television and saw the reporter get decapitated by a large mechanical beast, in moments, the live broadcast was showing a scene of carnage as men, women, and children were all slaughtered by something that Naruto was pretty sure was made by a certain mad scientist, to make life more interesting, Naruto looked at his wife, before he looked at the TV as the live feed cut off. Oram, just go, they need you more than I do right now, I'll call the ambulance, I'll be fine, go and save as many people as you can, when you're done being a hero, well have a daughter, Oram told Naruto with confidence in him, Naruto leaned down and kissed his wife on the forehead. He took his cloak off and draped it over her body, giving it to her as proof that he would be coming back for her. I am sorry, I wish I was a better husband, but I can't ignore people suffering, I am off, Naruto told her sadly at his own inability to be with her for the birth of their daughter, Naruto started to ran towards the door, opening it, before he jumped on top of the house and stayed still for a moment. Entering sage mode, Naruto looked around, sensing anything that could have been created by that man. Naruto sensed chakra, Naruto could sense chakra, but not coming from a human, he was seeing chakra being used to fuel some kind of machine, he could sense all of the lives that were quickly being lost to the beast. With Orochimaru your life has been a little too boring, don't you think? Let's see how this spices things up, Orochimaru spoke with a sly grin on his face as he watched the monitor, a boring world was boring to watch, so he had been waiting for the perfect moment to begin unleashing his creations on the world. What perfect moment? The moment that Naruto's next child would be born seemed like the best choice to cause a little chaos. Time to have a little fun, DXD vs Hilda, take Xenovia and run, keep our daughter safe, I'll run out and distract that thing, I'll try to give you a chance, a blue haired man spoke to his wife as he looked at her holding their crying baby, the man was well dressed, wearing a suit so that he and his wife could visit church, church that just so happened to be right next to the school where the monster was attacking. The monster had finished attacking the school, and had moved on to the next building where it could see people. Paul, you'll die if that thing sees you, we should stay hidden, a green-haired woman, with brown hazel eyes whispered urgently as she held her baby tighter to herself, she tried her best to stop her child from crying, if they could hide them maybe the creature wouldn't notice them, and move on to somebody else. A giant, eight foot tall, mechanical spider walked through the, the building, looking for any victims it could use to draw out its target. The spider's body was covered in thick, bright metal armor, and all of its legs were sharpened to the point of them being blades, it had several indents in its body colored red, with holes in the middle of the indents, leading into a glowing red core, while it was 8 feet tall, it was close to 16 feet long, and each of its legs had strange gun-like weapons on them. It looked towards them, Paul jumped out of hiding and waved his arms to draw its attention. Hey! I am over here, I bet you can't! Paul stopped waving his eyes, when faster than his eye could see, the spider swung one of its legs at him, a red line appeared across his neck, before he collapsed to the floor, his head separating from his body, Hilda had been in the middle of running away, before she came to a stop when she saw her husband die. Paul. Hilda changed directions, forgetting everything when she saw the love of her life die in front of her. The spider swiped at her, taking her legs off of her body, she gave a quick scream of pain as her body hit the ground, when she hit the ground, her crying baby rolled out of her arms and towards her dead husband, her baby had a couple of small burns from the carpet, but the bigger threat was the fact that the spider was looking at them now, and raising its legs up high to finish both of them off. Hilda didn't feel dead when the spider swung its legs down at them, 
even though she shut her eyes as tightly as she could. You bastard, damn it Orochimaru, getting innocents involved. Hilda looked up and saw a tall man standing in front of her, holding Xenovia in one of his arms, while stopping the giant spider's blade leg with his other hand, Naruto looked back at her, before he turned on his heel and flipped the spider over his shoulder, Hilda saw the spider get thrown through the wall, before he vision started to quickly fade away, everything started to get numb for her as she bled out through the s lives arteries in her legs, the legs that had been cut off. The baby looks fine, though her parents, Naruto looked down at the dead father, and the nearly dead mother, Naruto looked at his cut hand, despite being in sage mode, the spider had managed to cut him, the spider's legs are made of the same material as Sasuke's sword, Naruto realized mentally when he saw the spider getting back up in the middle of the road. Naruto's body started to glow golden, pro, Xenovia, protect, our, daughter. Naruto glanced back down at the woman, and at the crying baby in his arm, the woman reached out with her hand, and grabbed onto her husband's hand, she looked up at Naruto with her eyes pouring out her tears, a large hand came out of Naruto's chest and rushed towards the spider, grabbing it and slamming it into the ground before it could stand back up, Naruto took this chance to lean down and closed Paul's eyes, Hilda looked back to Naruto, and at his golden glowing form. Xenovia, does she have any other family I can take her to? Naruto asked Hilda, who shook her head. Naruto saw the light leave her eyes, target, acquired, chakra absorb. Damn it, it can absorb chakra, Naruto saw his chakra arm get absorbed by the holes in the spider's body. Naruto stood up straight and looked at the baby in his arms, he chakra a third arm made of chakra, and used it to cradle the baby to his chest, and protect her, I am going to have to hold back, to many people around. Naruto said as the spider started to rush towards him, Naruto jumped on top of the spider, dodging its slices narrowly, he jumped off of it and landed in the middle of the road. Chakra return cannons, the cannons on the spider glowed. Before it shot Naruto's chakra back at him, Naruto would have dodged the attack. But doing so would cause his chakra to hit the building behind him, more than likely destroying it, Naruto created a large fox head, and had it open its mouth, catching all of the attacks, before closing around them. Naruto contained the explosion inside of the fox head, before it vanished and the spider started to swing its legs at him again, with his enhanced defense, Naruto started to use his arms to block the legs without letting them hit the crying baby held against his chest. You might be made of same thing as Sasuke's sword, but you still have joints, Naruto stated when he caught one of the legs, and punched it in one of its joints, the legs snapped off with ease, since Naruto destroyed the joint keeping it together, Naruto used the leg as a sword and grabbed it with both hands raising it above his head, before it slashed the spider across the head, the head was sliced in half, and the spider collapsed to the ground moments later. Naruto didn't drop his transformed state, even when it looked like he had killed the robot spider. Wah, there there, don't cry, it's going to be okay. Naruto let the third arm vanish as he held the baby with his actual arms, cradling it and rocking it. Naruto placed his hand on the injuries Xenovia had, before they started to heal up, with her rug burns gone. Xenovia's crying lessened a little, you were just in the wrong place, at the wrong time, Naruto said softly, never taking his eyes off of the spider. Knowing Orochimaru, the spider was going to do something the second he took its eyes off of it. Naruto heard sirens going off, and saw police cars rushing towards the scene, having finally been able to drive to try and shoot down the beast that was taking so many lives, Naruto glanced back at the spider. It started to rain. The weather channel had predicted that there were going to be storms on and off during the day. Ah, ba ba, yeah, my face has whiskers. Naruto felt Xenovia's baby hands touching his cheeks, placing with the bar shaped whiskers on his face, they were bigger than normal thanks to his transformation. Looks like Orem is making it to the hospital safely too. Naruto could sense the fact that Orem was on her way to the hospital in the ambulance, he could sense she was moving pretty quickly. The spider's eyes glowed and it started to spray acid out of all of the holes in its body, Naruto covered Xenovia with his hand, stopping the acid from hitting her, the acid did nearly nothing to his body, but the buildings, cars, and people around that were hit started to melt, even the spider's body started to melt, leaving an unstable core behind sitting in a pool of acid, the chakra core of the robot started to blink when it came in contact with the acid, blinking faster and faster. Bah! Oh shit it's a bow boom the entire area was covered in a huge explosion that wiped out everything within a 30 meter range of the core. The explosion being black in color, and Naruto covered himself Xenovia in a layer of chakra to protect her from the explosion, he formed 9 chakra tails to contain the explosion as much as he possible could, without the tails wrapping around the explosion, there was a good chance it would have destroyed the entire city, 
maybe even more knowing the man that was Orochimaru. Bah! Xenovia continued to play with Naruto's face, his chakra protecting her from the explosion, both of them in the middle of a large crater. MB, it was a bomb, Naruto powered down, Naruto looked at Xenovia. And he held her against his shoulder, he held her very carefully as he jumped up onto the nearest rooftop nearly 50 meters away, he made sure that she wasn't hurt by his jumping, and he started to make his way towards the hospital that his wife was on her way to. Xenovia screamed in childish joy at the wind rushing in her hair, you're too young to understand, it's for the best you don't know what you just lost, Naruto spoke softly as he looked at the joyful baby. She just lost her parents, but she seemed to only be a few months old at best, there was no way she understood that she had lost her only family. Her parents had died to try and save her, Naruto landed in front of the hospital. Which was busy and active, sending out all of their ambulances. No doubt to go and see if they could find any survivors from the massacre, Naruto landed in a place where nobody would see him, his feet touching down in the shadows, before he walked into the light and made his way towards the hospital entrance, Naruto walked into the entrance, and saw doctors and nurses getting everything ready for all of the possible people they would have to try and save, he sat in the ear waiting room, knowing that his wife would be there any minute now. Any minute now, any minute now, any minute now. Any minute now? How long had it been? Naruto Uzumaki? Yes, Dr. Jones? Naruto asked, remembering the doctor who had been taking care of his wife's checkups throughout her pregnancy. Naruto stood up and shook hands with the man, and he shook his hand loosely. The man seemed saddened by something, and Naruto could see that in his eyes. Did Orem come in without be realizing? Naruto asked, since maybe they just brought her in through a different entrance, the hospital did have multiple places to bring people in after all. Jones shook his head, I am sorry, there was an accident on the road, the ambulance your wife was in went off of the road in the rain, your wife, didn't make it, Jones spoke softly to Naruto, who felt his heart break a lot when he spoke those words. Naruto took a deep breath, thank you for telling me, is my daughter, did she make it? Naruto asked, and Jones closed his eyes. He shook his head, your daughter wasn't inside of your wife when the accident happened, but we don't think she would have survived, it would take a miracle. Would you like to see your wife? Jones asked Naruto, and Naruto sat back down in the chair, his legs not working anymore. Naruto closed his eyes, and placed a hand against his face. Xenovia was asleep on his other arm already. Naruto let loose his breath, I think I need to take a walk, Naruto told the doctor, who nodded his head in sympathy. Naruto stood up and walked towards the exit of the hospital. Naruto. What is it, Kurama? Naruto asked with a heavy voice, Naruto walked into the rain so that the rain would cover up his tears. I am sorry this happened, but I left a little of my chakra in your daughter, my chakra in her is gone now, but I can promise you that she is safe, the doctor said it would take a miracle for her to survive, your daughter has your luck, Kurama softly spoke to his only friend, Naruto smiled lightly, before his eyes turned down. Were his genetics a curse, where is she now? Naruto asked Kurama, who had a little of his chakra inside of his daughter until now. Last I saw, she was found by a nun, she's being taken to a somewhere else, are you going to go and get her? Kurama asked, knowing Naruto better than anyone, Naruto nodded his head in response, knowing that he would be getting his daughter, I am very sorry about your wife, she was a good woman, she was a great woman for you, and made you happy, Kurama spoke with sincere sadness that Naruto lost somebody close to him once more. Naruto shook his head, now isn't the time to mourn, I just learned my daughter is alive, anyway, Orem isn't dead so long as I carry her will in my heart, she hasn't died, she's just joined the rest of my loved ones, right in her, Naruto spoke softly as he placed his thumb against his chest. Kurama grinned inside of Naruto, you're still crying. Shut up idiot, I am not crying, it's just the rain, also, you're a bastard, you know that? I told you that I didn't want Asia to have chakra, Naruto stated to his tailed beast, who snorted, of course, Kurama knew that Naruto was very thankful for what he did, I can't sense any chakra in the area though, did you say her chakra vanished? Naruto started to building hop towards the general direction that he believed Asia would be in. His wife decided on that name before their baby was born. My chakra in her vanished, I had to use all of my chakra in her to keep her alive, whatever chakra she had should be gone, anyway, your daughter was born with something that absorbed her chakra, Kurama noted for Naruto, who raised an eyebrow in surprise, actual surprise that his child was born with something that absorbed her chakra. A sacred gear, Naruto whispered when he realized what she had inside of her. Hard left, two miles that way, Kurama informed Naruto, and Naruto made a hard left, before he started to run towards the direction Kurama pointed out, 
Naruto looked and saw a church, one of the orphanages that were run by the Vatican. Naruto's speed allowed him to cross the two-mile gap near instantly. Even while holding a baby gently in his arms, Naruto softly landed on top of the orphanage, knowing that he was going to have to go in there and take his daughter back. Bah? She woke up. Well, at least Asia will have a friend growing up, Naruto mentioned to himself as he jumped to the ground and started to walk towards the church entrance to go and get his daughter. What are you going to do to Orochimaru? Kurama asked Naruto, and Naruto sighed. Yeah, that was a problem. I can still talk with the other tailed beasts using their chakra in me. Orochimaru is about to deal with eight very pissed off tailed beasts. I am going to ask them to destroy all of his labs, remind him not to with me. Naruto spoke threateningly, knowing for a fact that Orochimaru was watching him. With Orochimaru, I might have messed up. Orochimaru winced when he realized that he had accidentally caused Naruto's wife's death with his actions. That meant that Naruto was going to turn the tailed beasts against him, which would mean that he would indeed be losing thousands of years of research and all of the creations he had developed. Naruto didn't make threats, he made promises, there is somebody on Genbu. Two people, though I don't recognize one of them, Naruto thought to himself as he blocked a large sword with one glowing finger. Only his finger glowing yellow with chakra, Naruto deflected the sword strike away from himself, before he poked an 11 year old Xenovia in the forehead with his pinky knocking her off her feet and onto her butt, come on Xenovia, you said you wanted to learn to use a sword, you'll never be able to use that sword at this rate, that barely had any strength to it, Naruto stated to the small child. The Kabikirabocho, the decapitating carving knife. After the hidden mist village disbanded their shinobi force, the seven swords were gifted to the hidden leaf village so that they could be put to use, though nobody ever really had an affinity for them, Naruto just ended up sealing them away into a scroll, he had managed to get a toad to get the scroll for him, and summoned the scroll back with the toad. Why? Xenovia wanted to train, she had wanted to learn how to use a sword, after she saw Naruto practicing with a sword to keep his skills sharp, he rarely ever used a sword, and the only sword he ever used was his rival's sword, a sword capable of cutting through nearly anything, and could cut through anything when enhanced with wind or lightning chakra. This sword, is so, heavy, Xenovia's small arms were barely even able to lift the sword off the ground without the held of two gauntlets that were on top of her hands. Naruto gave her a choice of swords, he let her chose any one of the seven swords in his possession, and when she chose one of the heaviest blades, he knew that she would need help just to use it and train with it, so he gave her both of his twice criticals when she started to train, he hoped that they would help increase her strength, allowing her to use the sword, while also training her stamina. The twice critical had both turned blue, like her hair, when they bonded to her soul, they were small gauntlets that covered only the tops of her hands, without covering her fingers or wrists, they each had small green gems on them, much like Xenovia's mother's hair in color. When used together, it increased her power by four times her usual power, but at the cost of consuming four times her stamina. You can do it Xenovia, I believe in you. Asia cheered Xenovia on from the sidelines, Naruto smiled and waved at his daughter, who smiled and waved back at him. Raw. Naruto blocked Xenovia's surprise attack with ease, and flicked her in the forehead, knocking her off of her feet again. The sword stabbed into the ground next to her, and she collapsed onto her back covered in sweat, her left twice critical vanished into her body, before she looked at her hand, and made the right twice critical vanish along with it, they were only tools to help her use the sword she had chosen correctly. That was better, but you're still too weak to use this sword properly, well need to work on increasing your base strength more, your movements are way too sluggish, Asia, come and heal her, Naruto spoke to Asia, who got up and started to run over to Xenovia. Xenovia only had a few scrapes and bruises, with the scrapes being mostly on her palms from her lack of resistance to using the sword. Asia's hands glowed green, and she placed her hands over the top of Xenovia's, the scrapes on Xenovia's hands growing smaller as she was healed. Asia hated fighting, in that aspect of life, she was very much different than Naruto himself, and even all of Naruto's other children. Naruto enjoyed a good fight, and he enjoyed training himself and others to fight. Asia hated seeing people get hurt. Now that was something she had in common with him, so she actually refused his training when he offered it to her, she didn't want to learn how to hurt people, she only wanted to learn how to help people. It was her choice to make, when Asia is done healing you. I want you to take this rock, and carry it down the mountain. Then wash it at the falls of truth, before carrying it back up the mountain. Naruto spoke as he showed a rock that was about a foot wide underneath his foot, it was a very basic strength training, she would carry the rock down the mountain training her stamina and muscles, before she would bathe the rock in the waterfall, training her patience and resolve, then having to carry it back up the mountain would once more train her stamina and strength. Yes master, 
Zenovia nodded her head in understanding. Asia, go with her and heal her if she gets hurt, Naruto told his daughter. The island was safe for them, while the animals of the island were hostile to any unwelcome guests, those who lived on the mountain would find them to be kind and gentle giants, Naruto had spent years upon years taming the animals to not attack anyone who was a regular on the island, somebody who lived on the island that was, Asia and Zenovia wouldn't have to worry about being attacked by any of the animals, meaning he wouldn't have to worry about them getting themselves into too much trouble. I can do it on my own master, Zenovia spoke stubbornly, and Naruto sighed, before he nodded his head. Fine, I don't know where you get this stubbornness from, but it's your choice, Asia, go and do your chores, Naruto, when his child was seven years old, had her doing chores to teach her discipline and the value of hard work, even if she didn't want to train to grow stronger, she was still going to be learning a system of values, he wouldn't have anyone he spent time raising to become a lazy slacker, Shikamaru you will be missed but damn were you lazy, like some of his old friends. Asia ran over to Naruto and gave him a hug, yes papa. Naruto gave a goofy smile as he rubbed the top of her head, with her hugging his thigh so happily, she reminded him a lot of a young Himawari, always free with hugs and genuinely a happy child. I am going to start now, Zenovia stated as she went over to the rock, and leaned down to pick it up. She's starting to develop early, she might start puberty soon. Naruto thought to himself as he looked at her, he had noticed her breasts had started to bud, and her hips had started to get a little bigger as of late, that just meant that since she was human, he was going to need to start picking up feminine health supplies, with Shironeko, since she was a yukai, she didn't do things like have periods, with two human girls that was different though, they didn't have mating seasons, instead they would have periods. He was going to need to give Xenovia and Asia a talk about their changing bodies soon, not something he wanted to do to be honest. He missed Orem, this would have been her job, Lilith, appears. Lilith appeared from behind Naruto, and she bumped her head against the side of Naruto's hip, Asia and Xenovia both had already reached Lilith's height, so sometimes it was easy to think that Asia or Xenovia were bumping his waist, they were both on the clumsy side of things, with their bodies growing, and them not being used to moving growing limbs it was to be expected they would trip sometimes. Need something Lilith? Naruto asked the greedy dragon god, who had been silent as of the last few months. Lilith didn't say anything, and just stood next to him, holding onto his jacket with one hand, she wasn't looking at him either just silently staring as Asia came with a bucket, and pulled out a damp rag, before she started to wash the wood floors of the temple. Your daughter is weak, Naruto laughed a little, well, children don't always have their parents' power, just because the parent is powerful, doesn't mean the child is going to be, Naruto mentioned without offense, even after years of maturing, the chakra inside of her body was absolutely minuscule in nature, the chakra suppression seals that he had used on Orem while Asia was in the womb had done their job well, suppressing her chakra while she was still developing. Of course, if he had known she was going to be born with twilight healing as a sacred gear, he wouldn't have done that. Those with sacred gears were cursed, if he had known about her having a sacred gear, he wouldn't have suppressed her chakra in the womb, he would have let it grow, so that she would be able to mix her chakra with her sacred gear, and protect herself better in the future. Lilith and Master's child would be powerful, Lilith pointed out to Naruto, trying to be subtle with what she wanted. Naruto raised an eyebrow, I suppose if we had a child. They would be pretty powerful, but how powerful a child is should never matter to a parent. Naruto lectured his student on the subject of parenthood, a good parent never forced strength as a path in life onto their child, if the child didn't want to become powerful, that was completely up to them, forcing a child to train should only be something reserved to when you knew their life was going to be in danger, I am happy, as long as Asia is happy, God knows it's about time somebody with Uzumaki blood had a happy childhood, Naruto mentioned with a deadpan. As much as he wished he could say his first two children had perfectly happy childhoods, he wasn't going to lie, they had great childhoods, but not without their own hardships he pushed onto them, he was rarely ever able to be home once he became Hokage, and he knew his children had always wished he would be home more often, he had a duty to his village, and he had pushed a sacrifice on them because of it. That girl, has powerful light in her body, Lilith pointed out, mentioning Xenovia, and Naruto raised an eyebrow. Really? You didn't mention this before now? Naruto asked her with a raised eyebrow, considering the fact he would have been able to give her a sword that would be much better suited to her than one of the seven swords of the mist, he had a holy sword in his possession that he could have given to her. He literally had a sword that was gifted to him by God as thanks for something that he helped the church with in the past. Of course, it wasn't like he ever wanted to use the sword himself. He had a vast, and growing, collection of things that he had that he had no use for, and never really planned on using, 
he was even given things by multiple factions that they wished to remain protected, the safest place in the world was considered to be with him, since only a fool would try to launch an attack on Sage Mountain to steal objects from him. Not important before, Lilith answered, no hesitation at all, about how unimportant Xenovia's potential was. What changed? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Sacred gears, Lilith would admit that even though the twice critical was a very weak sacred gear, it was still a sacred gear, the fact that Xenovia had been gifted two of them increased her maximum strength by four times what it should be, if she grew to be powerful, then they would be even better weapons for her to use. Naruto nodded, he didn't want Xenovia to become reliant on the twice criticals she had, he was going to have to teach her that in the future, but right now she would not be able to train without using them, he didn't want her to become reliant on the holy sword either, so it would be best for him to make sure that waited until she had finished learning how to use a sword correctly before he started to teach her how to use a holy sword. It's like she has a weaker boosted gear, only capable of two boosts, still, she doesn't have the 10 second time limit, if she unlocks both of their balance breakers, I wonder how powerful they would become. Naruto wondered with a slight smile on his face, the twice critical's balance breaker had never really been seen before, because no twice critical user had ever become powerful enough, or even needed to really unlock their balance breaker. Of course, Naruto did know where was a subspecies twice critical, and the user of the subspecies twice critical did unlock his balance breaker already. Naruto yawned, covering his mouth, he was a little tired, Xenovia and Asia had snuck into his bed during the night, again, and Xenovia kept kicking him in the face in her sleep, that girl had the world's most horrible sleeping posture, she could go from sleeping normally, to sleeping upside down with her ass in your face, to kicking a person off of the bed. Sleep with Lilith, nah, I am fine, not the first time I've gone a night without sleep, Naruto waved his hand in refusal, he was thankful for her concern though. Mate with Lilith, I am more concerned about raising Asia, and training Xenovia, than finding a lover right now, maybe when they are older, Naruto didn't say no to her, but he didn't say yes either, Naruto had nothing against Lilith, and he would be willing to give her a chance, but not at the moment, he was a father to Asia, and he was doing the duty given to him by Xenovia's mother and raising her, he had other things that were more important to him than going back into the dating world. Lilith looked up at Naruto, before she gave her puffed out, neutral faced, pout to try and get him to have with her anyway. He always caved so easily to pouting faces, just not this time. Seems like Shironeko has gotten herself killed, if her daughter is here without her, and with another child, Kurama pointed out to Naruto, who nodded his head in agreement, he hadn't been able to sense Shironeko for over three years, while he had been able to sense Kuroka, and another young girl that had the same general aura as Shironeko, it was pretty easy for him to tell that the Nekosho had gotten killed, or at least died from something, are you going to greet them? Kurama questioned Naruto, Naruto shrugged, Kuroka knows that anyone seeking this place has to climb the mountain, if she wants to come see me, she has to climb the mountain Naruto was interrupted by his tailed beast. The mountain has stairs now, Kurama pointed out, since before there were stone stairs, and now Naruto had finally gotten around to making wooden stairs for the mountain, now the journey up the mountain was easy for something you actually noticed, and used, the stairs, of course, it was still climbing the world's tallest mountain, even with stairs it took effort to do. Training at high heights increased the effectiveness of the training allowing those who trained on the mountain to become even stronger, even faster. Kuroka doesn't know that, Naruto mentioned with a grin. Kuroka knew about the stone stairs, stairs that he destroyed and replaced with wooden stairs in a better location, a safer location so that Asia could walk up and down the mountain safely, since his daughter wasn't going to train, he wasn't going to force her to go up and down stone stairs whenever she wanted to spend time in the forest. You're just as bad as Kakashi, Kurama pointed out dully. Naruto stuck his tongue out and made a peace sign. With Xenovia this stone is so heavy, Xenovia carried the stone on her back, arms behind her back, as she walked down the stairs, the stone was less heavy than the sword, a sword made from a very heavy metal in general, but at least she could carry the stone without using her twice criticals, unlike the sword, not that she could afford to use them, since they drained on her stamina, meaning she might run out of stamina before getting to the bottom of the mountain. As she walked down the mountain though, she always did find it was easier to breath, and her body was always so much more energetic than when she was on top of the mountain, it was like the air was so much better the lower she got, so even though she was walking, she actually felt her stamina recovering a little as she walked, though she was using that stamina at the same time. She was going to make Naruto proud by mastering the giant sword he was giving to her. The awesome giant sword, no, she would master all seven of the swords. Then maybe he will see me like a lady, instead of a kid. 
Zenovia spoke to herself as she changed the position of the stone to in front of her stomach, when it started to hurt her back, she had a long way to go down the mountain, even with the stairs it would take her at least a full hour, minimum, to make it down, then it would take another 40 or so minutes to walk all the way to the Falls of Truth, she was looking at spending the rest of the day getting to the falls, and then getting back to the top of the mountain. She wondered why going down the mountain made her feel stronger. Location. Not Sage Mountain mind your manners, listen to everything your grandfather tells you. And be respectful to him, my father is a kind man. But he will punish you if you misbehave, let me tell you. When he spanks you, it will leave a mark, Yasaka spoke to her young, nine-year-old, daughter with a tone showing that she was being completely serious about this, she couldn't leave Kyoto because she was the leader of the Yukai faction located there, and she had too much a connection to certain things in the place to leave, her daughter was just getting old enough, by Kiyubi standards, to start traveling and learning about the world. So Yusaka had the idea to send her daughter on a trip to go and meet with her grandparent, seeing as the young girl had never met her maternal grandfather before, it was time for her to go and meet the man. Kuno was a mini clone of her when she was young, looking almost exactly like she did when she first met her father, only her cheeks were more chubby, seeing as she was always fed three meals a day, and was on the spoiled side. Yes Ka Sama, I'll be respectful to Oji Chan, Kuno spoke with a bowed head to her mother. Soku, please travel with Kuno and help her get to Sage Mountain safely, she's never been there, and I hear that dangerous creatures live there. Yusaka spoke to her attendant, her right hand woman, the woman who helped her turn the village of Yukai into what could amount to a hidden Yukai kingdom. She had been her chief advisor for years and years, as well as her own personal shinobi to send out and take care of business she herself couldn't waste time on. Hinoko shook her head, I believe she should make the trip alone, for her own growth, the trip is a difficult one, but she won't reap its rewards if I am there, Hinoko spoke as she ignored the order. Yeah, she could do that, Yusaka looked down and considered those words, frowning a little at the thought of putting her daughter in danger. I see, I don't like it. But if you think this is what is best for her growth I will take your advice, Kuno, Sage Mountain will be coming close to the coast of Japan tomorrow, if you head out now, you should make it there when it gets here, Yusaka spoke to her growing daughter, she wanted her daughter to spend a few years with her grandfather, learning under the man, and just getting to know her own family. She had her best senjutsu user always keeping track of where Sage Mountain was, and where it was going to be. She liked knowing where she could find her father if she needed him for something. It'll come back strong. Kuno promised her mother, who smiled gently down at her. This isn't just a training trip, I want you to spend time with your grandfather, I want you to get to know him, when you see him, give this letter to him, Yusaka pulled a small envelope out of her sleeve, and gave it to her young daughter, the letter was pink, and covered with pictures of small yellow foxes, Kuno put it in her own oversized sleeve, before she bowed to her mother. She got up, before she started to run out of the room. Don't worry, she'll be fine, I understand she is your first child. But she is a Kiyubi just like you, she's strong enough to make the trip to Sage Mountain, though, she isn't as developed as you were at her age, Hinoko spoke slightly teasingly, Yusaka groaned and palmed her forehead, since when she was her daughter's age, she was already starting to show signs of growing up, she had already had a, what was now known as, C-cup chest size, her daughter was tiny in all aspects of the word tiny. She was afraid that her daughter wouldn't be strong enough, that her power wasn't matured enough for her to make the journey. Sometimes I forget you were a mother, is this what it feels like when you let them leave? Yusaka asked and Hinoko nodded. As heartbreaking as it is to watch them go, a child can't truly experience the world through the walls of a cage, Yukai become adults faster than humans, you should have known she would want to explore the world, just be happy for her, and wait for her to come back, a child always needs their parents, no matter how old they become, Hinoko spoke from experience, and truly comforted Yusaka, Yusaka smiled softly, and leaned back a little, using her own tails as a cushion to fall back on. Yusaka didn't know what she would do without Hinoko there with her. Hinoko was there for her when she lost her first mate to old age, and the woman had been by her side through the deaths of all of the men and women that she had mated with, and then lost to the ravages of time. Yusaka believed in the words her father said, that just because you would live longer than your loved ones, didn't mean that you should fear loving people, you should just appreciate the time you got to spend with them, and always carry their memory in your heart. Of course, she still mourned the loss of her loves each time she lost one, something Hinoko was always there to help her with. I hope Tu Chan isn't upset, Yusaka spoke, her fox ears dropping a little. She never did send him a message that he had a grandchild, so sending her child to go meet him without any warnings might be a little, rude of her to say the least. Oh well, this would be a nice little prank on her father. Ow, 
Naruto groaned when he was kicked out of his sleep by a small foot hitting him in the face. Naruto knew the couplet right away. One of the few people who actually snuck into his bed at night. Naruto could see Zenovia's foot against his cheek, and he could see her sleeping upside down on his chest. I feel too many people. Naruto noted when a raised eyebrow, since he was feeling too many people against his body. He could feel Zenovia's head on his stomach, and her butt on his chest. There was one person there. He could feel his daughter's body hugged to his ribs, with her hand underneath Zenovia, on his stomach. That was two people there. He could feel Lilith with her body wrapped around his right arm, which added up to three bodies, though it was already strange a person who didn't need sleep was sleeping on his arm. Three bodies was what was kind of normal, then it got weird. He looked down at his other side, and saw a small Nekosho holding onto his ribs with her other hand against his chest. She looked just like a miniature version of Shironeko actually, just like her all the way down to her lithe body, that was four bodies, and the number was still increasing. He saw Kuroka, and she had grown into a lovely teenager to be sure, she would have had to be about 15 or 16 now, and her body showed it, gone was the runty little five-year-old, and replacing her was a well-developed young adult, her body had trimmed up, before gaining a full hourglass figure, huge breasts and large hips being added onto what was once a childish frame, she was only a little taller than five foot maybe, and was barely wearing clothes. Five bodies hugged to him, then there was the last person, a small girl about the same age as the small white-haired Nekosho, a Kiyubi if her nine tails were anything to judge by, a mini Yusaka, who looked like her mother did when she was younger, only more petite, he could remember that by the age of nine Yusaka had already started developing her body for seduction. I went to bed by myself, and woke up surrounded by girls, looks like Kuroka and her, sister are pretty beaten up, the same with the tiny Kiyubi, ill let them sleep a little longer, Naruto noted that the Kuroka and the two unknowns were beaten up, covered in scuffs and bruises, they all looked like they had made a long journey to get to Sage Mountain, so before he woke everyone up and started asking questions, he might as well let them sleep a little bit longer. Then he would demand a few answers, morning Naruto sama Nian, Kuroka slyly opened up her eye, having heard him talking in her sleep, and woken up. Naruto gently pulled his arm away from Lilith and picked Zenovia up off his chest, and shifted around, he placed Zenovia down on his bed, and Asia went to hug the girl in her sleep, missing his warmth, Naruto placed Lilith down off his arm, and he moved the little Nekosho towards Zenovia, before he moved the little Kiyubi into the mix, Naruto stood up and gestured for Kuroka to follow him. Kuroka pouted at him, before she shifted into a standing position, and followed him as he started his way out of his room, when she walked out of the room, he closed the door behind her, and simply raised an eyebrow. He silently stared at her, I am back for training Nian. Kuroka spoke to him, trying to semi-lie to him, and he simply crossed his arms. What killed her? Naruto asked Kuroka, who winced at the blunt way he said that. She smiled sheepishly, seeing as she should have figured he knew her personality too well to lie to him, Naruto had guessed correctly that Shironeko was dead the second he saw the way that Kuroka reacted to that, the fact you have this Naruto flicked the bell that Kuroka had tied to her hair, and he cracked the door to his open, and gestured to the small bell that the small Nekosho had in her hair, and she has that, are proof that she isn't alive anymore, so how did she die? Naruto asked the once resident of Sage Mountain, not even a welcome home hug Nian. Kuroka asked as she extended her arms for him. Naruto chopped the top of her head, okay, you don't want to talk about Shironeko. So tell me this, what brings you here with the Kaneko-chan, translation? Little kitten, Naruto asked, since he didn't know the name of the girl, he just used a nickname for her, she was a little Nekosho, and thus a little kitten, Kaneko Chan would fit for her until Kuroka told him her real name, she's obviously your sister, looks like the spitting image of your mother, Naruto pointed out with a small smile. Shironeko was beautiful, so the little girl would no doubt grow up to be quite the beauty herself, not to mention Kuroka had grown into a beautiful young woman. She's Sharon, we didn't have anywhere to go, I lived here when Ka Chan was training under you, if I train under you here, can she stay too Nian? Kuroka asked Naruto gentle eyes gazing at her sleeping sister, she had remembered her home, the place that she had been born, when her mother died, she had waited a little bit for her sister to stop mourning their mother, before she started their journey towards Sage Mountain, she really hoped that Naruto would allow Sharon to stay, and give her a home. Naruto glanced at Sharon, and at Kuroka, she can stay, but if she isn't going to train, she is going to do chores, nobody stays here for free, she's old enough to do a little work, Naruto stated to Kuroka, who nodded her head furiously in agreement. If that was what it took to get Naruto to let them stay, then she would gladly put her sister to work on doing some light chores. Kuroka reached up into her hair, 
and she untied the bell from it, before she reached out to give it back to Naruto. Here, this is yours Nian, Kuroka tried, and failed, to give him back the bell when he closed her fingers around it. No, it's your mother's bell, if she wanted you to have it, then it's yours now, she earned it, I don't see a reason her daughters can't wear them, you've really grown up, to think just yesterday you were this tall. Naruto spoke with a teasing smile as he wiggled his knee, the last time he saw her, she just barely came up to his knee, and now she was tall enough to reach the middle of his chest, do you know who that one is? Naruto asked as he gestured to the fox child. That's Yusaka Sama's daughter, I think Nian, Kuroka wasn't too sure, the girl wasn't in the room when she snuck into Naruto's bed, she must had gotten to Sage Mountain after she and her sister did, and snuck into the room after everyone was already asleep, she did know a little bit about what was happening in the Yukai world like Yusaka having a daughter. Naruto frowned a little. Why was he just now hearing that he had a grandchild? He could have been spoiling her this entire time if he had known about her, he would have taken time out of his life and gone to visit the girl if he had known he had such a little cute grandchild. Ha 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 ha. That's a pretty good one. Yusaka pranked me. Naruto realized that Yusaka hadn't sent him a message on purpose. There was on way the daughter he raised would be so inconsiderate unless she was doing it on purpose for fun. Naruto raised a hand up and in a puff of smoke a shadow clone appeared, start making breakfast, come with me Kuroka, before you start your sage training, we're going to purify your body, Naruto gestured for Kuroka to follow him as he started to walk away. I am a virgin Nian, Kuroka deadpanned at him, and Naruto sighed in a little annoyance that she took that the wrong way, what? Kuroka asked Naruto, and he palmed his forehead at her. Just follow me, how have you been surviving without your mother? Tell me about how you've been. Naruto stated to her as she followed him down one of the hallways she was never allowed to go down as a child, she saw pictures of some of Naruto's other students who had come to Sage Mountain, and she even saw students that Naruto trained before Sage Mountain, of course most of those ones were paintings of the students. She saw some pretty legendary figures, those who wielded holy swords, demonic swords, sacred gears, she saw powerful yukai, and she could see legendary humans, she saw a picture of her mother as well, with the bells in her hair. It was a dimly lit hallway, it's been pretty hard, I seduced men into dropping their guard, so I could steal from them, it's been good though, I've had Sharon Nian, Kuroka spoke with some thoughts towards her sister, I've missed this place, Kuroka admit to him with her tone dropping, she really did miss her birthplace. She had been born on Sage Mountain, and spent the first five years of her life here, watching her mother master the legendary sage mode, the Toad Senjutsu. You were always a curious kitten. I don't remember how many times I had to stop you from coming down here, Naruto stated to her, and she watched as Naruto pressed his foot up against the wall, and pushed it in, a hidden door was opened up, showing a ladder that went down into a hole, I have a secret hidden, only those who are going to partake in sage training can come down here, Naruto stated, and Kuroka walked towards the ladder, grabbed it, and began to climb down. She couldn't see the bottom from the top of it, so she was actually afraid of what she was going to find hidden at the bottom of it. He kept dangerous items in his room to protect them, who knows what kind of super dangerous stuff he kept hidden. So what did you mean by purify? Kuroka asked after a ten minute silence of just her and him climbing down deep into the mountain. Purify you of course, Genbu's back is sensitive to what is on it. He has giant animals on it, so the plants on his back grow giant. I can sense powerful traces of the devil realm on you, it would be best if devil realm plants didn't start growing here. Naruto explained to her rather simply, Jembu grew on his back whatever matched with what was living on his back, Jembu's chakra reacted to what was on it, he survived by living off the chakra and energies of those who lived on him, since he was the size of an island, if he ate normal food he would simply cause the world to suffer starvation. He knew there were plenty of strange and perverted plants in the devil realm. Tentacle rape plants, flowers that produced living slime that ate clothing and survived off of women's bodily fluids, boob dragon plants. What is he big deal with that Nian? Kuroka asked when her foot reached solid ground. Was it hot, or just her? The other animals on the island have huge bodies, which cause everything to grow huge, now imagine a plant from the devil realm, but 100 times bigger than it should be. Naruto gave her the simple explanation, his feet touched the ground next, and he placed his hand up against the wall. Kuroka saw Naruto's hand light up golden, before his chakra was absorbed into the wall. A crystal ball in the room lit up absorbing his chakra and using it to power the ball, lighting up the room. Okay, it wasn't just her, a hot springs, but isn't there a hot springs up there Nian? Kuroka asked as she gestured up to where they came from, she knew that there were hot springs all over Genbu, 
and there was a hot springs that helped restore stamina on the training grounds, she had bathed in it all the time as a child. It was one of her favorite places to take a bath. She saw Naruto take off his shirt, since he was only in a shirt and his boxers, he had been sleeping before this, when he stepped in the water, she saw that it only came up to his knee, he sat down in the water, so that the water was at chest level with him. The small amount of energy you give off normally wouldn't affect Genbu enough to make drastic changes. But when you start learning to use Sage Mode, then Genbu will start taking more potent amounts of energy from you, I made this water by mixing it together with toad oil, and I placed this pool so deep into the mountain to simulate where toad oil came from, Naruto allowed his chakra to flow out of his body visibly, and into the water around him, Kuroka saw with a content expression on her face as the warm chakra flowed over her body. She smiled at Naruto, I am just wearing a white kimono, if I take this off, it'll be naked, and you'll see my soft, supple, body Nian, Kuroka attempted to tease Naruto. I am sure you're very why, now get in the water, Naruto told her with a blank look, he was sure that she had a very why body, he could see that she had developed earlier, she looked like she could pass for her late teens after all, this will also help protect you from the malice, this water in bathed in my chakra as well, Naruto told her, Kuroka nodded and shrugged off her kimono. Indeed, she was naked, you know, I am one of the last few Nekosho, if you were to, bend me over the edge of the pool and take me, Nian, Kuroka stepped in the water, she put a seductive sway to her hips as she moved, Naruto raised an eyebrow at the way she was speaking, it's my, duty to preserve my race, Kuroka hinted as she lowered herself into the water, her large breasts floating on the surface. She had very well balanced breasts, perfect skin, with a very light pink color to the tips of them, her nipples small, while the puffy are really, but not oversized. Cross your legs, and let the chakra go into your body, I am going to use this water to sink our chakra, and then I am going to pull out everything bad inside of your chakra. Naruto directed her as he took up a meditative position, he ignored her trying to seduce him, since he knew that she was like her mother that way. Kuroka copied his position and crossed her legs, he tails waving around in the water softly. She looked at his body, I wasn't lying, I had a very large crush on you as a child. You are the strongest man I know, if I have a child with you. I am sure my race would flourish again, I wanted to marry you when I was a little girl, Kuroka made idle conversation with him, she smiled up at him, since with them both sitting down, he had a good amount of height on her again, it's part of the reason why I came back, I knew you would never turn me away, of course, I don't care about something stupid like marriage now, that's a dumb human tradition Nian, Kuroka admitted that she had some stupid thoughts as a child. Why get married, just make the person your mate, and that would settle it. She didn't understand humans, your mother once asked me to give her children, and it'll give you the same answer, Naruto stated to her as he looked down into her golden eyes, she looked at him with anticipation, wondering what his answer to her mother was. What did he tell her? Ka Chan asked you this. Kuroka asked, and Naruto nodded his head. Kuroka felt the chakra enter her body, and she relaxed into it, she could feel his chakra connecting to her chakra, and she could feel his heart touching her own heart through it, she gave a soft moan when she felt the purity of his chakra, the sunny warmth it had to it, how it softly held her, like a warm blanket. Naruto simply nodded, don't decide who you want to have children with, based on how strong they are, if you want to have children with somebody, do it because that is the person you want to have children with, don't make it about strength though, Naruto gave his only advice to her on the subject, just because the parent is strong, doesn't mean the child will be, strength is not something that is promised, Naruto lectured her, and she frowned a small bit. That wasn't what she heard from everyone in the devil realm. There, everyone was so sure that strong parents made a strong child, she heard of nobles marrying their children off to strong families, to increase their own family's strength and nobility. You don't see me as a woman, do you? Kuroka asked him, and he laughed a little bit. Of course I do, look at you. You aren't the child I remember anymore, you've experienced life now, you've had a sister who depended on you, I just want you to think about your choices before you make them, Naruto told her as he looked up and down her body, her body was nearly fully matured, there was no way he could look at her as a baby girl anymore not when she wasn't his child. Kuroka moved through the water towards him, she smiled as she stopped near his face. You know, when Tu Chan died, Ka Chan wanted to come back to Sage Mountain and be with you again, she told me stories about before I was born, I am sorry about your wife Nian, Kuroka could tell the small blonde child was Naruto's, she could smell a grown woman on him though, and could easily put two and two together since she did remember him being married as a child. She just never met his wife, Naruto smiled at her, and he put his hand over her heart. Don't be. I see Orem whenever I look into Asia's eyes, anyway, 
The people who love us never leave us, even now, your mother is right here, right in your heart, you never got to mourn her, did you? Naruto asked her, Kuroka felt a tightness in her chest, Naruto's question rang inside of her. No, she didn't, she had Sharon to look after, so she never got the chance to mourn her mother, she had to remain strong for her sister, she had to be playful and happy for her, so that Sharon could smile for her, she looked at Naruto as he wrapped his arms around her, and she leaned forward, and wrapped her arms around him, she could feel his breasts press up against his chest, smooshing them against him. She relaxed into his embrace, Ka Chan told me to be strong for her. Crying doesn't make you weak, when my wife died, I cried, when my friends die, I cry, I don't ever want there to be a day when I stop crying when I lose somebody, Naruto could feel parts of his chest not in the water getting wet slowly, he could feel her tears, but she wasn't sobbing, she was just hugging him, and gently letting her tears fall, she was gracefully mourning her mother. Instead of crying her eyes out, she was the type to mourn silently. Naruto didn't mention that he was done purifying her chakra. He would let her have this, one hour later who are you? Zenovia shouted as she pointed towards Sharon, who was rubbing her eyes, starting to wake up thanks to the shout from Zenovia. Wah! Sharon wasn't fully awake. What's going on? Asia mumbled as she was roused from her sleep as well, she stretched out, and looked around for her father, Papa. Asia asked after a moment, realizing that he wasn't there. Shut up, Kuno mumbled, going right back to curling up into a ball, wrapping her tails around herself, she rubbed her eyes though when she realized that her big source of warmth, her grandfather, wasn't there, she had wanted to greet him when he woke up, giving him a nice surprise, but she ended up falling asleep on top of him. I don't know who you were either, Lilith, intruders, Zenovia shouted at Lilith, who woke up a little, looked at Sharon and Kuno. Lilith doesn't care, not Lilith's problem, deal with it yourself, Lilith bluntly stated to Zenovia as she stood up, now fully awake, and started to walk towards the door, she was going to go find Naruto and convince him to mate with her before all of the children got in the way of her goal again. Zenovia activated both of her twice criticals and got ready for a fight. Sharon laid back down and took a nap again, Zenovia, power down right now, Sharon, wake up, Kuroka is waiting for you, Asia, Zenovia, we have guests, Naruto walked in the room, the real Naruto, as he walked towards Zenovia and bopped her on the head, Asia ran towards him, she was very open with hugs, and hugged his leg, Naruto rubbed the top of her head, before he flipped Sharon over with his foot. Wah! It's time for breakfast, that goes for you too tiny, Naruto grabbed the back of Kuna's collar, and picked her up, she stuck her tongue out at him, and he flicked her in the nose, so what is my grandchild's name? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow at the little shit he was holding. She grinned, Kuno. Well Kuno, you stink. Go take a bath in the hot springs outside, and then you can join everyone for breakfast, Naruto ordered as he dropped her down on her feet, when nobody did what he was telling them, he clapped his hands together loudly, and they jumped to go do what they needed to do. Naruto laughed to himself when he saw them running. Time to start planning Kuroka's training, Lilith has never seen Master use a sword before. Lilith couldn't help but think when she saw Naruto standing with a sword in his hand across from Zenovia and Kuroka, of course, she knew the reason why she would never usually see him using a sword, it wasn't the fact that he could block swords with his body without harm, but more along the fact that it was far easier for him to just defeat opponents by slamming his power against them. Normally Naruto would train either Zenovia, Lilith, or Kuroka separately when he trained anyone, or he would leave shadow clones with the different people. Today, he was training both Kuroka and Zenovia, to think, just yesterday you couldn't even hold that sword properly. Naruto spoke as he looked at Zenovia holding her sword with one hand, despite its size, she had certainly grown strong enough, and now a 15-year-old girl, she had gained the strength through training she needed to hold the sword without using both hands, or using her twice criticals. Both Zenovia and Kuroka gulped, he was calm, that wasn't good. He hadn't told them the lesson they were learning for the day either, which was not something he usually did, usually he told them what they were learning for the day, but not today, he just told them that they would figure out the lesson on their own while he was teaching it to them. They were going to need a lot of healing after this. Go Ji Chan. Kuno cheered on her grandfather from the sidelines. Go Oni Chan. Sharon cheered on her sister instead, her shout got a glare from Kuno, while Asia sat down between the younger girls, she didn't cheer for anyone, because she already knew the outcome, she was just there, because her father today heard that her healing would be needed now more than it ever was. Lilith watched with narrowed eyes, it was that lesson. She remembered experiencing that lesson one day, the only day he didn't explain what he was teaching her. A lesson in fear, come at me like you're going to kill me. 
both of you, because if you don't, I can promise you will survive this lesson, Naruto stated as he started to walk towards them, the tip of his sword scraping the ground, Kuroka gulped and placed her hands together, charging up her chakra inside of her body, orange rings appeared around her eyes as she allowed natural energy to enter her body, and mix with her internal energies, Xenovia on the other hand, made both of her twice critical appear. Xenovia started to run at Naruto, both hands on her sword. She wielded better with both hands on the blade, she was stopped mid-run when Naruto ran at her, and clashed blades with her, Xenovia was stopped dead in her tracks, before she was pushed back when Naruto pushed against her, she pushed back and swung her blade towards him, but he didn't block it, instead, he stopped her in a more cruel way. He stabbed her, gah. Xenovia felt the blade pierce her arm, going completely through her forehead and coming out the other side. That's one, Naruto stated to her when she jumped back, removing the blade from her body, Naruto started to walk towards her again, before he vanished from her vision. It was the instinct that she gained from his training that let her block the next strike, she held her sword behind her back, just in time, the power behind the slice forced her to take a knee in front of him. He's not joking today, Kuroka thought, nearly done entering her incomplete sage mode. Ooh. Xenovia groaned when she felt her back get sliced twice, Naruto knocked her sword away from her back with one slice, while lighting cutting her back, before he delivered a second slice before she had time to recover and block. That's two and three, if you hold back, you're going to die Xenovia, Naruto raised a hand and caught Kuroka's punch when she launched into combat, Naruto gripped her fist, before he yanked her down, her face smashed into the ground, before he stomped on her throat and pushed her face deeper into the dirt, Xenovia spun around and slashed at Naruto with a wide slash. She didn't see the slashes that hit her, all she knew was that his sword wasn't in her hand anymore, and blood erupted from her body in several places that were now hurting. Goo, ga. Kuroka and Xenovia shouted, Kuroka when Naruto kicked her in the face and knocked her against Xenovia, the two girls going flying across the training grounds, sliding across the ground, before coming to a stop dozens of meter away, Xenovia's sword stabbed into the ground between them, Naruto and Xenovia, while Naruto swung his sword and got her blood off of it. 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, Naruto told her, explaining just how many times that she had been lightly cut right then. Kuroka coughed, her face already bruising from the kick, while Xenovia looked at the slashes on her body. She didn't even see his attacks, unreal, I didn't know he was so good with a sword, Xenovia thought to herself as she stood back up, Kuroka joining her, Kuroka held two blue spheres in her hands, getting ready to throw them at Naruto. Nope. Naruto created a Rasengan in his hand, and pointed it at Kuroka, and in one blast he shot a beam at her that she was forced to run away from, her concentration slipping and the orbs in her hands vanishing. Kiba. Xenovia shouted out as the gems on her twice criticals glowed, and she unleashed two swords that she was keeping stored inside of her sacred gears, two thin short swords appeared in her hands, each with two small spikes coming out of them, with lightning crackling over the edges. Naruto raised an eyebrow, Xenovia ran at Naruto, and without the heavy sword slowing her down. She crossed the distance between them quickly, lightning followed behind her swords as she started to wildly swing them at him, lightning flowing out of her attacks, but Naruto's sword glowed light green when Naruto flowed wind chakra over it, with a single swing of his arm, he got rid of the lightning around her, slashing it to pieces, before he blocked both of her swords with one well-placed strike. Kuroka snuck behind Naruto, and she threw an orb at him, but he reached behind himself and caught it, before he flung it back at her ten times faster than she threw it, when it hit her, she was covered in an explosion that launched her damaged body out, and against a boulder. Since when was he this strong? Kuroka managed to think as she bounced across the ground, landing on her stomach, before getting on all fours. Xenovia couldn't feel the swords in her hands anymore, but she could see them stabbed in the ground far away from her, her arms still in the air as if she were holding them, before she gained several deeper scratches on her arms. 9, 10, 11, and 12, I told you to give me everything you have, or is this all you are capable of? I even let you both come at me at once, Naruto glanced back at Kuroka as she managed to stand up, she got ready to continue fighting, before she started to create purple smoke around her, she ducked down low so that her body was hidden inside of the smoke, hiding want save you here, Naruto gave a wave of his hand, and the smoke shot off of the ground, and was absorbed into his right hand, revealing Kuroka. He didn't need to touch techniques to absorb them. He just needed to point his hand at the techniques, and he would start to absorb them. Shit. Damn it. Shit. Damn it. Kuroka thought as she stepped back away from Naruto. Stop ignoring me. Xenovia shouted as she jumped up high into the air, Kabutori. Ill smash through your defenses. 
Zenovia started to fall out of the sky with a new sword in her hands, this time the sword taking the shape of a very large axe connected with a hammer by a rope, she crashed the axe against his sword with the force of gravity aiding her, before she slammed the hammer into the axe, holding to break Naruto's sword into two. 13. A long cut appeared going from between Zenovia's collarbones, right down to her belly button, slicing her shirt open, the wound wasn't deep enough to kill her, but her grip on the kabutori weakened, Naruto smashed his fist into Kuroka's skull when she tried to get at him from the side, before he grabbed her by the hair and swung her into Zenovia, he slammed them both into the ground together. What sword can I use to get him? Zenovia thought to herself as she scrambled on all fours away from Naruto, trying to get to one of her swords. Nuabari was useless in this situation, and she was just starting to learn how to use Haramekure with her light power to replace the chakra the swords normally needed, Samahada had a mind of its own, and there was just as much a chance of it being not willing to help her, as it would be willing to provide its aid. We can't win, I have to run away, Kuroka realized as she crawled to her feet, and started to run away from Naruto as fast as she could. No, she couldn't run fast enough when her face bumped into Naruto's chest, appearing in front of her as she was running away, she froze for a second, before she stepped back and got ready to run away again. Where are you going? Are you afraid Kuroka? She was face to face with Naruto, and she jumped back, a cold sweat covering her body as she practically flew through the air with her enhanced jumping. Come on. We have to work together Kuroka, Shibuki, Zenovia called out as a very large sword appeared in her hands. The sword connected to a large scroll, the sword I self JST as long as her body, with the scroll being as thick as her body, she held the sword with both hands, and started to run towards Naruto, the scroll unraveling to show explosive notes inside of it, she didn't run in a straight line, instead she circled around Naruto, and jumped, she grabbed Kuroka out of the air and brought her to the ground. The very second she touched the ground, she let go of Kuroka and started to run towards Naruto again, this time in a straight line. She clashed bladed with him, and grunted, 14 and 15 Zenovia, your body must be starting to hurt by now, Naruto stated to her when she received two more cuts faster than she could block, she was kicked in the stomach away from Naruto, the scroll unraveling a bit more along with it, she swung the sword, and all of the unraveled sword started to go soaring towards Naruto, when it got within 10 feet of him, the explosive notes glowed. Boom the second it exploded, the paper from the scroll came out of the explosion and shot back into the scroll on the sword, reloading it for Zenovia with more of its infinite supply of regeneration explosive notes, Zenovia made a small amount of the scroll come out, and stay in place so that she could prepare a close combat explosion. We can't even touch him, Kuroka thought when Naruto walked out of the fire and flames unharmed from the explosion. They couldn't do it, whatever the test they were supposed to face was, they couldn't pass it. Kuroka. Hold him for 30 seconds. I've been working on something. I don't care how much it hurts me, I am not going to disappoint you today. Zenovia stabbed the edge of her sword into the ground when she realized that Kuroka was frozen solid, Shibuki vanished into her twice critical, as both the Kiba swords, and the Kabikirabocho blade, they all glowed, before they shot into her sacred gears. The gems glowed brightly, Naruto didn't move, she's more afraid of disappointing me than she is of pain, Naruto started to walk towards Zenovia. Of course, she wasn't without fear, when she heard the sound of Naruto's blade scraping across the ground, she winced even as she crossed both of her hands in front of her body, the gems on the twice critical glowed brighter as they came closer, Zenovia closed her eyes and took a breath, before Naruto appeared before her sword raised up. Damn it. Kuroka jumped in front of Zenovia with fear in her eyes, clapping both of her hands around the sides of the blade, preventing it from stabbing Zenovia in the shoulder, with her incomplete sage mode still active, she could slightly hold back the blade, she sensed the attack coming before it hit her, when Naruto kneed her in the center of her chest. Scared? Naruto asked Kuroka as she continued to hold onto the sword, he let go of the sword, punched her in the face, and when she let go of the sword, he caught it back in his hand. Kuroka hit the ground, recovered, and she was back in front of Zenovia trying her best to defend the girl as she charged up whatever she was charging. Balance Breaker Zenovia's arms both glowed blue, and the twice criticals changed shapes, before, they were gauntlets that only covered the tops of her hands with one gem on each, now, they were armor that covered her entire arms, tight blue armor that clung tightly to her arms, feminine armor in a way, she had green gems on both of her shoulders, on her elbows, and on her hands. Balance Breaker. Kuroka thought to herself with wide eyes as she was knocked away from Zenovia. Zenovia gave Naruto a confident look, it's not twice critical's true balance breaker, it's a bastard subspecies balance breaker, she synced up the auras of the twice critical, 
Naruto thought to himself, noting that the armor on her arms looked dragon-like in appearance. Well, twice critical was a dragon-based sacred gear. Azure Destruction Dragonar. Xenovia finished when all of the gems on her arms started to glow. It was complete, but it would have to do, she didn't have enough power to make the armor cover her entire body yet, covering her arms was all she could do at the moment, she jumped back from Naruto speed that nobody other than Naruto and Lilith could keep track of, Kuroka could sense Xenovia's movements, but she couldn't see them with her eyes. Each gem doubles your power, Naruto noticed with a nod of approval. Right now, I am 64 times more powerful than before, and this form doesn't consume my stamina. Xenovia was happy to brag if it made him proud of her, with her normal state, she could increase her power to a max of 4 times her usual power, with 6 gems on her body though, she could continue to multiply her power even further than that, with the impressive training she had received from Naruto, combined with her own impressive strength and speed, her current form was leagues above what she had just been doing. She summoned the Kabikirabocho back into her hands, wielding it with both of her hands once more. Naruto simply raised his sword up, ill admit, you've created your own version of the boosted gear scale mail, how long have you been working on this? Naruto asked, but Xenovia didn't answer his question, she launched at him, putting a crater in the ground that she left from. Kuroka rushed towards them as well, since she knew even now, Xenovia wasn't going to stand a chance alone. Those watching were almost blown away by the shockwave created when Xenovia slammed her sword against Naruto's, and when Kuroka's fist was caught by Naruto, Xenovia started to slash and slice as quickly as she could, forcing as much of her power in her strikes as she could afford. With one arm he was fending off Kuroka, while with his sword he was blocking everything that Xenovia was throwing his way. They weren't doing bad, but them doing well wasn't the point of the day's training. They had already passed the test though, Xenovia had already pushed aside her fear, and had been willing to fight an opponent leagues above her from the beginning, she didn't even need the day's training it would seem, her ability to bravely face danger was something that Naruto was surprised and pleased with, Kuroka had been frozen in fear and tried to run away, but she still tried to help Xenovia despite her fear, and that alone meant that she passed the test. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, Naruto sliced Xenovia across her stomach, against her cheek, on her thigh, on her breast, and down the left side of her ribs, as he was blocking and countering her attacks, even with 64 times her base power, she still wasn't able to completely defend against his attacks, she was able to divert them enough to make the wounds more shallow, which was a vast improvement from what she had been doing before. Now she was trying to block his attacks, Kuroka was getting punched across her body, but as she was getting punched, she started to attempt to dodge his attacks, she started to read the flow of his chakra, allowing her to try and predict his next actions, while she could predict them to some extent, she wasn't experienced enough to do much about them. I only have enough power to maintain this for a few more seconds, Xenovia tried even harder to at least cut him once before her balance breaker drained her. While boosting her power didn't decrease her stamina in this form, she still had a limited amount of time that she could use the form for, it was an incomplete form that took a lot of her power to use, the only sword she could use in her current form was the Kabikirabocho because it was the sword she trained the most with, and it was the easiest for her to use. I am almost out of sage chakra, when I am out, ill collapse from exhaustion, Kuroka could feel her time limit coming. When she moved around, she couldn't keep her mode maintained, she had to be still to keep it charged up. You know Xenovia, you're an idiot, even when completely outmatched. You are still trying your hardest, you're not letting your fear control you. And for that, you pass, Naruto's hand glowed very lightly. And he punched her in the stomach, her balance breaker ended early when she was knocked out by his attack, he just put enough power in the punch to knock her out, you Kuroka, you managed to overcome your fear with Xenovia's help, you pass, but one day you will need to overcome your fear on your own, Naruto stated as he slammed his elbow into the back of her neck, her eyes rolled into the back of her head as she hit the ground at about the same second as Xenovia. With both girls knocked out, the match was over with. Lilith clapped for Naruto, super awesome. Sharon cheered, even though Kuroka lost it had been a super fun match to watch. Kind of, she couldn't see half of the fight because of how fast they were moving, but she could see her sister being awesome in brace, protecting Xenovia from the master's attacks. Asia stood up and started to walk over towards the fallen students, she had a pout on her face as she looked at Naruto with his cloak now wrapped around his body again. Bad papa, Asia jumped up and bopped him on the head. Naruto laughed as he rubbed the top of her head, his daughter scolding him was so cute. Heal Xenovia first, she's lost a lot of blood, don't worry. The bleeding has already stopped, she's just going to be woozy for a day or two, 
Naruto told her when Kuno came and attacked herself to his leg. She was the only one who hadn't grown in the four years since she arrived, other than Lilith but Lilith didn't age. Asia had grown into a young teenager of 14 years old, even even Sharon had started to show some signs that puberty was starting in her, only Kuno hadn't really aged out of the group, the same age as Sharon, but much smaller than the girl, Naruto lifted her up and put her on his shoulder. You were super awesome Ji-chan, Kuno clung to Naruto's head, and he smiled. Being a grandfather was awesome, all of the perks of being a father, but without the responsibilities, he could spoil Kuno as much as he wanted to, because it was Yasaka's job to be the parent, he loved being a father, but being a grandfather was something the same but very different. Asia, when you're done healing them, we are all going out to eat, hum. Naruto hummed when he saw a small bat come flying onto his other shoulder. The bat had a note in its mouth that it gave to him, before it started to fly off, Naruto opened it up and started to read it. It was in English, Dear Naruto, I am calling in a favor you owe me, meet me at Kuo, Japan. Sincerely, Venalana Gremory, that name sounds super familiar to me, but why? Naruto spoke under his breath as he tried to remember where he remembered that name. The only Venalana he knew was the woman he had with a long time ago, but her name wasn't Venalana Gremory, her name was Venalana Bael. Wait, didn't he get an invitation to a wedding a long time ago? Right, Venalana had sent him a wedding invitation, but he had been busy with training Lilith, so he hadn't been able to make it, not to mention the wedding was held in the Devil Realm, and he didn't have a way to get there himself. Okay, once they are done healing, we are all going on a trip to Japan, Naruto told everyone within earshot of him. It was time to see an old, friend? Okay, now all of you be good. You can order anything you want, and no you can't have sake Kuroka, you are still too young, I am going to talk with an old friend of mine, Naruto mentioned as he stood in front of the table that had all of those who lived at Sage Mountain at it, they had made it to Kuo City with ease, he had managed to transport them quick enough to not miss his meeting with Venalana. Venalana had reserved the entire restaurant for them, and had a private booth set up for their meeting. Kuroka pouted at Naruto, she wanted sake, he was pretty sure that they couldn't cause too much trouble if they were together in a restaurant, he hoped that he could leave them all alone without getting banned somehow. You are eating with us? Asia asked her father, her cheeks puffing up. She didn't like eating meals without her father, sorry Asia, but you don't want to hear me talk about adult things, Lilith, you know what your limits are here, Naruto stated as he gave a glare to Lilith, who would order all of the sweets on the menu if she had the chance, he was limiting her to a certain amount, and she was well aware of what that limit was. Lilith nodded her head, with that, Naruto walked away towards the other end of the building, towards the more private rooms, he opened the door to the private booth he knew Venalana was in, and walked in, before closing the door behind him. There she was, but she wasn't alone, I am glad you could make it, Venalana greeted Naruto, who paused for a moment and stared at her, blinking a few times. You don't have an accent, Naruto deadpanned, and the other occupants of the room looked at Venalana with a questioning gaze, her eyes closed, cheeks puffed, turning red, when she remembered her old accent, thankfully, after years and years of the evolution of language, her accent had evolved as well, it's nice to see you again, and this is your husband. Naruto looked at the other grown man in the room. Her husband, Zeoticus Gremory, a tall man about Naruto's height, with long red hair, and bright blue eyes, he was a pale-skinned lean man, he was wearing a nice white suit, and even had a slight beard, the man smiled and stood up, extending his hand towards Naruto in a friendly manner. Zeoticus Gremory, my wife has had nothing but praises for you, I am ashamed that we haven't met before now, Zeoticus had heard plenty about Naruto from his wife over the years, he knew that the man taught her how to read and write, he also taught her plenty of other stuff that he was extremely thankful for, that other men would feel bitter about, most men would feel bitter that somebody had with their wife before they could. Not Zeoticus, because of the man in front of him, his wife was an expert at, somebody who could please him without fail every single time, sure, it took him hundreds of years to learn how to please her the same way she pleased him thanks to the way the man in front of him corrupted his wife but it was a long time ago. Naruto Uzumaki, sorry I missed your wedding, this is your daughter. Naruto asked when he looked at the other occupant of the room. She looked just like Venalana, the only difference was that she had her father's hair color and eye color, other than that, she was a perfect copy of her mother, but with slightly larger breasts, the girl couldn't be much older than his own daughter was, but she gave off an aura, and had the appearance, of a young adult. Yes, Rias, introduce yourself, don't be rude, Zeoticus spoke up and Rias stood up, giving Naruto a small bow. Hello. I am Rias Gremory, I hope that we can get along. Rias introduced herself, before she sat down, 
Naruto sat down next to her, and across from Zeoticus, since it was a four-person table. Naruto nodded to the younger girl, you can relax, I don't bite. Yes he does. Venelana corrected that statement, before she blushed bright red when she realized that she had just spoke out of turn, not to mention she revealed something that she would rather had remained hidden, the deadpan look that both Naruto and her own husband were sending her showed that they both understood what she was getting at. Zeoticus coughed into his hand, before he looked over at Naruto. I've taken the liberty of ordering sake and beer, I didn't know which you preferred, please, drink up, we all have much to discuss. Zeoticus saw Naruto reaching for the beer, and nodded his head. Rias glanced up at the man with confusion in her eyes. He was, different than she had thought him to be. This is the strongest man in the world. Rias thought to herself as she looked at the person who her mother told her was strong enough to end the world by himself. The very person who could make even the heavenly dragons fear the mere mentioning of his name, a man powerful enough that any female devil or demon who tried to sense his might would find themselves attracted to his vast stores of power, he seems more friendly than I thought he would be, he doesn't seem scary at all, Rias made an opinion of him. I am not too great with alcohol, but a glass or two of beer should nt hurt, it's nice to see that you were able to conceive a daughter. I know you devils have a hard time conceiving, Naruto spoke as he smiled at Rias, the proof of the love between the woman and her husband, knowing that they must have tried a lot to have her. Zeoticus smiled proudly, yes, she's a lovely girl, right? Zeoticus asked Naruto, who couldn't help but nod his head. She's beautiful, she looks just like her mother, not to mention I have a real fondness for red hair, I am sure she will surpass her mother's beauty, you should be proud, Naruto complimented Rias who was blushing up a storm when she realized that the adults were talking about her like she wasn't in the room, not to mention this random man was giving her compliments with complete ease, again as if she weren't in the room with this. Zeoticus nodded with his arms crossed, right? I couldn't have asked for a more beautiful daughter, I noticed that you had a very beautiful girl of your own, the little blonde in your group, right? Zeoticus didn't notice his wife was sending him a look that was telling him to chance the subject to the reason they called Naruto to come meet them. Naruto nodded with enthusiasm, Asia, my pride and joy Yano, she has a lot of my looks, but I am very glad she got her mother's eyes, not to mention she takes after her mother's personality, she's my little angel, Naruto turned his nose up into the air, bragging about his own daughter, he raised his finger up with a grin on his face, you know, when she was a baby she used to refuse to sleep anywhere but on my chest, she's a little daddy's girl, Naruto got a loud laugh out of Zeoticus. Rias was much the same way, Though that had to stop when she got older, she takes after her mother in more than just looks, Zeoticus told Naruto, who instantly understood what the man was getting at. He nodded, ah, she sleeps naked then. You didn't get rid of that habit Venelana, and you passed it on to your daughter. Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow, Venelana coughed into her hand, trying to get things to the point of why she contacted Naruto, she was the type of person who wanted to get to business as soon as she could. Rias was extremely embarrassed as well, you know my wife's habit, what about yours? Does your wife have any weird habits? Zeoticus spoke, before he blinked, actually, where is your wife? I thought she would be with you tonight, Zeoticus mentioned. Naruto raised a glass slightly in respect, my wife passed away shortly after Asia was born, of course, she wasn't without her weird habits, Naruto mentioned solemnly for a moment, before he smiled again, Zeoticus tapped his glass against Naruto's glass. I am sorry for you loss. Zeoticus hadn't meant to be insensitive. Naruto waved off his statement, as long as I carry her in my heart, she will never leave me, anyway, she gave me my daughter, and I see so much of her in Asia, Venelana, you look like you want to change the subject, Naruto noted when he saw the face that his old lover was making, she coughed into her hand, getting the blush off of her cheeks, since she had just been a topic of discussion, she calmed herself, and nodded her head politely. Yes, she wanted to change the subject, yes, well. I didn't wish to be rude and interrupt, Rias, since this concerns you, why don't you explain this to him? Venelana requested, aka ordered, her daughter to speak with the man. Rias nodded her head, Naruto-sama Naruto ended that quickly by bopping her on the head. Just Naruto, you're not Japanese, so you don't need to address me with honorifics, I am a pretty casual person, Naruto told her, she had a bump on the top of her head, while Zeoticus laughed a little at the way that his daughter just got bopped for her Japanese fetish always wanting to refer to people with honorifics, and being a general Japan addict, continue, Naruto urged her on. Mr. Uzumaki, for years in the devil realm, it is common for families to place their children in arranged marriages, I myself, before I was born, was placed into such an arrangement, 
Rias was stopped when Naruto gave Venelana and Zeoticus a heavy look. He did not approve, children need to be free to chose who they love Venelana, you should know that more than anybody, I would think you would be the last person to force something on your daughter, Naruto told his old student, who looked down at the table, she could hear the shame he wanted her to feel in his voice. Zeoticus stayed silent, Rias was just surprised. You were in an arranged marriage? Rias didn't know that about her mother, since it had never been mentioned before, she was always told that her parents fell in love, she wasn't told that they had been arranged to be married. Venelana nodded her head, yes, when I was younger, my family arranged for me to be married to your father, I went to the human world in an attempt to break off the engagement under the excuse of studying human customs, Venelana admit to her own past issues, since Naruto was in the room and she couldn't lie about it. Zeoticus nodded, she did break of the engagement, Zeoticus spoke up. Since the second that Venelana lost her virginity, the engagement had been broken. Her actions had broken the agreement their own parents had set forth for them, of course, once the engagement was broken, we started to get to know each other, and we did fall in love on our own. Zeoticus didn't want his daughter thinking he didn't love his wife, after the engagement had been broken, they had started to get to know each other, and in time they did fall in love and get married without needing an arranged marriage. Venelana nodded her head, yes, I feel in love with the man, who I wanted to hate, that is why I know that love can be born out of an arranged marriage, Venelana defended her stance on the issue. Naruto gave her a harder look, and she flinched, Venelana, a child should be free to make their own choices about love, I am happy your marriage worked out for you, but you should be ashamed of yourself, you should nt force your daughter to marry a man she doesn't know, Naruto lectured his old student, and Venelana sank in on herself. She hated when he scolded her, I know the man well enough to know that I would never want to marry him, that is why I wish to break off the engagement in whatever way I can, I would challenge him to a rating game, but my peerage isn't big enough, Rias spoke with a slight wince. She only had a queen and a bishop in her peerage, and she couldn't even control her bishop's powers, so she only had a queen at the moment, she wasn't in any condition to challenge anyone to a rating game to prove anything, she would lose that match for sure, and everyone knew it, so there was no way anyone would allow her to make the challenge, not until she had more pieces to call her own. Don't know what a rating game is, but ill pretend like I do, Naruto thought to himself, as he nodded in agreement. Did they forget that he didn't usually concern himself with the affairs of the other races? Rias is very opposed to this, this is good for the family, and our race in general, sometimes we can't always get what we want, I wish she could marry for love, but she has a duty to her people, Zeoticus defended his wife's actions to a certain degree, he understood the wish to marry for love, after all it wasn't like he wanted to be married to somebody he didn't know, he had been put into the arranged marriage against his will as well. He was glad Naruto slept with his wife because of that reason. That and because he taught her how to do that thing with her tongue he loved. Now he knew that he didn't marry Venelana because he was forced to, he married his wife because he fell in love with her, he didn't come to love her after they were married, but they were married because of love. Rias, do you believe you have a duty to your people? Naruto asked her, and she clenched her lips together, before she loosened them. Yes, I have a duty to my people, and I know this marriage is good for my race, I would rather live according to my own desires though, I know I am being greedy, but as long as I can live my life the way I want to, then why can't I help my people my way? Rias asked, and several times Venelana looked like she wanted to interrupt, but Naruto raised his hand and stopped her from it, he wanted to hear Rias answer for himself, and he smiled down at the girl, before he finished off the beer he had. That was a good answer for her to give, sound familiar Venelana. Naruto asked his ex-lover, who sighed. Yes, it does, so Zeoticus and I have decided we will allow Rias a way to be selfish just this one time. Venelana couldn't help but find it frustrating that she saw so much of herself in Rias, sometimes that made it annoying, because she knew from experience that either way, Rias was going to find a way to bring shame to the family, and break the engagement, several days ago, we caught Rias trying to break off her engagement with one of the servants, Venelana sent a look towards Rias, who looked away with red cheeks at the mention of her attempted break in the engagement. Naruto smiled down at Rias, good for you, Naruto told Rias as he messed up the top of her hair, and she sent him a surprised look. He wasn't judging her. With this recent event, we've decided that it would be best if we could reduce the amount of damage this could cause our family's reputation. Since I am sure my daughter will find a way to break her engagement one way or another, Zeoticus gave his daughter a knowing look, since he knew that she would try to sleep with another man if it meant breaking the engagement, at least they could provide a man that would bring the family some honor if Rias used him for engagement breaking. Naruto could see where this was going, I think my daughter can be happy with Riser, 
but I know she is going to do whatever she can to break this agreement off. That is why we have talked this over and give her an alternative. Venelana spoke as she glanced towards her husband, who nodded his head with a slight grimace. Both his wife and his daughter, that one did sting his pride a little. You are the strongest man in existence, to devils, power means everything. If Rhea slept with some nobody to break the engagement, then that would be a very big insult to the Fenex. If she broke the engagement off to sleep with the most powerful man though, Ziotica spoke of a logic that Naruto did not understand even slightly, he knew very much what they were getting at of course, but he didn't really agree with it either. So you were forcing this on her? Naruto asked, and Rhea shook her head to argue that part. They gave me a choice this time, and I agree with them, I don't want to bring shame to the family, I just don't want to marry a man I don't love, if I can marry a man I love, I am willing to sleep with a man I don't love, it is a very small price to pay. Rias explained that this was what she was willing to do, she would do it anyway without her parents giving her the option. It just so happened her mother knew the strongest existence, the only person that she could sleep with that would not hurt her family's reputation. Naruto sighed, Venelana, this isn't the same as when I did it with you, I have a daughter, and a grandchild, who I need to look after, back then, the only person I had to worry about was Lilith, I just can't Naruto stopped talking when Rias put her hands on top of his hand, which was resting on the table, she grabbed it and held it between her own, giving him a look that showed just how determined she was to break off the engagement. Please, I am not strong enough to break of the engagement through power, Rias literally gave her best begging face, it will just take a few minutes of your time, Rias spoke, and Venelana coughed into her hand with a blush on her face. A few minutes? He has with me for nearly four days straight, even now Ziodicus hasn't been able to bring me the same amounts of pleasure this man has, even now. I can remember how he carved the memory of the pleasures he could give into my body, I still remember the way his penis felt inside of me. Venelana's cheeks started to burn brightly, and Ziodicus grimaced a little when he realized that Venelana was remembering what Naruto had done to her. He both respected Naruto, and was jealous of the mon's stamina, and the absolute unfair way that he could recover stamina. Did you just imply that my stamina is lacking? Naruto asked her with a twitch to his eye. Venelana paled when she realized that Rias had unknowingly dug herself into a hole. Well, it's normal for humans, right? Rias asked, and Naruto took a very deep, calming breath when that statement was made about his race. Okay, he couldn't let that one slide, okay, he'll do it, if you can get somebody to babysit for a few days Naruto spoke, and Rias' eyes widened when she heard the word days used to describe, then I will help this once, but this counts or your favor Venelana. Naruto stated with a finger pointed at the woman, who nodded her head. She could live with that, favor, the most powerful man in existence owes you a favor. Ziodicus had to admit that he was very surprised, and hadn't heard about this before now. Why? I felt pretty bad after we were done, after all the things I did to her, so I promised her that if she needed my help with something, I would help her, Naruto mentioned, and Ziodicus leaned back a little and sighed, right, things. Rias was getting a little worried, Seeing as this didn't sound like it was something that she was going to just a few minutes and won the situation, what had she agreed to thanks for watching?